Fast, technical, the pinnacle of British karting circuits. PF International once again takes centre stage, hosting the opening round of the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships for Rotax and Honda. Following a pulsating Oplate meeting less than a month ago, it's time for these classes to get down to business of finding Hall B British Champions for 2024 over the course of five rounds for Rotax and four for Honda, all of them with live coverage on Saturday and Sunday. With over 200 drivers here this weekend, all eyes will be on those returning to Lincolnshire with championship plaudits from years prior. Emerson McAndrew-Urin, Cole Denham, Macaulay Bishop all make steps up the Rotax ladder as 2023 champions, whilst Kai Hunter in senior Rotax and Ryan White in Honda Cadet return to defend their respective titles. It kicks off with today's heats as the drivers look to bag their first championship points of the season, as well as qualify for tomorrow's pre-finals and what's more, it's here, live, for every lap, every overtake, every moment in the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. And live indeed, welcome to Lincolnshire, welcome once again to PF International for live coverage on Saturday for round one, event one, for this new season of the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. Rotax and Honda here, uh, as we had for a few weeks ago at Wilton Mill for the O-Plate. Brilliant to be with you once again. Myself, Andrew Matherin, alongside me in the comms box here at PFI is Henry Baudet. Henry, I, I think we're still on the high, aren't we, from uh, from the O-Plate? It was a brilliant event to kick off 2024. Yeah, the, uh, the flashes of some of the moves that were made at uh, Wilton Mill are still on my timeline of social media. It uh, certainly was an event that went round the world in terms of uh, showing off the talent that British karting have. But here we are at the home of British karting. 1,382 metres, the PF International Circuit. Can't believe it's been nearly 30 years. Well, in fact, it has it been is. 30 yeah. years since uh, we first started racing in this corner of Lincolnshire. Can't believe, I'm so happy that we'll be able to bring you heat races as well. We've got 12 of them. And as you can see, it's not exactly a sunny day, but it's a dry day here in Lincolnshire. Yeah, mixed conditions yesterday, a bit of rain, a bit of hail at times during practice, but the drivers, uh, I think, are pretty pleased with, uh, with consistent yes. conditions right now uh, here at PFI. Uh, as you say, Henry, 12 races uh, across the course of today for all of our classes, a quick reminder of them. Uh, Minimax will be kicking things off shortly. Senior Rotax for two heats. Uh, Junior Rotax for two heats as well. Micromax, Honda, uh, Cadet GX200 all in action today. Uh, in fact, it's two uh, rounds of it, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah and two rounds of that uh, order. And 200 drivers from 22 different nations. There are 30, over 30 series rookies, mm -hmm. people tackling the championship for the first time. But yeah, 22 nations, 200 drivers across five classes. It's going to be a fantastic weekend of racing. Thank you very much for joining us here on the Alpha Live coverage. But of course, it's not just you and I, is it, Andrew? Absolutely not. We're once again uh, joined by Nicole Sutherland, who uh, I believe we can go out to right now. Nicole, Hello, Nicole. over to you. It's Nicole Sutherland here coming to you from the gantry at PFI. What a way to start the year off at such an incredible circuit. Really looking forward to working alongside Henry and Andrew, bringing you the very best of British karting. You'll see me down in Park Ferme, capturing some of the post-race excitement and all around the paddock to bring you the very best stories. This year, you might have noticed that the British Kart Championships have had a slight rebrand, thank you to Vera Tools. We're really excited to bring you a new season, a new style, but of course, the same level of competition. Looking forward to seeing how everybody gets on. I'll throw back to Henry and Andrew, who are just there in the comms box. Well, hello I'm, indeed. I'm really glad that obviously, obviously you know, you're, you're here and I'm here. We've really upped the glamour stakes, haven't we? <laughs> uh, you know, there we go. But we are getting ready to start racing. The reason that we're all here. A big hello to everybody in the live chat. We'll get your comments coming in uh, as soon as we can. But Andrew, I think it's about time that uh, we start thinking about what we're going to see this afternoon. 
We are indeed, as say, the uh, the first of those 12 races uh, coming up shortly. As I say, we'll be kicking off with Minimax 950. Uh, three heats for them today, if I'm uh, mistaken. I am, actually. No, two heats for them. Third one tomorrow. Uh, but the first of those uh, coming up shortly. As you say, 200 drivers set to go here with uh, racing starting. Uh, 14.15 on the dot. Uh, brilliant uh, bit of work to get everybody ready for this first round of the year. Whilst we're just waiting a few moments, let's uh, have a, a check-in yes. with those watching online. Let's say hello. Uh, hello to Jakob Milcharski. Uh, it's the Wilton Mill races were so good and hopefully will be the same here. Uh, absolutely yeah, echo those uh, comments. Hello to Kim Harris, cross, the cross-eyed lion. From Germany. From Germany, hello. That and that, that's, I'd say, very international feel this, uh, this weekend. Uh, it's big it's year for PF International. Obviously, we're hosting the World Championships later on uh, in the year. And, uh, yeah, great to have everybody having their eyes on Lincolnshire this weekend. I do want to give a shout out to Motorsport Magpie, David Whitehouse as well. Uh, great, uh, great to hear that uh, uh, David's had been having some tough times oh, uh, okay. the last few years oh. and uh, is on the mend. Good and, for you. Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, great to see him out and about early on a few weeks ago. So uh, from Excellent. everyone here at uh, DD Mem and Alpha Live, uh, keep going, Dave, because it's, uh, it's really good to see you uh, in moving in the right direction. Yes, uh, well, he's, well he, he is moving in the right direction. He's got soup and a bacon butty ready. Well, that will be absolutely... Uh, you know, who, who, what more can you ask for? A uh, big hi to uh, Jana Slater, uh, cheering for Emerson McAndrew Uren, to Gillian Blanford, uh, the ultimate art racing uh, team. Now, uh, Lucas Blanford, we will get to him. He's got his sponsor logo, uh, which is uh, Sacred Skin Aesthetics mm. on the corner of his rear bumper. Um, he is owed an Alpha Live uh, beanie for that, by the way. Uh, yes, the senior Rotax grid, 61 seniors, 60 juniors. It is absolutely stacked. The uh, junior and the senior field. We have got drivers here from Lithuania, from Australia, Canada, the Czech Republic, from India, Latvia, Poland, the United Arab Emirates, Azerbaijan, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Kenya, Lebanon, Thailand. Not to mention, obviously, all four corners of the UK and Ireland. Indeed, it's uh, great to have them uh, all on board. Keep your comments coming in. And also remember the, uh, the new home of karting uh, on YouTube as well uh, yes. the UK. Car at Karting UK or at our Karting UK apologies so uh, subscribe to the new channel yes. uh, plenty of features yes. uh, from from the Oplate meeting but also this weekend uh, are there for your delectable enjoyment and all of that uh, uh, for the rest of the weekend so if you haven't already do go subscribe to uh, the Karting UK YouTube channel, if you haven't done so already. Uh, very quickly, uh, Harvey Betts already asking a big shout out to Theo Frederick to hopefully that uh, Theo can bring home a win today. Theo would be one of our ooh, micro drivers, I believe. But anyway, we'll see Theo later on. But but the time is upon us. It's time to go racing. It is indeed. Here we go then, eagerly anticipated, the first racing action of the weekend here at PF International. It's Minimax 950 race one, heat one for them and Harry Taylor on pole position. Joshua Griffin, Luca Holmes, Balak and Emerson McAndrew Uren on the uh, front two rows. Adam Turacek, Jack Collinson, Charlie King and Kean Bernard complete the top eight. On row number four, Oliver Spencer and uh, Josh Cormack, row five, sorry. Then Denek Babicek from the Czech Republic and Benjamin Lorne. Hasnain Khan and Leo Livings go from row 7. Finley Hines and Zach Starbuck complete the top 16. Olivier Chasse from Canada and Ollie Thompson are on row number 9. The top 20 rounded up by Scotland's Kieran Stewart and JJ Ambrose. Jacob Jack and Louis Radcliffe go on row 11. Jensen Chalk and Tom Reed on row 12. And still they come. Jensen Walker rounding out the 25 drivers on this grid now there are 20 uh, there are ooh, minimax 38 drivers in total so this is group a a uh, group b and group c this is not all our minimax drivers 
just some of them. Now, a couple to look out for. Jensen Chalk qualifying very badly and Tom Reed, the two strawberry racing teammates. Watch for them to be uh, climbing up through the order very, very quickly. Uh, Denek Babacek, the Czech Republic driver. Olivier Chasse from uh, Quebec in Canada. Plenty of international names, even in the younger classes, but... Uh, We'll guide you around the circuit, uh, you know, with very familiar corner names. This is the Mike Wilson complex, but uh, Andrew Mather, we have 25 drivers lining up for what will be a 10 minute plus one lap heat race. It will indeed. Remember, the job through these heats is to qualify into the top 28. That'll book your spot automatically on the grid for the pre-final tomorrow. First race of the weekend here at PFI. And we're away and racing for the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Car Championships. Good start for Harry Taylor into the lead as they wind up round onto the bridge for the first time. Uh, Oliver Spencer coming through the middle of the pack there with a bit of work to do from the midfield down the hill towards hairpin one we're going to see a lot of overtaking here this weekend i think there has been a change at the front is that luca holmes balak in the synergy that's come to the front of the order yes it is so luca holmes balak great start there spin towards the back i think it's jensen walker in the 152 yes, yes. it is the mlc motorsport driver uh dropping to the back of the field but a three cart breakaway trying oh a five second penalty for olivier chasse obviously out of the tram lines right at the start of the race that's an in race penalty we'll get to, to more of that and what those mean a warning for the number one two one cart of josh cormack but as they com come out of the mike wilson complex through the final chicane to complete lap number one of the 2024 vera tools motorsport uk british cart championship season it's luca holmes ballot from harry taylor and joshua griffin indeed bit of housekeeping as well oh. for minimax this weekend the eagle-eyed amongst you will know Notice three digit numbers on yes. Mini Max. It's a bit of a help for identifying uh, them at a moment's notice with a Micro Max. So uh, that's why that change has been made down the inside. Good move there. Harry Taylor to the lead. Bit of help with, uh, with Joshua Griffin behind. Uh, Joshua Griffin, one of the uh, uh, exceptions in that. If they're a top 10 driver from last year or an O-Plate winner, they yes, still so hold the single digit. Yes, so that, as you say, now we've got a four cart breakaway. A trio of Dal Holland racing carts sandwiching that lone synergy of the number 128 Luca Holmes Ballock. Up into fifth position has come Jack Collinson, uh, one of the, the leading rookie for the Sam Pollock racing team in cart number 119, the Anglo-Latvian driver who's dovetailing his British Championship uh, run with uh, a run of the Latvian Championship. But as so they go through the Bruno Ferrari S's under the bridge and out onto the banking, is side by side for fourth or fifth place. Balak up into P2 once again at the expense of Taylor. Yeah, and the uh, second chase group will be hoping this battle carries on. It's Oliver Spencer who's got to the front of it. A uh, whole stream of cars, I think, takes you all the way down to around 20th place. Joshua Griffin holds the lead through hairpin one here on lap number three. Just under seven and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Still plenty of time for this one to be decided. Uh, championship points situation, same as last year. Uh, everyone races twice in the heats and the best performing driver in the crowd. Oh, it's oh, out to Spencer. Oliver Spencer. Oliver Spencer out of the throttle stuck on there. Saw the rear wheels spinning, but that is not a good moment at all for Oliver Spencer. Big things expected. Uh, of Oliver this year in Minimax. That's not the start he would have wanted. No, and that was at the uh, Fullerton S's. You can just see at the top right hand of your screen there. Uh, Denek Babicek for the Teps racing team. Now, you wonder what, what's Teps? Well, uh, Denek is the uh, youngest of four siblings. As we got side by side for third place, there is Emerson McAndrew Uren trying to pass Harry Taylor. But of course, uh, Denek, he's the younger brother. He's got three older sisters who all race. Teresa, Aliska and Petra. And Zenek, T E P Z, Teps. That's why uh, uh, that's the name of the team that the family run under. Teresa Babitskova is here as well. Yep. We'll see her later on. Uh, but this uh, formation flying, although Luca Holmes Balak just uh, preventing the Dan Holland trio from running away with this one. In fact, Luca Holmes Balak looking quite racy behind the number five cart of Scotland's Joshua Griffin. Yeah, Luca Holmes Balak had a really good run at the O plate back a few weeks ago at Wilton Mill through 
final couple of corners at the end of lap number four. Just under six minutes remaining in this one. It's Griffin from Holmes Ballack. Emerson McCandrew gearing up to third place there with a move past Harry Taylor. Who else is improving? Jensen Chalk is up to 10th place. Has yes. just got past Adam Chirichek for that one. Also on the move, Louis Radcliffe. Uh, up 10 spots so far in this race. Uh, is now into 12th. Uh, it's just got JJ Ambrose and Leo Living's behind. Yes, indeed. But uh, Holmes Ballack and Griffin trying to work together, although Emerson McAndrew Uren, last year's Micromax champion, is right there and waiting. And I know Emerson's got a lot of support online already on our live chat. But uh, the top three coming through the Fullerton S's now onto the back straight. Now we move into Bobby Game Corner. This uh, right-hand 90-degree uh, corner into the Mike Wilson complex. They go right to double back on themselves. Then left to come out of the Mike Wilson complex through the final chicane. Out past the dummy grid on the, right, just on the driver's right-hand side. Left-hand side, rather. Your right-hand side. And in front of the grandstand to complete another lap. Just over halfway through this race. So uh, a lot of racing still to go. And uh, all 25 starters still running. Oliver Spencer trying to uh, catch up with what be a 12-second deficit, but there's been a change. Yeah, a bit of a moment there for Holmes Ballack. There was an attack from McCandid Ewan. and here is another one down the inside into hairpin one. And uh, last year's champion in Micromax on the attack up to P2, taking that tighter line through hairpin two. What has he got to challenge Joshua Griffin, his teammates, of course, staying in Minimax for 2024? Uh, at the moment, his experience paying off for the race leader. Uh, Hassan and Khan going along very nicely yes. as well, Henry. Uh, fastest lap of the race last time around for uh, the driver there in the 116. And uh, is up to eighth place now. No, that's very impressive indeed. And, of course, you, I had a little look at the Dan Holland racing awning earlier on. Now, they've got 23 drivers racing of the 200 entries 23 of them are in the dan holland awning just two more than in the strawberry racing awning uh kr sport have got 16 drivers but oh somebody runs wide going under the bridge that was one of the kr sport carts but you know the pleasing thing for me andrew is that after uh, those big three powerhouses dhr strawberry and uh, kr sport do you know the next best represented group of drivers hmm. belong to privateers privateers 15 of them in total, which is really, really good to see. And we'll try and highlight the privateers as much as possible. Do you know me? I love a good privateer, don't I? You do indeed. Uh, and uh, three minutes of this one remaining. Still, uh, as it was at the front of the order, Griffin, McAndrew Owen and Holmes Ballack here. Uh, I think we're looking at Jensen Chalk, or we were for a uh, moment. In fact, no, it was Tom Reed, wasn't he? It was a bit further back down the order, the triple one. Never mind. Uh, two minutes and 45 remaining on the clock. Is closing in a bit. Let's just see there that Harry Taylor's had a good few laps. He's starting to close the gap to the top three. Uh, Jack Collinson's having a really good run. He's up to fifth place now. He's uh, is le leading ahead of Charlie King. And, uh, yeah, they've got Jensen Chalk in that group as well, who's the new fastest driver on the circuit right now. So a bit of... Bit to think there as all oh, down the inside. McAndrew Ewan wants to go for it and does takes the lead. That's uh, well, I don't think Joshua Griffin fully had that as part of his plan, uh, but wisely just opened the door enough to. Uh, I mean, there wasn't any uh, oh, any further part of the story in that, but change for the lead. McAndrew Ewan to the front. I just wonder is that part of the tactics because there's that second group behind who are now fighting as they go into Bobby Game Corner. They're closing in, and there's potential opportunities for them with two minutes to go. Yes. Now, of course, we've, we've had uh, the, the, the video of, or the, uh, the social media clip of Macaulay Bishop around the outside at Wilton Mill to win the O-Play. That's been viewed three million times so far. Uh, Emerson McAndrew Uren opening his account for try and sort of match that with a great pass. And don't forget, we've got Alpha Live's race of the week. Now, this is not the only Alpha Live stream going on today. There are some, there's some motor car racing, Andrew. But I have a feeling that uh, Alpha Live's race of the week, uh, as Luca Holmes Balak takes the lead, will come from this event. I, in fact, I am sure of it. Absolutely. Well, the changes at the front as Luke Holmes Ballack did have the lead, but doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> Through there, it's Harry Taylor. We said keep an eye out for him. He's had a very good middle phase of this race, has worked his way to the front of the order. It's a 1 2 3 right now for DHR. Taylor, Griffin, McAndrew Ewan, 
in that order. Luca Holmes Ballock, though, has just got to keep calm right now. Fourth place, not a bad result at this stage of the round. And still a couple of laps of this one to go. Collinson now up to fifth place in that second group as Here Griffin again. once again down the inside into the Bruno Ferrari chicane, takes the lead. Two laps to go, bit of time remaining plus the one lap. This is going to be a good finish, I feel, Henry. It certainly will be. We've got international viewers tuning in. Roger Young already on the live chat. Hello, mate, from uh, Chinese Taipei and the island of Taiwan. And uh, Roger's doing a fantastic job, re a real ambassador for the whole nation of Chinese Taipei and the island of Taiwan, trying to move that country's karting uh, forward and adopt a, a more of a European style to it. I mean, I mean, he had Mark Kimber out training with him, and of course, I think Mark Kimber came back, you know, needed about three weeks to sober up after uh, one race weekend with Roger. Deary me, but back to the action on circuit. The clock has struck zero. It's Griffin, Holmes Ballock, McAndre Uren, and Taylor. Collinson is still there in fifth. They had a Babacek King, Khan, Bernard, and Churacek. That's your top ten. As uh, we wait to see, as we start the last lap now, this is where Joshua Griffin has got to make that cart very, very wide indeed. As indeed, but we are on the final lap, going up and round onto the bridge. Oh, we've been chain. Chain. Yes, there is. Down the inside goes Luca Holmes Balak. An attack there from Griffin and out <laughs> wide, very wide there for McAndrew Uren. Fighting once again between the two DHRs. This is a good opportunity now for Luca Holmes Ballack to break away. The teammates are still squabbling there over yes. second place. Now they've got themselves reorganised, Henry. But the gap is there now for Luca Holmes Ballack. He won't need to defend through the next couple of corners. Uh, but one driver that has to defend is the 153 of Taylor from McAndrew Uren. There's Jack Collinson for the Sam Pollock Racing Team. But Luca Holmes Ballack looks like he's stolen one from the trio of... Dan Holland Racing Drivers, 128, the Synergy Factory team, open their victory account early doors here at PF International. Holmes Ballack takes the win, and the rest of the field flooding across the line behind them. Uh, Holmes Ballack, Griffin, McAndrew, Uren, Collinson got fourth at the end. Great drive from the leading rookie. Now, uh, we'll go through the uh, rest of the finishing order. Fastest lap right at the end went to Jensen Chalk, who finishes 10th. But there is Luca Holmes Ballack from Josh Griffin, Emerson McAndrew Uren, Jack Collinson, Harry Taylor, Charlie King, Zenek Babacek, Kian Bernard, Hasnain Khan, Jensen Chalk. Uh, no relation to Charlie Chalk, and I am old enough to remember that cartoon. Dearly me. Tom Reed, the farmer, Adam Turashek, Zach Starbuck, and JJ Ambrose, your top 14. Into the second half of the field, Leo Livings, uh, Louis Radcliffe, Josh Cormack, uh, Finley Hines, Benjamin Lornan, uh, Olivier Chasse, all finish inside the top 20. Kieran Stewart, Jacob Jack, uh, Jensen Walker, Ollie Thompson finishes part of the main pack. Uh, all drivers finishing that one, but Oliver Spencer down in 25th place, 10 seconds off the main group after that problem earlier on that's not the result he would have wanted but for Luca Holmes Balak that's a really good start in synergy once again showing yes. they've got some they've after, got some real performance this season in Minimax after winning the old plates with Finley Lines and somebody got I think a bit confused there's a Finley Hines in Minimax and a Finley Lines Finney Lines, the Oak Plate champion, isn't out there. You can see there's the, you know, the, the nervous energy. Uh, you know, Luca Holmes Balak, he's just won a race and he's just, yeah, oof, the adrenaline is still surging, you know, because that was a hard race for him to yep. win, a very hard race for him to win. And he's come out on top. This is another one of the great new features that Alpha Live are bringing you this year for the coverage of the British Championship. We've got cameras right down in, in the, into the, the depths, into the bowels of PF International. Uh, the drivers come in. Now, we will preface this. Obviously, there will be, I'm sure, over the course of the weekend and the season, we will see emotions, both good and bad, from these young drivers. But to have to say, they are ultra-professional, and they know... Uh, but there's cameras all the way around them. We did see Mick Streak with uh, Mick Tuck, sorry, with the uh, Mick Streak with the. Uh, well, it was it was the it wasn't it was the iPad of Doom as they went over there. But we have got a camera on the iPad of Doom uh, for nose cone penalties as well. But uh, that's not a bad way to start the the day, Andrew. No, I think as expected, Minimax is uh, already delivering entertainment to us here for uh, for the 2024 Viewer Tools. 
uh, British Kart Championships. Great to have you with us. If you're just joining us, it's uh, Andrew Mather and Henry Baudet on commentary duties uh, across the course of the weekend. And we can now head down Ooh. to uh, our winning driver Excellent. who's with Nicole Sutherland. Nicole, over to you. So we're down in Park Ferme with our first heat winner of the Motorsport UK British Kart Championships 2024. Luca, how was that race for you and how are you feeling about this year? Very confident. And you were the only, dri the only Synergy driver in a train of DHR carts. Did that make the race harder for you? Yeah, a bit, yeah, definitely. Great, great to hear from you, Luca, and good luck for the rest of your weekend. Just have a little tour around Park Ferme, as you can see, Mini Max 950 chassis. Different from the setup that we used to have a few years ago in the Mini Max class. Harry Taylor there with his mechanic Dave Wooder. Harry, very, very quick so far this weekend on pole. We'll just throw back up to the comms box for our next heat of the day, which will be Senior Rotax Heat 1A versus C. Indeed, thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, we uh, go from some of our youngest drivers in the field, uh, or younger ones. We've, uh, we've obviously got the micro uh, runners and the Honda Cadets who are younger still, but we now go to our most experienced Oh, Drivers, yes. Henry, uh, senior Rotax. I mean, it's, <sighs> it's harsh on the other classes, but senior Rotax really were the talk of the town from, from Will to Mill on the O plate a few weeks ago. Yes, and this field, I mean, I say it every year, and it sounds like I'm just doing a bit of PR work, and I'm not. This is a stacked field. Why is it such a stacked field? Because this is the best championship in the world. Why is it the best championship nationalities? Because you've got some great sponsors. You're going to hear from some of them now. Welcome back to live coverage here at PF International. It's event one, round one for Rotax and Honda in this year's Vera Tools uh, Most Sport UK British Kart Championships. Andrew Mather and Henry Baudet on commentary duties for you. And uh, yeah, once again, getting ready for uh, the next race, Henry. Yes, indeed. And this race, uh, we you know, talked about it before uh, we went to commercial break. But uh, you're going to hear some world-class names. It's only a heat race. So 60 drivers in total in senior Rotax. The newly crowned British Open champion, Cordy Bishop, and the reigning British champion, Kai Hunter, starting from the front row of the grid. And that's a, it sounds like a nice, calm, relaxing way <laughs> to start the new senior Rotax season. Uh, because just behind them, you've got Ewan Charman and Neo Clark. It's got, you've got so much talent there. Looking down the order, Teresa Babakova, she starts 29th. Isaac Lyons, which is really good to see Isaac, you know, one of the, one of the rookies in the championship. Um, he is going out there. And Alex McGee, back in the British Championship for the first time in over a decade. He was joking earlier, he's one of the older ones. He's a 90s baby. And that made me feel very old <laughs> as an 80s child. <laughs> I feel. Um, Stephanie Hobaker, from Lebanon. Mm. She's got Jess Matthews mechanic. And that's the only all-female team here in terms of driver and mechanic. Marvellous Marv is the driver coach. But like I said, he's only a female on a Saturday night. But we'll go back to that later. Indeed, because we're ready. Let's uh, get into it in the next race. Race two on the programme. It's Senior Rotax, Heat 1. Let's take you through the order then for Heat 1. It's groups A and C from timed qualifying in senior row tax. Macaulay Bishop and Kai Hunter on the front row. You and Charman and Neo Clark on row two. On row three, it's Archie Walker and Kean Geraghty. Tristan Rennie and Morgan Porter go from row four. Rounding out the top ten will be Caden McQueen and Austin Lee. Then Deacon Russell and Guy Cunnington on row six. 
Angus Scrivener and James Lau, they go from row number seven. William Pemble and Archie Buttle from row eight. Louis Weaver and Pearson Bullock Carter go on row nine. Stephanie Hobika and Liam Thomas complete the top 20. Ethan Bentley and Ralph Youngling start on row 11. Sam Longley and Jack Collins on row 12. The rest of the order. Alex McGee, the returning Alex McGee and Benjamin Southgate. David Mitchell taking time off from, uh, would I lie to you, to do some kart racing. And Isaac Lyons from Northern Ireland with Teresa Babitskova and Jack Gillingham rounding out the starting order. 30 drivers on track for this one. Same story, remember, for uh, a huge entry here of so Senior Rotax for round one. The top 28 from 60 will qualify through to the pre-final oh directly. Yes. Uh, a number of them will, of course, then go oh. into the repercharge for the final six spots. So now, ooh, there's a lot sorry. riding on these heats, Henry. Yes, there is. Uh, and there's a lot riding on getting to the start. Because you can see one cart. That is the number 19 machine of William Pemble. The Thule Motorsport driver who didn't start the final of the old plate yet had an engine problem on the start warm up. He's out of this one as well. Not good news at all then for Pemble. We'll have work to do in the second round of heats later on today. Meanwhile, though, this first round is ready for Macaulay Bishop to hit the hammer and get us underway for 10 minutes. Oh, already one of the, uh, the CS55 shot Hunter Motorsport carts on the grass. There. I think that might have been... Uh, Morgan Porter, but through under the bridge for the first time. Good start for Bishop at the front of the field. Guy Cunnington there on the inside. What a race he had in the O-plate a few weeks ago. Oh. Down towards Hairpin 1 for the first time uh, in this one. Everybody battling for position. A lot of drivers going to the inside to driver's right to defend their position. Uh, Benjamin Southgate going around the outside there of one driver through hairpin one, but that's a good start from Bishop up into the lead. Ewan Charman. Now, Ewan Charman, superb qualifying, the only non-OTK chassis runner in the top 15 in senior, uh, senior Rotax qualifying earlier on today and showing it wasn't just a low number lap pace he's got good race mm -hmm. pace here up to p2 immediately yes that uh, racing perfection entered Birrell art chassis going better than i've ever seen it go before in the british championship for that team uh with the charmander behind the wheel and uh He's got to sit in and just learn from a driver that he went through junior racing with, you know, Macaulay Bishop. There goes Guy Cunnington in the number 52. Guy Cunnington racing entry, team owner, stroke driver. And now we've got a lead change. It's Hunter in the lead. Uh, Bishop, no stranger to moving around the outside and uh, gets a force a bit wider than he would have liked there. They're falling back. McQueen in the KR Sport entry number 42 is up the inside of Charman. No, he moves into third position and everybody else battling over the minor placing. Well, we've pretty much kicked off as uh, as we left yes, off yeah. at Wilton Mill a few weeks ago. Kai Hunter has got a bit of a gap, but there's still a long way to go right now. There's a warning to the number 42 of Ewan Charman. So the officials uh, wanting to take note of something there. But there's the lead change confirmed. Hunter from Bishop, McQueen up to third, Charman now fourth, Cunnington fifth, Porter. Apologies, I don't think it was Morgan Porter who was on the grass at the very start. It was Angus Scrivener. Uh, Deacon Russell going along quite nicely. New fastest lap of the race is down the inside. McQueen going for second place and taking second place from Macaulay Bishop. Don't see many overtakes at that part of the circuit, but Caden McQueen uh, robbed in some ways of best overtake of the yes. plate final <laughs> by the man he's just overtaken. Uh, has again been in good form so far this weekend. Uh, and of course, I think that the reason that Caden is uh, so fired up in that number 47 car, he was arguing with his dad, Andrew, earlier on, you know, saying, well, dad, just stay for the first race. And dad was saying, well, no, I got, I got breakfast to make. Bre I mean, it's a late breakfast, but uh, I think he's either angry, he's either... Andrew either did stay and Caden is, is putting on a show for his dad or his dad went home to cook breakfast and Caden is there saying, well, two fingers up to you. I'm going to show you what I can do when you're not here as the number 11 cart of uh, Kim Garrity makes a move. Does indeed. Goes down the inside of Morgan Porter there for fifth, uh, sixth place. Had a tough time in uh, the wet conditions in the final at Wilton Mill for the O plate. So it's a, it's a clean slate. It's zero points for everybody yep. right now uh, in the championship on the move as well. Archie Walker, seventh place in senior OTAX the last two years. 
And, uh, well, that's him back up to his familiar position of yes. seventh place with that move on Porter. So a bit of a tough spell this for Morgan Porter. But he's got to keep himself in there. Still a long way to go. Down the inside for second place. Bishop on McQueen through Bobby Game corner. The corner, I would say, Henry, is the... Uh, is the technically the most difficult it's so easy to just turn into early turn into late yes. you're breaking wrong that was spot on it, it, from it, bishop yeah and of course you, you it's a fast entry that you do have to break but you know it's a it's a narrow runoff at the exit which is uh, the temptation is there to make a move oh and there's another temptation and that's a problem going out onto the banking that was two into one not working and uh couple of drivers there just sort of one driver looking at the inside to make a move and the door closed and there was a bit of a chain reaction because there was lots of carts bearing down on them couldn't quite get the numbers i think it was morgan porter austin lee and possibly james lowther as we've got three wide down the short shoot towards the fullerton s's a guy cunnington going through there into second place this is uh, it's good news at the moment though for kai hunter He's not having to push too hard at the moment. There is an element of preservation for the drivers across the course of the weekend in terms of tyres and, of course, their equipment. No point pushing too hard uh, in a heat with bigger races yet to come. Move there or potential move from McQueen uh, on Tristan uh, Rennie. Was that the other no, way around? In oh, fact, on the Archie Walker. Uh, involved, but uh, I should also note there's been a five second penalty come up on our board for the number 49 that's Angus Scrivener, so Scrivener will drop from 10th place once that five second penalty is applied Bishop down the inside Charman follows through, change for second and third, Guy Cunnington with the fastest lap right now, but needing to respond Yes, now I'm wondering, uh, Scrivener was the driver that went onto the grass at the start was that uh, Head Marshal of uh, Trent Valley Kart Club, Glyn Griffiths, uh, punishing Scrivener because, of course, the marshalling team out here have just mown the grass and then Scrivener tries to drive his go-kart over it. Possibly. I don't know. I'm, I only speak facts. You know that. Let's have a little look back at... Uh, uh, further down the order. Here we come into tournament. There's the move from Bishop at the inside. And uh, opportunism awaits and uh, for Ewan Charman as he... Uh, Moves the P3. Oh, and there's a spinner going on to the banking. I couldn't quite see. It was a purple and white car. That could have been Archie Walker. In fact, it was. Yeah, well spotted, Andrew. Yeah, the number seven in trouble there. Losing momentum up and round onto the bridge. That will drop him down from, where was he? Around 10th place. Yes. He was obviously, obviously upset that he wasn't running seventh. So we thought, if I can't finish seventh, I'm going to finish 27th. Oh, dear. Uh, and that's a driver number 69. That would be the uh, GMS entry. Was that the 69 or the 79? Yep. Yeah, it was the 69 of Louis Weaver. There's also been a, a mechanical failure flag. The orange disc of doom for, oh, Morgan, uh, for Morgan Porter, the number 45. So, uh, yeah, really hasn't gone well at all uh, yeah. for Morgan Porter. Starting on the fourth row of the grid, it's going to be... Losing many positions now. Another new fastest lap of the race for uh, for Guy Cunnington. I heard in the, the, the you know the semi rumor mill oh. off the back of Wilton Mill that it was tyre pressures for Guy ah. in the uh, in the final. They just they just didn't quite get the setup right, and that's why they lost a bit of pace in the second half of the uh, the final a few weeks ago. Well, that's definitely not the case right now because well. he's got some good pace but can he find a way past Charman for third as as team owner as well as driver the only person he can blame is himself <laughs> <laughs> as uh, we now and look at this so Bishop Charman Cunnington and Geraghty have closed in on Kai Hunter the top five come through the Mike Wilson complex then they flick left and right through the final chicane onto the start finish straight they both all run a little bit wide onto that sort of serrated you know, shark's teeth curbing and the grass blocks at the exit of that corner. Flat out under the Bruno Ferrari S's. Out onto the banking as uh, best rookie in the race so far. Uh, 12th place, Liam Thomas. For those of you wondering, watching the live timing, they've got some drivers with red numbers and some drivers with blue numbers. The blue numbers signify that, yes, they are a championship rookie. They are indeed. Less than two minutes to go. Change. That's there. Out of the race. That is the number 69 yes, that we mentioned earlier of uh, Louis Weaver. 
Uh, positions being changed further down the order. The number 66 running out wide there. That's Jack Gillingham for oh. Racing Perfection team. And I just spotted the number 25 cart, Ralph Jungling. And he has a rear appendage dangling, unfortunately, uh, off, well, off his rear end. Not that's that's a, a rear bumper has come loose for uh, Ralf Youngling. That's change <coughs> change at the, uh, yeah. the front of the order. Macaulay Bishop has overhauled Kai Hunter, but Kai Hunter's still in this. It's a pack of five competing for this first heat of the weekend for senior Rotax. Down towards Hairpin 1 they go. Bishop, Cunnington, Charman, but not for much longer because there's Hunter down the inside. There's his teammate Morgan Porter out yeah. of the race. And Keen Geraghty has joined in the fun uh, in this one as well. Geraghty switching back to the inside. May have an opportunity now on Charman for fourth place through the Fullerton S's. That's oh. going to get a little bit close. Oh. And uh, so there's another one of the Bills yeah. in a bit of problem there as well. Just parked up having a watch they were. Um, was that a pro train car? Actually, Possibly. yeah, I think it was. It might have been was Austin it? Lee, perhaps. Uh, uh, Austin, no, he's with the Craft Motor Sport. It could apologies. have been Jack Collins or Benjamin Southgate. We shall find out. Now, Teresa Babitskova, she has made her way up from 29th to 15th. So a good, and she's actually gained more places than anybody else in the race. Austin Lee has also retired his Kraft Motorsport entry. Well, he's dropped right to the back, the uh, Oregon-born, German-based driver. Austin Lee in his second season in the British Championship. So all, quite a few retirements, James Lowther has also retired the number nine Argenti motorsport car. This is bad news for them, and it's good news for some of the drivers starting down towards the back of the field who are just plugging away, plugging away. They're going to pick up a half-decent finish here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take the, uh, the pressure off them uh, towards the latter stages. Time has expired. But uh, I think Nicole's got one of them. Someone down in the paddock for a quick chat mid-race as we head towards the end of this one. What's going on, Nicole? We're just down in Park Ferme quickly with uh, race. Uh, Morgan Porter retired early from the race. Morgan, can you just tell us uh, quickly what's gone on there on track? Uh, yeah, it was a fairly clean race, and I think for the start of that race, um, dropped down a couple of positions, and then I was tagged going into the bowl corner. Oh, there we go. Tagged at the bottom corner. Speaking of tagging, there's uh, two carts just uh, sticker swapping. Oh, Bishop and Cunnington into the second hairpin. It'll, and there goes you and Charman. What a bit of opportunism there for the Charmander. Half a lap to go. Brilliant stuff from you and Charman. Threaded his way through all of the chaos there. Drivers not quite giving each other uh, enough room to get that number of carts through hairpin number two. Not really any opportunities to overtake through the last couple of corners. Ewan Charman, the uh, the sole Birrell in the top 15 in qualifying, is going to take the race win in Heat 1. A brilliant drive there from Ewan Charman. Kean Geraghty comes across the line, P2. Caden McQueen, P3. Hunter and Bishop complete the top five. And do you know something, Andrew? That is the first win for a Birrell ART in the senior Rotax class in the modern era of the British Championship. Well, there we go. There we well go. Well done, you and Charman. And he's deserved that because he had a, he had some problems yes. at, uh, at O Plate, but we knew the pace was there. He's delivered on that promise and taken a race victory. Garrity, McQueen, Hunter and Bishop in the top five. Guy Cunnington, Tristan Rennie, Neo Clark, Pearson, Bullock, Carter and Angus Scrivener all score well in that first heat. Remember, Scrivener does have a plus five second penalty to be applied, however. Archie Buttle, Deacon Russell, Teresa Babichkova and Sam Longley all in the top 14. Nine teams in the top nine positions. Archie Walker finishes 15th, followed by Jack Collins, Stephanie Hobika, Ethan Bentley, Alex McGee and David Mitchell. Then Benjamin Southgate, Jack Gillingham, Austin Lee and James Lau. The only other finishers, Ralph Younglin, Liam Thomas and Morgan Porter retiring. Uh, several other drivers also failing to make the end of the race. Louis Weaver, William Pemble and Isaac Lyons. Ah, there's the Charmander. That was an excellent job done. And I think he was in the right place at the right time. There's, I imagine there'll be a, quite a lively discussion going on further out in the paddock. You've got the, ah, now the, there you can see in the uh, grey gilet. Is that, a, are we calling it a gilet or a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an armless coat, if you ask me. Mm. 
It's just an armless jacket. But he's got the iPad of doom and is walking around the paddock. Uh, there goes uh, Katie McQueen. Katie McQueen, he, he was there, and then he wasn't there, and then he was there again. Yeah, he's, he kept himself as, uh, as part of the discussion, gets a, a P3 for his troubles across the course of that 10 minutes plus one lap race. Don't go anywhere. We've got a, another heat for senior Rotex, uh, Rotex coming up. And uh, indeed. I think we should, have a look, yeah, we should have a little look back at that because it was very entertaining. Now, there was a lot of stuff going on uh, on the banking, uh, a couple of in incidents that we didn't quite catch, but everyone came out okay. Now, uh, Kai Hunter, he did get a break at the start. Now, you were talking about uh, early lap pace from Charman. Uh, Charman, he had, a, he had a bit of a defensive action early on, and he had to sort of wait for his tyre to come back into play, but... Uh, Good teamwork there from the rest of the field to reel Hunter back in. Uh, and uh, we saw Morgan Porter there, but uh, he got, said he got a little bit of a uh, nerfed off at the bottom of the circuit. Uh, Bishop, that textbook move going into body game corner on McQueen. You do need the other driver to cooperate a little bit. It's very easy for the other driver to just go right, right hand down, and we're both off. Yes, it's a good placement from uh, both of them there. That was Pearson. Uh, Bullock Carter going for a move would uh, get another top 10 for one of the top 10 drivers from last year's championship. Bishop overtaking anything that moves, he would see yeah. at the moment if we are. He's got four Bishop. wheels on it, I'm going for it. And um, yeah, so now, of course, you know, this is Saturday. So before we get people triggered in the comments, you know, this is our opportunity to tell a few stories to get. Yep. Get, you know, get behind the stories. Tomorrow, obviously, it's, it's racing only. But, but we've got another interview to bring you now. And it's with our race winner, you and Charman. Take it away, Nicole. Over in Park Fairway, after our first senior Rotax race of the day, you and Charma, race winner, Ewan. Very interesting race there for you. Can you tell us a bit about the action? Well, yeah, it was um, it was quite an interesting race. Um, quite thankfully, I didn't get involved in any of the carnage really. Um, I just sort of sat back because I knew. Um, there would be a hack at the end and it would be such a scrap. So um, sort of sat there patiently in third. Um, I tried to have a go at the lead uh, early on, but couldn't really get through. So yeah, just played the long game. And then when it came down to the final lap, all kicked off in front of him. It was just a perfect opportunity laid right there. So. And as well, you and you're the only driver in the top 15 in quality that isn't on an OTK chassis. Can you tell us a bit about your choice of why you drive the Birrell? Uh, yeah, so um, Steve from Racing Perfection hit us up and said if they want, if I want to do like a taste today, um, and we thought it was a great opportunity, try something different, um, and immediately loved it. So, I mean, it, it, I think it's the best, the best car on the grid, and that's not just me being a sponsorship deal or anything. That is just my belief. Otherwise, I still wouldn't be with them, and uh, it evidently shows that it's quite good considering that we've just won first British Champs heat in Senior Rotax. So. Fantastic. Well, very best of luck to, for you, to you for the rest of this weekend. Uh, we'll throw back up to the next race of our day, but before then, we'll hear from one of our partners, Demon Tweaks. Thank you very much to Demon Tweaks uh, for their support for the sponsorship of the Via Tools and Sport UK British Kart Championships. Uh, here, as ever, at uh, PF International for this weekend. Saturday, heat day uh, here in Lincolnshire. And uh, getting ready, Henry, for yes. the next race. Race three on our programmes for today, uh, today. And it's heat two for Senior Rotax. Yes, indeed. A big hello to everybody from the USA tuning in as well. There is a glance down at the dummy grid. The drivers sitting alone in their carts. The mechanics have uh, left the building. There's the number 46. Just, that's Amand Hamilton, the uh, Australian-born, Hungarian-based uh, strawberry racing Tony Kart driver. So many of these senior drivers and junior drivers, in fact, so many of the drivers across all the Rotax classes have got experienced, uh, you know, in the Rotax Grand Finals and the Euro Trophy. But... It's going to be race number three, Senior Rotax, Group B versus Group D, up next. Wow. 
Second heat for Senior Rotax, Groups B and D. Let's have a look at the order. Teddy Pritchard, Williamson, Callum Bradshaw on row one. Ethan Jeff Hall and Lewis Gilbert on row two. Jack Lilly and Gustav Uzzekovts on row three. Brandon Klein, Nagelvoort and Jamie Perilli on row four. Rounding out your top ten, Sam Baker and George Donald with David Oleshner and our man Hamilton on row number six. Row seven is Josh Graham and Tyler Harris, Matthew Sayer and Alex Adams Acton on row number eight. Dugas Pravilonis and Luke Bates go on row nine. Luca Osmond Price and Ethan Martin on row ten. Alex Moody and Alex Duncan on row eleven. Ollie Goodyear and Joshua Wood on row twelve. The rest of the field, Reg Hayward and Stefan Kazmarzik, Spencer Braum and Ben Cook with Rachel Robertson and Ethan Critchley rounding out your 30 strong grid. And, uh, well, I've seen some questions of who's racing, who's not racing this weekend. Uh, one of them is great to see back, Callum Bradshaw. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, it's uh, haven't yet seen uh, Bradshaw versus Bishop on track which is uh, something that has got everyone uh, eagerly anticipating. Uh, that, that will happen in one of the next heats. But we have a look down there. There's Bobby Game Corner into the tram lines. Dan Ashton, red trainers, uh, resplendent in the uh, gloom coming across the circuit. And uh, pretty soon, it's an all strawby racing front row. Teddy Pritchard-Williams, Super Ted alongside... 2020 world champion Callum Bradshaw, they're into the tram lines, lights are out, we are off and racing. Pritchard Williams takes the lead, Ethan Jeff Paul uh, moves into second place, a couple of spinners at the back and that was Joshua Graham going around. He returns to the prepared surface, everybody else is coming down towards hairpin number one now. Yeah, a lot of lost uh, time there for Graham, he's got to have to consolidate what he can in the rest of the uh, nine and a half minutes on the clock to the Jacks Motorsport uh, P1 group carts going side by side there out of hairpin one. A good start for Teddy Pritchard Williams. Uh, came so close, of course, to taking the O plate last time out. There's a chance here to get some good points on the board for, uh, for the first round of heats here in Senior Rotax, but he's got that challenge from behind. Ethan Jeff Hall, move for Ethan Jeff Hall, of course, for this yep. year, now racing with Sam Pollitt Racing. This and is a bright start there in P2. And Janetta's. He's doing some single seat, uh, some single seat, no, he's doing some uh, junior Janetta racing yes. as well. I think he started off his uh, car racing career uh, quite well. Did very well in the Rotax Euro Trophy season opener a uh, couple of weekends ago. Was it last weekend? I think it was last weekend or the weekend before. But uh, uh, yeah, a very strong start. But it's Teddy Pritchard Williams leading Callum Bradshaw. Now Jack Lilly up into P3 in the number 33 cart. So uh, two strawberry racing drivers lead a pair of Sam Pollitt racing drivers. Then it is Brandon Nagelvoort and the Diamond of Dalry, Lewis Gilbert for Kraft Motorsports. Yeah, Lewis Gilbert has had some good form so far this weekend. Had strong pace in free practice. I was actually talking to the race leader yesterday about the balance and at the start of the weekend, yep. again, this seems to be the story of 2024. Lots of rain, very green circuit yesterday. A lot of the drivers and seniors were telling me it was struggling with the balance, but as the, mm -hmm. as the circuits uh, got a bit of more rubber down on it, it's really gripped up out there and uh, definitely a change in, uh, in FP4 for the Strawberry Racing Runners. They took a huge step forward yesterday that's now paying off at the start of this first heat. Seven minutes and 40 to go. And for the moment... Richard Williams and Bradshaw just happy to stay one and two at the moment, and for good reason, because look at the train behind of Lily, Jeff Hall, uh, Klein Nagelvoort, Uzzikovs, uh, the roll in there all the way down to what you say, David, uh, David Algetner down in ninth place. Yes, you saw Callum Bradshaw looking over his shoulder uh, as they came out of the first hairpin, and that was a case of him looking just to see, okay, I've got one, two, three, four, lots uh, of drivers behind me, so I am not even going to attempt to try and pass my teammate, even if I'm a fraction quicker than Teddy Pritchard Williams. I, I looked over his shoulder again, so he just thinks I've got to just stay with uh, in the slipstream of the race leader, try and push him away because if we slow each other down, it's going to become an absolute bun fight. Well, we've just seen a great performance from uh, from someone going against the trend in terms of oh. chassis selection. As oh, what happened there? There was a bit of a a split in the field going 
round the hill. Uh, I just want to uh, point out Ollie Goodyear on a CRG. Ah, yes. Uh, he's flying through the order. He's got up 10 spots so far and he's up to 13th place. Well, of course, we, we mentioned about how good the CRGs were at the old plate. Uh, Spencer Braum is also out there on a CRG, uh, flying the flag for the privateers. So the two, well, there's three privateers in the field. Oh, oh. oh curse the commentator. Uh, the second of those privateers, Spencer Braum, is now out of the race. It just gives the people at the out on the banking overlooking the Bruno Ferrari S's uh, more of a chance to admire the CRG as it is parked behind the barrier. Yeah, not the results that Spencer would have been looking for. New fastest lap of the race for Gustav Ozakolt and one of those new CS55s. We had a bit of a closer look at them yesterday in the uh, recorded paddock show that you'll be able to enjoy on uh, the Karting UK YouTube channel in due course uh, being run out of the Hunter Motorsport awning of course in 2024 and there on the move yes. is Ozakovs down the inside of Jack Lilly for third. Now you mentioned the paddock show, is, is there another paddock show today Andrew? There is oh, indeed. Oh excellent I, ca I can't wait anyway back to the uh, action on circuit half distance just about um, yes Unfortunately, Andrew, we are singularly responsible for the retirement of uh, Spencer Braum. We were talking so many good things about him, who, of course, he's the runner-up la in last year's Rotax Grand Finals E20 class. And uh, he's not going to be runner-up in this race. George Donald uh, coming out with the fast lap of the race in 10th position for the Jacks Motorsport team in association well it's, it's the Project One Racing Group in association with Jacks Motorsport and Callum Bradshaw he's been waiting he waits no longer and he takes the race lead good stuff there from Bradshaw he's done that move uh, many a time four and a half minutes remaining in this one in his first heat for the drivers in groups B and D off the back of timed qualifying in senior road tax earlier on today Maybe just try at this stage, Henry, like going, well, we've, we've, we've been in this order of Pritchard Williams. Yes. As the two strawberries at the front of the order. Yes. Can we find a bit more pace between the two of us if it's the other way around and drop the rest of these drivers? I think we're going to find out over the next lap or so. Down the inside, that's Gilbert on Uzakov. So Uzakov's after gaining positions a few laps ago, now loses fifth place to the number four seed from last year. Reg Haywood on the move as well for Coles Racing. New fastest lap of the race from Reg. Where is uh, Haywood at the moment? It's in 15th place. Yes, now, uh, it does look as though, oh, there's uh, one of the Hudson Motorsport carts running wide coming out of uh, first hairpin. That was uh, Usakov's. But it does look as though the, the two strawberry racing drivers, they're quicker with Bradshaw leading and Pritchard Williams following they've been able to break uh, that lead group down from about nine carts to four you've still got the two sam pollock racing carts hanging on in third and fourth well they're doing more than just hanging on they're staying with the two leaders everyone looking over their shoulders three minutes ago lily and jeff hall now I've been saying this time and time again sam pollock racing when and it's not a case of if when are they going to break through and take a win in one of these senior road tax events. They've been knocking on the door for about two years now, uh, in juniors and in seniors, but that big final win has so far eluded them. I have a feeling, looking at the way that they, they started the season, it shall elude them uh, not much longer. As I say that, though, they both run each other wide and lose a position. So that's uh, <laughs> mark that down for two that's curse two. the commentators. There we go. I'll just shut up. Uh, Lewis Gilbert took advantage of that up to fourth place past, uh, past Jack Lilly. It's also off the opportunity for Bradshaw and Pritchard Williams to break away. Still some work to do, of course. Two and a half minutes and uh, counting remaining in this one. Another move from Reg Hayward to report up to 14th place now past uh, Alexander Adams Acton. Uh, and uh, Al Zetner is also improving. So uh, David Al Zetner for Strawberry Racing up to seventh place past Brandon Klein. Nagelvoort is there. Is a change for third place, is it not? Lewis Gilbert now past Ethan Jeff Hall. Is Jeff Hall going to throw it back down the inside? Of course, Ethan Jeff Hall is going to throw it back down the inside into yep. hairpin one. Lovely stuff, lovely racing. 
That's, uh, that's the Sam Pollitt racing driver. Was <laughs> back up to third place. Now goes back down to fourth, possibly fifth, as uh, David Algetna is getting involved. Lewis Gilbert, knowing that with the time remaining, the, uh, the opportunities for getting up to the two drivers ahead are probably next to nil right now. Fighting hard for that third place. Uh, now, uh, I was going to say, does Ital Kart still have a foundation? There are Ital Karts, not in the UK, but there are still Ital Karts out there. Somebody else asked about tyres. Uh, it's not about whether you can afford more tyres. You're only allowed one set for the race weekend. Well, one set for qualifying heats and the finals. So there we go. That uh, uh, solves that problem. Connor Hughes is quite correct. There is a terrific race unfolding here at Grantham. Tomorrow, if you want to come and watch, you can. And I believe it is free. F-R-E. Free. Oh, a oh, weekend of, uh, of busy motorsport. What's better than free? Yeah, exactly. Four is better than free. <laughs> but you've only got one set of eyes. You can only watch one, one broadcast at a time. And this is where it is. Bradshaw and Pritchard Williams with 30 uh, seconds to go. Mike Zellner. Cheers. Didn't expect... Well, we were, we're a font of knowledge up here in the commentary box, Mike, but uh, the Atal cart, uh, there's, a, there's a really good uh, sort of retro uh, mm. karting uh, movement in the UK. Formula 100, they did a Days of Thunder race down at Clay Pigeon, and uh, yeah, the Atal cart logos were out in force. It was great to see. There was a couple of BRMs, a few Technos, Techno, 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 uh, as well. But... Uh, 1-2 for Strawberry Racing, the Tony Kart Brigade up front with Bradshaw and Pritchard Williams as the clock strikes zero. zero. And right now, looks like uh, these two drivers just happy to keep in this formation. It's going to be good points for both of them, knowing it's going to be it's going to be tough to get to the very front uh. of uh, Senior Rotax this weekend. You don't want to uh, put yourself on the back foot in the first round of heats. Final lap board about to come out, then there is the number 30 of Jamie Perilli, what yes. a drive from Jamie here. Uh, where did uh, where did Jamie start? Well, it was on the fourth row of the grid, but went back a bit, a little bit at the start. Has worked his way back up to uh, third, uh, fourth place. As there is a change for the lead, uh, so yes. they're not going to stay in this formation. Teddy Pritchard Williams goes down the inside of Callum Bradshaw, takes the lead at the start of the final lap, but it was a bit wide there coming off the bridge. Yes. Of course, that's going to be an opportunity for Bradshaw to go down the inside. Retakes the lead into hairpin one, but how many times have we seen an attack through hairpin one lead to action in hairpin number two? Bradshaw wise to that, defends. Can he get across? Yes, he can to hold that line ahead of Pritchard Williams into the Fullerton S's. That's some good opportunities for Teddy Pritchard-Williams to go back through. Can Bradshaw hold on? Yes, well, it looks as though he will. Out to the Mike Wilson complex. Teddy Pritchard-Williams has had a couple of little looks, but uh, this is a heat race and he knows. Let's uh, save, uh, our, keep our powder dry until the finals. It's a one-two for Strawberry Racing. And uh, Bradshaw and Pritchard Williams lead Lewis Gilbert to the Craft Motorsport entry across the line by exactly one second. Jamie Perilli takes third. Then the two Sam Pollock racing drivers of Jack Lilly and Ethan Jeff Hall. Brandon Nagelwort in seventh place, followed by Gustav Usakov, David Aulejner, and a great drive for Alex Moody. That's one mm. of the best drives I've seen from him from 21st to 10th. For the Cato Motorsport team, George Donald, Sam Baker, saw Sam's dog, May, lovely little brown cocker spaniel uh, in the paddock earlier on. Reg Hayward and Ollie Goodyear for the Privateer Brigade in P14. Yeah, really good drive there from Goodyear. Luca Osmond Price, P15, Alex Adams Axton uh, and Stefan Kaczmacic inside uh, the top 20, completed by Armand Hamilton, Luke Bate and uh, Matthew Sayer. Tyler Harris, Dugas Pravlonis. Rachel Robertson, Alex Duncan and Ben Cook all inside the top 25. Ethan Martin, Joshua Rudd and Ethan Critchley, the last of the finishers. Two retirements in that race, unfortunately, for Spencer Braum and Joshua Graham. But Callum Bradshaw back in action here in the Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championship. And he starts Henry with a win. Yes, uh, it's like he's never been away. One of those, that's it. Nope, I'm finished. I'm retiring. Nope, 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 not retiring. And then, uh, oh, look at this. Uh, I'm at a kart circuit. Because he does have his own driver training program. He does. Uh, he's been working with a number of drivers around the world. 
and of course it's just while you're at a cart circuit you know you may as well have a little dabble but of course you know there is another event at this circuit later in the year an event that Callum might have won a few years ago an event that the last time it was held in the UK saw two British drivers come out on top but of course I'm talking about the CIK World Championships and I'm just wondering how many of these drivers will end up popping onto the entry list in September for that event. We're, we're purely speculating. Pure speculation, of course, but it's a ladies one, it's and a gentlemen. One -off, it's a one-off event, one -off. and by that it's nature, you know, it's, it's not like a, a, it's a, it's a know, world multiple events uh, to, to commit to over a number of yes. weeks. And of course, and this is what is going to be great fun, this now... This event, this event does qualify for the international karting rankings, of which we will get uh, into more as the season progresses. But for the first time in quite a while, we're about to hear from Callum Bradshaw down with Nicole Sutherland. Race three winner, Callum Bradshaw. Callum, uh, you've returned to the British Kart Championships yesterday. I think a lot of people were ask, asking the same question. Can you tell us a bit about why you're back? Um, I've been on the sidelines obviously last year um, and then obviously I've just been looking at it obviously all, all year itching to get back um, and thought you know what why not this year I'll always um, only going to regret it if I don't do it this year um, obviously I can do coaching uh, which is what I'm doing now uh, anyway um, and it sort of doesn't hinder that so um, I thought why not yeah and a really controlled race there by, by you teammate Teddy right behind you on your tail can you tell us a bit about as well is there any strategy when teammates are working together like that for you or is it every man for yourself in in your opinion no obviously it's really good to have teammates at the front obviously you're, you're always with them you're sharing data with them so um, obviously you'd rather have your teammate than than nobody else um and i saw we had like a we kept having a little gap um and then my front right was getting actually quite quite warm i was under steering a lot so i thought i'd hit the front i had a bit more pace and then I think we just broke the pack and obviously there was no, nothing major to happen, but um, yeah, took the win, so it was nice. That's great. Great to hear from you, Callum. Good luck for the rest of your weekend. Uh, before we head to our next race, we'll just hear quickly from Kart Sim, one of our championship sponsors. Welcome back to live coverage here at PF International. It's uh, event one for the 2024 Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. Uh, we will see Senior Rotax later on this afternoon for another two heats. But we're going to get ready for uh, Junior Rotax up next, Henry. And yes. it's Groups A and C heading it up first. It is indeed. Look at that there. This, what's that famous line from the film Le Mans? Racing is life. Everything that happens before and after is just waiting. Well, there's one of the calls. That's uh, Charlie Cox waiting, waiting, just waiting. But, yes, 61 drivers in Junior Rotax set to go for their first heat race. They're all settled down on the dummy grid, just underneath uh, the, uh, you can see where the TVKC board with PFI on the Tag Heuer symbols. Uh, you can just see under there where Dan Ashton is walking. But of course, one of the new features that we've got this year for you that you may have seen at the O plate is we have our driving standards advisor, uh, David Manchester. There is the bunch of circuit cameras, not the same as uh, our Alpha Live cameras. Now they have got, uh, they do all the official adjudications in there. You know, it goes from the circuits to the cameras to then the stewards if necessary. Uh, Alfie Garford was here at the O plate as a, as a driving standards advisor. Uh, I'm not sure if he's here this weekend, but uh, just an idea of how things go. Uh, Alfie is with the stewards now. Uh, there is Jonathan Paler and Mr. Carter down at the front of the grid. Mr. Malotti behind, and that's uh, Jack Dex's better half behind them. Here is a look at uh, this, Finley Buckstad. I wonder if, oh, here we go. As Finley Buck shaved that horrible growth off his top <laughs> lip since the O plate, because his mum was, uh, as, his mum was quite upset that we, well, not quite upset, that she was quite pleased that we called him Bum Fluff Buck because um, apparently mum wants Finley to, to shave said 
uh, growth <laughs> of his top lip. And I do wonder. Dad is just great. Is just jealous because there's, he's got hair and Dad doesn't, doesn't have it. No, no, no. That, that ship has sailed a long, a long time, time ago. ago. Okay, here we go. It is race number four, Junior Rotax, Group A and Group C. Junior Rotax Heat 1, Thomas Mintzveering starts on pole position, Harrison Crowell alongside on, front, on the front row, Lucas Blanford and Harrison Whittacombe on row 2, Noah Barham and Jack West on row 3, Joel Anderson, uh, Joe Anderson and Kenzo Craigie on row 4. Row number 5, Kai Clark and Joshua Smith, then it's Joshua Turnbull and from Australia, James Anagiostis. Charlie Nee from Thailand and Jacob Woods are on row seven with Hugh Bolton and Azerbaijan's John Richardson up next. Finley Buck and Lizzie Menti are on row nine. Shane Chandaria and Victor Hansen complete the top 20. Henry Cameron and Jack Baker on row 11. Eli Baden and Freddie Housley on row 12. The rest of the starting lineup. Ryan Gill and Cole Denham all the way back in 26 with Jensen Pritchard and Mikey Walker. Followed by Michael Dalton, Vlad Tomenchuk and Sebastian Lush rounding out the 31 cart starting lineup. Again, international field, several drivers from Australia, Thailand, Kenya, and as well as the entire English world. But the reigning Mini Max British champion, Cole Denham, watch for the number 82 cart, the Scotsman, starting all the way back on the 13th row of this grid. Yeah, that's not what he would have been expecting. Was uh, strong yesterday in free practice, but uh, troubles early today in timed qualifying. Leaves him with a lot to do. It's same story as uh, we have in the seniors. 61 drivers, 28 of them will qualify through to the pre-final directly with six more opportunities in the repper charge. Let's get things going for Junior Rotax here this weekend. We're away for the first heat of the categories uh, weekend, good start for Thomas Mitzbearing, one driver immediately taking to the grass uh, off the start, but a beautiful start for Argenti Motorsports, Thomas Mitzbearing onto the bridge and clear of the rest of the order down towards Hairpin, one to go for the first time, one of the DHRs, was it? No, it's one of the Tooley Motorsports, I think, running uh, a bit wide, no, sorry, was one of the DHRs uh, running a bit wide, as expected in Junior Rotax. It's all about keeping it pointing in the right direction, ah. and that is not what's happened there. Oh, and, and uh, there's oh. several not taking your advice, Andrew, yet. I mean, yes, unfortunately, there were three drivers doing exactly what you told them not to do. Uh, one of them has got a very badly bent rear axle. That's the number 92 of Jack, Jack West. West. Um, his hopes have gone south. And it's one of the Jack Dex racing drivers as well. The number 33 of Mikey Walker, also in trouble. Uh, we'll catch up with whoever else was involved in that at the end of lap number one. But it's, Min, oh, it's Thomas Min spearing still in the race lead. And uh, clear by almost half a second. Harrison Crowther's looked very strong so far this weekend in terms of lap pace. What has he got uh, in terms of... Uh, Elongated races, yellow flag down into uh, into hairpin one, of course, yes, acknowledged yes. by the drivers. It's Harrison Whittacombe now looking mm. down the inside as they're clear of the incidents. Kenzo Craigie uh, there in the number 44 as well as all oh, challenge for Crowther down the inside, takes the lead. Beautifully done from Harrison Crowther, who's liking things at the moment here at PFI. It's had a, a very good preparation for this first event of the season. The good news for Thomas Minspearing right now is he's got some help from behind in the form of his teammate Harrison Whittacombe. Quite a strong Argenti presence in this race. Second and third at the moment. Kenzo Craigie now up to fifth. And keep an eye out for James Anagnostiaidis racing in the Vera Tools British Kart Championships for the first time. So a lot of racing in Europe. He's another member of the Mercedes AMG uh, development programme. Ah. Same as Kenzo Craigie. They are teammates out uh, in FIA CIK, for example, and yes. now here. It's a very interesting story of how those two are going to compare on Kenzo's home patch, as it were. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, Jane's got a sister who raced the old place. Yes. Uh, is it Ava? Ag Ava Agnostitis, not, uh, not racing this weekend. No, no, but, but it's great uh, to see her at uh, the old plate. Uh, I've got to say, though, Harrison Crowther. I mean, in 2021, Harrison uh, in Minimax was one of, the, one of the championship contenders, went to the Rotax Grand Finals, 
But then when he moved into juniors, he's had a couple of years where it was a little bit of the doldrums. He's back, you know, he moved teams, he's back with Coles Racing. I've got to say, he is back on form this year. He was very quick at the old plate. He's obviously very quick here. He's got another driver, Harrison Whittacombe, who I, I think is probably one of those, he's a championship sleeper. Hmm. When you're looking at potential champions, you obviously you look at the likes of Harry Bartle and you look at the likes of, uh, you know, Kenzo Craigie. But then you, uh, behind them, you've got a bunch of drivers that, yeah, uh, are probably not getting the headlines that some of their, uh, their rivals are getting, but are just as quick. And uh, Harrison Whittaker and Harrison Crowther, the two Harrisons, oh, uh, that was, they had a, a, a brief uh, moment of uh, they were almost conjoined twins. Same name, almost the same bit of tarmac they were aiming for there. So Vic Tullin nearly fell off my chair at that one. Yes. Uh, Luke Splanford coming through up to third place with that. So Crowther now down into the clutches of Kenzo Craigie. And look, after a, a, a tough timed qualifying, it's a different format, of course, here with the yes. average three laps. Yep. James Anagnostiadis is now the fastest driver on circuit. He's just put two, no, just the single uh, best lap out there with a 58.37. He's now to seventh place. And Plus five second penalty for Victor Hansen. Sorry, oh, Andy. No, As, no, uh, no. I just through saw there went Kenzo Craig, I believe. Yes, uh, Craig moving into P4. Now, this is impressive. One, two, three Argenti carts in the top four. Make that the top three almost. As, uh, yeah, Lucas Blanford. Now, Blanford... If you have a look at the side of Blanford's car on the rear bumper, he's got that. We, we spoke about this at the old plate. He has got, oh, as, uh, there's all kicking off there. Uh, Blanford has got his Sacred Skin Aesthetics sponsorship on the rear end plates of the bumper. Um, we were going to send down uh, an Alpha Live uh, beanie for it, but basically what we're going to do instead is that we've got some new merchandise here uh, for the uh, Motorsport UK, the Vivera Tool stuff, and the gelets come with like a little hat. So we're gonna, I'm just going to hmm. tip X A on the top and give him that. It's just, it's, yeah. There we go. There we are. But we're, well done we're for uh, Lucas Blanford for getting his sponsor on there. We'll get a nice camera shot of it at some point, but uh, maybe when things calm down. Oh, wait there, they won't calm down. This is Rotax. Through coming there, I think uh, Joshua Turnbull is up to fourth place, is having to deal with Harrison Crowther to the outside, and uh, through there as well, is that Hugh Moulton on uh, the move, and Joshua Smith, we should note yep. as well, in the number 15, so uh, side by side with James Anagnostiadis towards the Fullerton S's, advantage to the Australian that time around, but look at this, one, two, three. Okay. For Argenti at the moment, this is a very good performance indeed. It is indeed. I'm going to say this once, so I'm going to only say it once. So Harrison Whitaker, Nigel, back in the pits. Tyres. Don't walk out of the pits with them oh, on the cart. Right, there we go. Said that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was a... Uh, it, uh, it was a it was a lapse of... It was, it, was a mo it, was, it was a momentary lapse of, I've got 87 things to do and about half an hour which to do them. And the mechanic, uh, the Ope Harrison's a mechanic, Nigel Hathaway, at the uh, uh, old plate sort of just wandered out of park for me, thinking about all those things with the tyres still attached to the cart. In the British Championship, you have park, park Ferme tyres. So you have to take the cart, uh, take the tyres off the cart before you leave Park Ferme and leave them in Park Ferme. And if you leave, if you if you walk out of Park Ferme with the tyres still on the cart, ah, then you are disqualified for the event. Uh, that is Cole Denham checking the tyres on his number 82 chassis. Cole doing a lot of oak. Is he doing the CIK uh, he, yeah, events? Yeah, he, he has. He has been doing uh, OK Junior so far this year. He's yes. had a bit of a tough year so far, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better here, at least in this round of heats in junior Rotax. Three minutes to go. New fastest lap of the race for Kenzo Craigie. The third of those Argentis at the very front of the field. Harrison Crowther now back up to fourth place. Has just got past Joshua Turnbull. Hugh Moulton and Kai Clark are also improving. They've both got past Joe Anderson and Finley Buck. Terrible moustache or no Ter terrible moustache yep, yep. is uh, is also gaining spots. Is up to 12th place now, I, a gain of five. I, I think he's probably shaved it off. It's given him that extra like couple of hundreds of a second. A uh, bit of extra sli stream streamlined, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> under the crash helmet. Kenzo Craigie just giving the E plate. Now, what does the E plate stand for? He is the English champion, is Thomas Min. Uh, that's the E plate. The O plate is obviously the British Open champion. 
uh, single digits up to 1 through 10. That is their seeded positions from last year's British Championship. Cole Denham, who is the uh, reigning Minimax champion, he doesn't take that number one play up mm. with him to juniors. Uh, you can't oh, oh dear. And that is uh, John Richardson, the MLC motorsport driver for, from Azerbaijan at the Fullerton S's, holding his wrist. Now, I've got to say that uh, Dan Ashton is already with uh, John Richardson. You can see the Azerbaijan colours on his flag. There are yellow flags waving coming into the Fullerton S's. Uh, 90 seconds to go. Harrison Crowther holding off uh, Josh Turnbull, Noah Barham, uh, Hugh Moulton, Lucas Blanford and James Anagnias. Sorry, I'm going to start this one again. James Anagnias. Something like that. Getting closer. The Aussie. Uh, one minute James. 20 to go. Yeah. Uh, good, the good news is John Richardson is on his feet and walking <laughs> to, uh, to a safe position with Dan Ashton. But uh, not the best uh, result there, unfortunately, for John Lurge. Just over a minute to go. So I think we'll have... I think we're going to have three more laps here. There's going to be about seven. Oh, it's out. It's oh. Blanford. Lucas Blanford out. Having had such a, a great start early on. And is going to fall out of the top 20, out of the top 25. That is a, a gutting moment for the ultimate R driver. Yes, indeed. Um, but the top three, I will uh, check. Uh, with, I shall confirm whether it's free to enter tomorrow. I believe it is. I will check, though, and confirm on there as we got look looking at Whittacombe, Craigie and Spearing. So this is a good so this is good for Harris and Whittacombe. It's a heat race, it's against a teammate, but you know what? If I can beat my teammate who's part of the Mercedes Formula One Young Driver program, if I can beat him in a head to head scrap in a heat race, doesn't matter, it's a race, then that uh, gives me a little bit of a, a pep in my step, so to speak. Really does. So the drivers are going to come across the line with about six Ooh. seconds remaining. So we're going to have two more laps here for Harrison Whittacombe to hold on to this lead ahead of Craigie and Spearing. Changes further down the order. Good drive from Charlie Neve has got up to 12th place ahead of Freddie Housley. Uh, Freddie Housley, I think, in fact, or still with having been overtaken, is uh, your biggest mover in this race, up 11 to 13th. Bit further back, this is the fourth place battle. Crowther, Turnbull, Barham. And uh, Hugh Moulton, fourth down to seventh place. Looking fairly stable at the moment. They're not too far ahead of Joe Anderson, so they've uh, got to think tactically. If they fight too hard, they could fall into the clutches of those in the second half of the top ten. Battle is starting, though, at the front of the order. The three Argentis, Whittacombe, Craigie and Spearing. Craigie wanting to find a way through. There is John Richardson out of this race. Now the last lap board will be seen and Whittacombe defending to driver's right. Doesn't want to offer an opportunity for Craigie to go down the inside into the Bruno Ferrari chicane. This is Whittacombe properly getting his elbows out here. Yes, indeed. They go on to the bridge. Whittacombe still ahead. The Welshman leads Kenzo Craigie and Thomas Min spearing down towards hairpin number one. Now Spearing's going to try the over-under but... Uh, his path is blocked by his teammate. Whitcomb checking over his shoulder again. Now Craigie has to defend as well as attack. That could give Harris and Whitcomb the crucial gap he needs. So Harris and Whitcomb as uh, Spearing takes second. This could be a bit of a redemption drive for Whitcomb. Well, it was an absolute disaster at the end of the first heat at the O plate for Harris and Whitcomb. What a way to bounce back here in Junior Rotax taking the chequered flag at the end of heat one in junior road tax harrison whittacombe welcome back to the form yeah. table here and takes the win ahead of his two teammates in the form of thomas min spearing and kenzo craigie harrison crow the fourth joshua turnbull in fifth and and that was a, not the most spectacular end to the race henry but a, a really impressive driver thought there from harrison whittacombe to not panic, yep. hold onto the position, defend when he needs to. Yep. A very accomplished victory. And it's a, a, a one, two, three for the Argenti Motorsport team, which will please team boss Ron Meadows, uh, no doubt. Harrison Crowder finishing fourth. Then it's uh, two John uh, Dan Holland racing teammates, Josh Turnbull and Noah Barham rounding out the top six instead of Hugh Moulton, ahead of Hugh Moulton, Joe Anderson, Kai Clark and Finley Buck with Joshua Smith, Charlie Neve, Freddie Housley, and James 
Anna... Oh, I'm going to get it right. Anna Diastart is something like that. RC James is next. Ryan Gill, 15th. Uh, Victor Hansen, Jensen Pritchard, Jacob Woods, Jack Baker and Sebastian Lush inside the top 20. Lizzie Mentor, 21st, ahead of Vlad Dom uh, Tomanchuk. Uh, Henry Cameron, Michael Dalton and Eli Baden, the last of the finishers, taking us down to 25th. Quite a few retirements in that one, including Lucas Blanford, John Richardson, Cole Denham, uh, Mikey Walker, Jack West and Shane Chandaria uh, all did not see the chequered flag. Yes, and uh, ah, the uh, customary uh, high fives and uh, fist bumps between the uh, three our Genty Motorsport teammates, and uh, wow, well, we're gonna have. A f I wonder if, uh, wonder if, we can, if Harrison can can do his interview in Welsh. That'd be lovely. That would. It'd be great for the one person in the audience that is uh, can speak Welsh. Uh, a big hello to all 500 of you that are watching at the moment. But I mean, we'll, we'll do better than that. We're gonna we're gonna double that figure by the end of the day. We're gonna triple it tomorrow. Uh, the O plate uh, live live broadcast was uh, it, uh, was viewed by I think twenty six thousand views. We had sixteen hundred people watching the final uh, at the, at the, as it was going out live. Yes, yeah, so we're going to aim for the big two K uh, tomorrow uh, morning, Babs. Oh, afternoon, Babs. Uh, Barbara Lapper. Uh, that's Arby Lapper's nan. That is, I know Babs. She's uh, she's oh she's. Albie's got uh, f uh, fans in Bromley, Spain, the USA, and Australia. That's, that's about as uh, a, that's well, about as a bigger breath as we've got in the Cosmopolitan as you can get. Uh, hello to uh, Team Farius. Uh, hello, uh, yeah, Cross-Eyed Lion. Um, yes, it's, and Danny, it's a dangerous thing to come to PFI with a full wallet because the uh, various food and beverage vendors that are scattered liberally around the paddock can find a way to relieve you of said cash. But Nicole Sutherland is down in the pits speaking to a victorious Welshman. Mr Whitcomb, take it away. So Junior Road Tax Heat 2 winner, Harrison Whitcomb. Harrison, how was the race for you? Yeah, a really good race. Managed to get to the lead quite early and just kept the gap and managed to just stay in the lead. Have a nice little win. And it was an Argenti 1-2-3 there for you. Yeah. In a heat, when you're in that situation with your teammates, do you change the way you drive at all? I mean, you go a bit less defensive when you have all your drivers around you, So uh, when you have your teammates around you. So uh, it's really nice just to push away with all three of us. So it's just a nice, easy heat one for us, 1-2-3. And can you tell us a little bit about what your goals are for this year? Uh, my goal for this year is to be British champion. Great, very best of luck to you Thank for you. the rest of this weekend and your season, Harrison. We'll go back up to the comms box, but first, just a quick word from Vera Tools, championship partner. Welcome back here to PF International, live coverage of event one for the Vera Tools uh, Motorsport UK British Car Championships. Andrew Mather and Henry Baudet on commentary duties for you uh, here today and tomorrow, of course, as well for the remaining heats, the repercharges, uh, the pre-finals and the finals. Uh, can't miss a single piece of the action here this weekend in Lincolnshire uh, with your live broadcasts brought to you by Alpha Live. Yes. And, uh, yeah, it's been a good uh, good first four races, Henry. It has been, indeed. I have a complaint to make, an official complaint to make. Somebody has accused me on the live chat of having a large wallet. Uh, That's not true. Uh, absolutely not true. I mean, well, it, it is, it's only because there's lots of dust in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, oh, a big welcome back He's on the back. live chat. He's back. Uncle Tyrone, I can tell that the next race is going to have Brian and Truman in it. Can Brandon win? Of course he can. Right, there we go. Uh, Henry, can I have your word here? I want to start racing. I'm 14. I think you can help my parents say, wait to the sponsor. Uh, 
<laughs> well, you won't get a sponsor until you can prove what you can do on the track. And uh, my advice to you would be to try to find your local circuit and find something as cost effective and as cheap as possible to get out there and then start pounding the pavement and get some local businesses to invest in your career. But before that, we've got some racing to do. Yes, Andrew? We have indeed. Get, let's get ready. Uh, race number five on our programmes for this weekend. It's Junior Rotax, heat number two. Let's take you through the grid for Groups B and D racing for the first time this weekend. Matteo Palazzo and Jacob Ashcroft on row one. William Antrobus and Owen Neve on row two. Brandon Truman Hello. and Ryan Gandor on row three. Thomas Behrman and Kai Veitch on row four. Rounding out your top ten, Ben Horner and Ivan Bansal. Then Lewis Goff and Adam Wooden with Harry Bart on the O-Plate champion of Cameron Nelson on row number seven, Luca Mongi and Daniel Kilpatrick from Northern Ireland. Uh, Zane Quaker and Alvi Lapper on row nine, William Archer and Emily Cotty completing the top 20, Charlie Cox and Leon Hasty on row 11, Aris Majowskis and Lachlan Johnston on row 12. Then it's Isaac Barker and Aidan Mitchell, Scott Marsh, welcome back, uh, and Zach McDonald on row 14 with uh, Matas Miazanskas and Marcel Popacool on the final row of the grid. Welcome back, Scott Marsh, although I'm not quite sure what happened in qualifying, but the uh, 2022 Junior Rotax Grand Finals champion uh, is back in the British Championship, as well as doing other forms of racing uh, around the world. But uh, he's going to have some work cut out for him as uh, the... Uh, Ashcroft, who was so, so unlucky at the O-Plate. But let's talk a little bit about that driver there. Lucas Palazzo, uh, Matteo Palazzo, on the red speed for Saltire Motorsport. That's a false start, if ever I saw one. But, I mean, one driver here representing the Saltire team, and that's Matteo Palazzo. And he's only gone and bunged it on pole position. He has, indeed. He was a bit of a, a disrupted qualifying. I think everyone, uh, everyone getting in each other's way, shall well, we say. Uh, but Matteo Palazzo, you know... Got the fastest time yep. and yep. more than deserves uh, this chance to start from pole position. Now, see, that's the thing. I, I, a lot of people say, well, what's with the whole, you know, three lap average in qualifying? Well, Motorsport mm. UK brought that in to stop people going out and just sitting on the racing line and cruising around, you know, and yet and, and to force the drivers to go out and, and, and drive properly because mm. it was always my fear that we were going to have a huge accident with a cart at race speed coming across and, and hitting a cart going at, you know, crawling pace. And yet, despite that, still, occasionally, the drivers managed to find a way to, uh, to, to ruin it for themselves. Well, not for Matteo Palazzo. Can he hold on now at the front? He'll that is the uh, question. I definitely hope so. Once again, it'll be 10 minutes plus one lap. And the job for these drivers, same as uh, we've said already, but if you're just joining us, 61 drivers in Junior Rotax this weekend. Top 28 from the two rounds of heats in the standings and the intermediate classification go straight through to the pre-final. The rest of them will hope to bag one of the six remaining spots in the finals through the repercharge. charge. That's all for tomorrow. This is today, Saturday at PFI. Race number five, Junior Rotax heat number two is ready to go eyes on those lights the red the green we're racing good start for palazzo the rest of them trying to break through immediately into the bruno ferrari chicane for the first time good start for the pole sitter good oh, start as well in the barriers for william antrobus and it's a mess towards the back of the field numerous drivers emily cotty one of them one two three drivers still uh, waiting to get going as the, under the bridge big moment there they're all up and out of their carts and walking away that's the key. They're all, I mean, one driver is left at the start. I'm trying to think that could be Zach McDonald, uh, one of the strawberry racing drivers. The others involved in that, the one car that made contact with the barriers very, very hard indeed. I think that could have been, uh, we'll have a little look there. Whoever they are, they are, it's the number nine cart of Leon Hasty. Uh, he is touring back to the pits, as is the number 14 of Aidan Mitchell, but Critically, everybody is okay. Charlie Cox out of the race as well, uh, looking pretty displeased there, out of the number 12. Uh, so end of lap one, change of leader, Antrobus to the front, Truman P2, Palazzo still there third. 
Uh, good improvement from Thomas Behrman. Great to see him back. We didn't see him at the O plate, of course, but the uh, the younger brother of yep. Ollie Behrman. Good start up to fifth place. Oh. Uh, who was lost out in that one? Well, Zach McDonald didn't even make the start. As yep. we said, he was the driver pulling off the driver's right uh, as the lights went green. Charlie Cox, Leon Hasty, Aris Miauskas is out of the race as well. Looked fantastic uh, yesterday in free practice, but that is a very low score for Strawberry Racing's Aris Miauskas uh, yeah, in uh. this round. There is Leon Hasty out of the race. Tough weekend so far for the Thule Motorsport driver. It's getting no better at this stage. No, um, uh, you saw Aidan Mitchell obviously in a little bit of discomfort as he pulled his precision racing cart into Park Fermi. Now, uh, a word about our pole sitter. They're in fourth position. Matteo Palazzo, he's just got to hold on. Keep doing what he's doing without wanting to upset him or the Saltire Motorsport team. There aren't many people expecting him to stay up at the front. So what he has got to do, he has just got to maximise the opportunities he's got. Instead of battling and getting involved in over-defending and possibly getting involved in incidents which drop down the order, yeah, if you can hang around, Matteo, in the top five, the top six of both the heat races, then that bodes very well. Especially when the leaders in front of you start doing this. They do indeed. Oh, oh the dear. Moment, Owen Neve. Owen Neve uh, running wide and it's all gone wrong for Palazzo. I don't think he did too much <laughs> wrong there. It's just too many carts ahead of him, too many behind, and he's lost out now. Jacob Ashcroft there in third place. Some a, a chat to him yesterday. Uh, hasn't had much in terms of preparation in a junior uh, cart here at PF yep. International, but once again, one of the big talents in Minimax last year, showing his uh, true potential right now is uh, there in third place behind Brandon Truman. So uh, Uncle Tyrone's going to be pleased with this at oh, the moment. Yes. And uh, could be even more pleased in a moment as they go onto the bridge once again. Antrim is still ahead of Truman. Ashcroft third. Thomas Behrman now up to fourth place. Harry Bartle coming through. The O-plate winner from a few weeks ago. As round the outside, Ashcroft goes for the lead. We'll get second place out of that. Demoting Truman down to third. Brave move on the brakes. Well... Wow. Jacob Ashcroft, two things. Number one, he's been watching his teammate Macaulay Bishop. That's what he was trying to do an outside move. But number two, Jacob Ashcroft, Jacob's dad Barry, has said that if Jacob wins one of these heat races, then he gets a brand new pair of Alpine Stars See? race boots. I, you know, I mean, after the, 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 the crash helmet and the money at the old plate, now it's a pair of Alpine Stars race boots if Jacob can win one of his heat races. A what a guy. A truly what a supportive guy. and generous father there is Barry Ashcroft. Uh, Five minutes always. and 45 to go. And, uh, oh, down the inside there, that's Harry Bartle on the scene. And goes through past Ashcroft for second place. Uh, further down the order, I think Adam Wooden's trying to uh, take part in this as well. It's down the inside, Lewis Goff! Oh, oh no! Lewis Goff and Jacob Ashcroft, well, they keep going, but at a much slower pace, and uh, we'll probably lose about 15 positions out of that one. Yes, and, uh, uh, yeah, Harry, Harry, uh, sad, sadly, the boots might have to wait for Jacob Ashcroft, but here is the battle up at the front. William Antrobus saw William Antrobus earlier on, He's got a heck of a mullet. If you put a bit of moustache on him, he looks like an Australian rugby player. Um, but he was saying, look, I, I'm due a win. I'm due a win. Because I was saying to him, he said, when are you guys in, your, in the Sam Pollard team, when are you guys going to finish, you know, we're going to actually get across the line first in a big race. He was, it's coming, it's coming. I can, t I can feel it. He's got the O-plate champion, Harry Bartle, sitting right on his uh, rear posterior. As they go across the bridge, then it's Behrman, Wooden, Truman, Nelson, Zane Quacker up from 17th to te uh, 7th. So Cameron Nelson and Zane Quacker are the two leading championship rookies. There they are uh, on your screens briefly uh, with uh, Quacker for the Ultimate R team in the blue race suit, a plain blue race suit. Um, oh, that's uh, now. As you know, Andrew, I am a man of the people. Yes. Uh, and I know exactly what's going on. I keep my fingers to the pulse. I know what's going on down on the streets, as it were. That is what the kids are calling a ready, great rumpus. It is indeed. As uh, drivers moving up and down the order uh, every second. Four minutes to go then. Bartle still controls this one at the front. Antrobus Behrman, let's... Uh, go through all those changes of position and it's going to change again before we read out this order. Nelson, Neve, uh, Veach, 
Truman, Gando and Palazzo all in the top 10. So Matteo Gap, Palazzo, he's holding in there. Yes, he's he is. He's still in the top 10 after that unfortunate moment. Obviously back on lap number three. A uh, bit of uh, race control information. Plus five second penalty in race penalty to number 74 of Lewis Goff. Ah. Uh, I'd imagine that was for the moment we saw earlier with Jacob Ashcroft. Well, it was probably as but he thinks to himself, oh, five, a five second penalty, that's worth it, because Barry Ashcroft gave me 20 quid he doesn't want to buy his son a new pair of Alpine Stars boots. Only joking. Don't want to create any sort of controversy. It's all it's just a bit of fun. No one get triggered. Here we go then, into the Bobby Game corner. That's the Jack Dex racing entry of Owen Neve doing very, very well at the moment, chasing Cameron Nelson. And uh, Cameron Nelson, now one driver we haven't picked up on is uh, Scott Marsh. And he's gone from 27th to 11th uh, with three minutes to go. That's exactly what uh, we'd expect from Scott Marsh. Uh, he said at the start of the weekend, I asked him, like, are you around for the full season? It's like, well, maybe let's see how this weekend goes. He's showing here in heat number two, and he's definitely got this. I do hope that Scott uh, does uh, the full season. I have to say, uh, it's always great to have Scott and his family in the paddock. I know his brother Sam uh, is mechanicing and works for, for Dan Holland Racing, but uh, you know Scott is a is a great ambassador for the sport as, a, as in general. You know, he's uh, he's very, very polite, very, very uh, professional in terms of dealing with the media and the press. And of course, he's very, very talented. Now, two minutes to go. Bartle needs Antrobus by half a second. You're looking at the battle for fifth between the Jack Dex Racing entry of Owen Neve, number 18, being followed by Cameron Nelson, Kai Beach, and Brandon Truman, with Palazzo and Marsh next in line. Well, there we go. Saltire Motorsports, uh, Matteo Palazzo, meet former Rotax Grand Finals champion and international uh, OK and OK Junior driver, Scott Marsh. Yeah, it's going to be a big challenge for Matteo Palazzo. He's uh, been putting up some... Uh, good lap times in this race. Will be backing himself to keep ahead of the number 30 there. 90 seconds remaining on the clock. Uh, it's calmed down relatively for, uh, for a junior Rotax heat. It's down the inside there. That was the number 87 of Brandon Truman going past uh, the number 75 of uh, Kaivich for seventh place. So Brandon Truman coming back into yep. this one, having started fifth on the grid, was up to second place in the early stages. Uh, slipped down the order, but has not given this one up. One minute to go. Wow. Bartle still leading uh, Henry. And lap time's looking stable right now. Antrobus needing to get, I'd imagine, into the low 58 force to challenge for the lead. Yeah, Bartle is sort of at that a distance where he, you know, coming out of the corners, he's just out of slipstream range. Down the hill towards hairpin number one we go. And, uh, yeah, or everyone in the top five or six is now pretty well spaced out. In fact, the, the first battle is for fifth position between Owen Neve uh, in the number 18 cart and Cameron Nelson in the number 41. Uh, there they are, coming through the Fullerton S's now. Behind them, Brandon Truman. Yeah, he went past uh, Kai Veach uh, there. And, of course, you know, you say, why'd you pass him? It was at a funny angle. And, uh, yeah, Kai Beach is now behind him. So uh, there we go. And uh, closing on the pair of them is Scott Marsh. Scott Marsh uh, charging up the order like he needs a toilet or something at the end of the race. He wants to get it over and done with as quick as possible. New fastest lap for Marsh. Uh, but that has just been taken by Ayman Banzal. 57.81 from the Indian driver. Well, I know he's getting coached from Callum Bradshaw. That was a Callum Bradshaw style lap, if ever there was one. Well that's, done, Ironman. That's a very good race pace uh, at this stage. Time is up, uh, but there will be this lap to be completed, plus one more. That's down the inside again. Scott Marsh going for another move, this time uh, on coverage for, uh, for eighth place. Bartle still holding at half a second clear of, uh, of Antrobus. Thomas Behrman. A quiet race, I think, so far for Thomas Behrman. Third place, that'll do at the start of the weekend as move forward from seventh place on the grid. Owen Neve still there in sixth. Final lap board is out then. Bartle continuing the form that we saw at Wilton Mill a few weeks ago in the O-plate. Leads. It's not the fastest driver out on circuit, though, because Albi Lapper is now 
uh, the uh, the fastest of them all. 57.74. Where is Albi Lapitani? 15th place with a gain of three uh, in this one. That's a solid result. That's uh, the kind of result that would move Albi Lapa into discussion of moving through to the final. Uh, but this has been a very accomplished drive yet again, Henry, from uh, from Harry Bartle. It's looking in uh, yep. strong form. Yeah, even though he didn't qualify very well, he started on the seventh row of the grid. You know, that's irresistible form, uh, you know. And, okay, there was an incident, but the inc there's not been any incidents, really. He's just passed people left, right and centre. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened with Strawberry Racing's qualifying, but there's an awful lot of Strawberry drivers down the order, but their race pace as proven there by Harry Bartle and by Scott Marsh, who crosses the line in eighth position, is very, very strong indeed. And a good victory for Harry Bartle and Strawberry Racing. Know this circuit very well, of course, and they take it after 12 laps ahead of William Antrobus. Another good result for Sam Pollitt Racing in second, Thomas Behrman in third, Adam Wooden makes it two uh, KR Sports in the top five. That's completed by the top rookie, Cameron Nelson for DHR. Owen Neve, good points there for Jack Dex Racing in sixth. Brandon Truman, Scott Marsh, Kaivich and uh, Matteo Palazzo completed top ten. Good drive there from Palazzo, uh, taking advantage of that uh, good qualifying. Gets good points on the board. Lewis Goff, 11th, but has a penalty ahead uh, of Zane uh, Quaker. Luca Magni, Albi Lappa completing the top 15, 14. The uh, 15th place driver was Ryan Gandor. Yeah, the Canadian driver. Uh, there is now there's Mick Streak with the uh, take the, the weight. So that's the weigh scale. Uh, they will have their nose cones checked, or the top drivers that go into this part of the track, they'll have their nose cones checked there. Everybody else gets their nose cones checked back in the paddock by the iPad of Doom. There's William Antrobus. Um, you know, it is, it's business up front, his haircut, business up front, party at the rear. Um, there was a driver back in the back in the, the, the 2020 called Archie Brown, and we caught mm. me and Anthony christened him the Flying Mullet. Well, Archie has now gone on to race uh, stock cars, short oval racing, and has got a great merchandise, and is now officially known as the That's Flying, the flying Mullet. Mullet, yeah. On his there's Gary Shield from uh, Jag Rotax. Jag, the five-time uh, Rotax distributor of the year, as you know, with 180 drivers, you know here with 187 drivers across the four Rotax classes here this weekend. That is good. When are the Hondas out, says Karting Boy on the live chat. Well, Karting Boy, I will only tell you if you are the 75th person to like this broadcast. As Motorsport Magpie uh, points out, we have over 500 viewers, but only 74 likes. So, uh, Karting Boy, please come back to me when you have liked, subscribed, and shared this broadcast, and I will tell you. But not until. Hmm. I like what you've done there. Uh, very, very good indeed. Uh, we'll hopefully be uh, be down in Park Ferme shortly with uh, with Nicole Sutherland. But uh, until that point, do keep it locked here uh, on your broadcast platform yes, yes. of choice. Uh, when Senior X30 out, May. When we back here for the first round of the uh, IAMI British Championship Smithy Racing, May the 11th and 12th, I believe, uh, when Senior X30 is out. So you've got a bit of a wait, bit of a wait, bit of a wait. But uh, do stick, uh, do stick with us. Plenty more racing, seven more races to uh, to go here today. Uh, I know uh, Motorsport Magpie as a as a admin was posting it in a. Uh, the chat as well, but uh, if you've got a second uh, screen, do uh, do get the live timing up. But I do think we are now ready. Let's head down to Park Ferme and Nicole Sutherland. We're with Junior Rotax Heat 2 winner Harry Bartle. Harry, you've had a really good run throughout the winter. No doubt you'll be feeling confident about this year. Can you just tell us a little bit about what advice Strawberry Racing have been giving you ahead of this season? Uh, obviously, it's a long, long season, so to try and get as many points on the table and not have any disasters. And it's gone so far, it's gone well so far. So yeah. And in your opinion, if you're if you're comfortable ask, uh, answering, who do you think your biggest competition is for championship? Uh, I'm not really sure. Really, everyone's more or less the same pace, so it's just going to be it's going to be a hard year. Great. Well, best of luck to you, Harry. Uh, we'll go back up to the comms box uh, ahead of our next race. 
Thank you, Nicole. And uh, that next race will be the uh, the first heat for Micro Max uh, UK. Uh, and uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. All drivers uh, will be involved in this one across the category here today. Uh, this will be the first of two heats. The second one will be tomorrow morning which you will be able to uh to view here on your broadcast platform of mm. choice yes speaking of now uh we've joined on the uh live chat by uh, uh roger young and by anthony hogg hi tony watching from the uae out at dubai um we will uh I'll talk about a little bit late in a moment but before that it's going to be race six micromax coming up now Take you through the grid for Micromax UK. Luke Millward on pole position, joined by a new O-plate holder Joshua Cook. George Swire and Sebastian Behrman on row two. Alfie Garrett and Lucian Smith on row three. Alfie Mayer and James Roots on row four. Row number five, Max Jolly and Josh Hushka. Then Charlie Page and Maximilian Abrahart with Maria Roberto and George Klimo on row seven and Benedictus Masiokas joined by Harry Ratcliffe on row eight. Logan Rolfe and Harris Barber go from row nine. Soren Gallagher and Arthur Farrow complete the top 20. Ansel Murray starts on row 11 alongside debutante Chloe McGill. Buddy Hugo and Dean Pahal on row 12. William Crombie, Albert Farrow and Austin Oman at the back of the grid. Obviously, there's an issue for Oman after qualifying. So watch for him. Watch for Diem Pahal as well to uh, make their way up through the starting order. But uh, we've got a lot of DD2 Masters drivers uh, watching this. Uh, obviously, we've got running DD2 here, but we'll have the DD2 class at some point, I'm sure, this year in the UK, potentially. So, uh, of course, they're the, the DD2s, the DD2 Masters, the two-speeds Rotax carts. These are the babies of the Rotax family. It's the Micromax drivers. And it's an all-KR Sport front row. Is indeed. Luke Millwood has looked good so far this weekend. Can he convert from pole position? Away we go then for 10 minutes plus one lap. Good start from the Micromax UK pilots going under the bridge now for the first time. There's one driver off towards the back of the field. We'll try and catch up with who that is in a moment, but it's Millwood leading early stages from Cook. Good start as well for Alfie Garrett up to P3. Indeed, and several drivers getting high, wide and handsome coming off the bridge, but here they come plunging down towards the first hairpin. And they almost get round cleanly. That's the number 32. Oh, that's Logan Rolf. Uh, already, Logan Rolf has been in the wars a little bit, had a, had a bit of an incident in qualifying and had sort of hurt his back a little bit. And somebody's just climbed over his radiator, which probably will signify an early bath for Logan. And also right down at the back, DM Pahal as well, the Richardson chassis engineering uh, group uh, driver as well, who was so impressive at the O-plate. But uh, up at the front, it's the number 38 of Luke Millward. Now, Luke Millward was the uh, club driver of the year here at PF International, Trent Valley Car Club, last year. So he will be, I'm sure, on a very tough man to beat. Indeed, a uh, bit of uh, news. Harris Barber yeah. plus three second penalty. Uh, also, could you see out the uh, our commentary box window? Uh, slippery surface flag through has now been uh, removed through uh, the Fullerton SSR. So I wonder if that was a bit of a uh, fluid down on the circuit that's been sorted out now, which is good news because the drivers are about to enter that very corner. Uh, still with the number 38 of Luke Millwood at the front. As uh, ooh, a bit of a, oh. a moment there for Alfie, Gar uh, Alfie Garrett in the 47. He's going to lose a spot to Joshua Cook there, uh, who's had a bright start. Maximilian Abrahart, who had some great pace in free practice yesterday. Tough qualifying, very good start. Up six spots, uh, started 12th, and he's halved that number up to sixth place now. I believe that the slippery surface flag was for the water out of the radiator of... Uh, Logan, Rolf. uh, Logan Rolfe's uh, co-cart and I believe that Alfie Garrett found some of that residual water which will 
uh, you know, dissipate as the race goes on. Yellow flags up out on the banking. Not quite sure who it's for. Um, they're in. No, the yellow flag is. Nope. The yellow flags have gone in now. Uh, can't quite see who that might have been. Uh, Dian Pahal at the back of the pack has lost a nose cone. So you can see the number 23 cart coming into the second hairpin. I wonder if we can uh, pick that up shortly. We've got a three cart battle for the race. There is Dian Pahal. Uh, now, uh, the, 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 the problem is, though, that's the back end of his cart, which is fine. The front end is missing uh, an important piece of bodywork. So I imagine he will be joining Logan Rolfe on the retiree list. Uh, good news for uh, for Micro Max UK runners. All of them guaranteed a spot uh -huh. in the pre-final. So uh, whilst it's not great news for Dean Pahal that it's going to be a, at best a 26th uh, place result. As oh, someone was going across the grass there. There is Dean Pahal, and there you can see uh, yes. missing from the front of the cart is the front bumper. Six minutes and 20 to go. Now just to see if anyone's had a slow sector one because there was someone. Uh, taking a, an off-track excursion, shall we say. It's, they were from the uh, top ten. Uh, good drive as well so far for uh, George uh, Climo, uh, the top rookie at the moment, racing for Coles Racing here this weekend. The number 83 has gained eight spots so far and uh, is, is heading up a train of rookies at the moment. Josh, uh, Josh Hushka and Harry Ratcliffe not too far behind. Six, seven, eight at the moment for drivers new to, uh, to the championship this year. Yes, indeed. Now, I've got to say, I'm, I'm really grateful for our international viewers, but I have to say, Cross-Eyed Lion, he's getting a little bit chopsy tuning in from Germany. He started requesting that we feature people on the paddock show. Well, Tony on the gates here at PFI is an absolute legend. Uh, he might not be around when we do the paddock show, but I will just for you, Cross-Eyed Lion. Uh, an exclusive, this is Tony. You all right? All right. All right, get round here, back up paddock now. Yeah, morning, you all right? There we go, that was Tony from the paddock. Legend of a man. Carry on. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, George Climo, new fastest lap of the race, but we've also had a change at the front of the order. George Swire uh, has taken the lead of this one there in the black uh, suits, has gone past the number 38 of Luke Millwood and on the scene as well. Well, we've already been talking about one Bearman in third place mm. in uh, the other category, not related. Uh, is Sebastian Behrman, but uh, showing that same kind of speed. Yes, indeed he is. He's really come on leaps and bounds. Now, uh, can I get a shout-out from Grimsby, Connor Hughes? No, can't. Only if you tell me the Cardiff City score. Go on, BBC uh, Sport Brain, and see how, how the boys are getting on uh, from Grimsby. Uh, George Swire, Luke Millward, Sebastian Behrman, Joshua Cook, uh, Alfie Garrett, George Clemo, Josh, uh, Joss... Hauska, Harry Ratcliffe, Harry Ratcliffe up eight places, so is George Klimo, uh, Maximilian Aberhart, Charlie Page, James Roosh and Lucian Smith. Max Jolly is next. Um, Max Jolly, incredible, the power mm. of social media. Check out Max Jolly Racing on Instagram. He does these great little sort of, you know, just him and his microphone giving you an insight. He's got like about a squillion followers. Yeah, we had a chat to him yesterday. Yes. One of the features that you can see on the uh, oh. the Karting UK YouTube channel in due course. So make sure oh. that you've subscribed to that. Three oh. minutes and 50 to go. Change for second place. Sebastian Behrman now through and past Luke Millward. The O-Plate winner, Joshua Cook, joining this fight as well there in fourth. And, Cardiff uh, are 1-0 down to Southampton, oh by the dear. way. Sorry, it's ruined my day. Ruined my day. Take over. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure my, you know, someone will put the Sheffield United score in a minute and that will ruin my day as well. Yeah, no, anyway, no, there's a race no, going on. Yes, three, minutes the 20, go three minutes and 20 get to go. George Swire still at the front of the field, but for how much longer? Because Sebastian Behrman is looking down the inside Oof. as they run up towards the bridge. That beautiful left-hander that Sebastian Behrman has taken advantage of there and taken the lead of the race. Yes, indeed. The uh, Jacks Motorsport Project One Racing Group. He led, but only for a few moments as the number 82 of George Swire back to top spot. Now, we've had a three-car breakaway with Dan Holland Racing in, uh, what was that, Minimax. We've had three carts up at the front from Argenti Motorsport in Junior Max. Here we've got three carts up at the front from KR Sports in Micromax. And you know what? 
the Dan Holland Racing uh, uh, one, two, three became a two, three, four because Luca Holmes Ballack stole the win. And do you know what? The KR Sport one, two, three can become a two, three, four because jo uh, because Sebastian Behrman is now in the lead. Still two minutes to go, however. And the RCE uh, number seventy, uh, number forty-seven of Alfie Garrett is next. Yeah, no, and all this, uh, all this squabbling is going to bring others into play. Oh I dear. feel because oh uh, George Climber, uh, yes, thank you, David. Oh, that is day you, indeed a yeah. uh, ruin. But yep. never mind. There's some uh, great action going on here at Pier of International to improve it. George Clymer there in sixth place, Josh, uh, Josh Hushka as well. They're going to hope these uh, overtakes continue on as there's another one down the inside. Luke Millward takes the lead of the race, immediately responding down wow. the inside is Behrman, who uh, again takes the lead back. It's a shame we, we only go by a lap chart and a corner by corner chart because yes. it would be up and down and everywhere in this race. Indeed, and uh, this is the warmer. Oh, no, there's the Coles Racing, uh, number 83 of George Climo, just getting a little bit his line wrong through the Fullerton S's. But all this battling is bringing the second group of Climo, Hushka, and even Charlie, well, not, not so much Charlie Page. Well, maybe, yes, Charlie Page. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. at the front with a minute plus change to go. And there'll be, uh, there'll be three more laps in this one. As is there going to be another change for the lead as they run round onto the bridge? Yes, there is. And for the first time in this race, we say hello, Joshua Cook, who uh, snatched the victory in the O plate at Wilton Mill a few yep. weeks ago. <laughs> and he's showing exactly why. But again, down the inside, here comes Luke Millwood, retakes the lead of the race from his teammate. So it's Millward now ahead of Cook. There is the point from Joshua Cook to say, no, let's not fight. Let's try and push off the front of this group and book ourselves some good points in these heats. Cook defends, holds on to second place ahead of Behrman. Good chance now for Luke Millward to break away. But again, it's the nature of Micro Max racing. We saw this across the course of <laughs> yes. 2023. It's happening again in 2024 with this new generation of drivers. It's very difficult to break away when you're in Luke Millward's position at the front of one of these packs. Indeed it is, but uh, now we've got a chance for the two KR Sport teammates, Millward and uh, Cook, to try potentially pull away for maybe half a lap. The clock has struck zero, so this is the penultimate lap of the race, but it's working wonders. Up in the third position goes the number 83, leading series rookie George Climo. This will be a turn up for the books if he can get onto, well, onto the, 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 the virtual podium. There's no podium for a heat race, but you know what I mean. Although, uh, is uh, George Swire is uh, now back into third position through hairpin number two up the short shoot. Look for Alfie Garrett and uh, Josh Joss Hushka to try and make a move. Charlie Page, what's happened to Charlie Page? Down He's to dropped 11th. down to 10th. Yeah, I think he's just lost a position as well to Lucian Smith. Another change is there. Behrman back through past Climber for, uh, for fourth place. Last lap board about to come out then for the two race leaders, Millward and Cook. And it is now a KR Sport 1-2-3 with George Swire back up into third place. Uh, Alfie Garrett has got through past uh, Josh Hushka for sixth there. Lucian Smith confirmed us now up into the top 10, having got past Charlie Page. Still lots to be decided, you'd think, on this final lap. Down towards hairpin number one. I think it's going to be these top two clear of the rest of them as George Swires defending hard there for third place. Can Luke Millwood hold on? He's been looking good so far in free practice and time qualifying. Can he take his first win of the weekend? Well, we've uh, only a few corners to find that out. Millwood, out the Fullerton S's, on to the back straight. Will his teammate risk a move in the last couple of corners of what is only a heat race? Now, with Micromax, everybody will qualify for the final. 27 drivers in total. So... We haven't got to worry about repper charges, and it's a drag race to the line, but Millwood hangs on by three thousandths of a second, and it's a KR Sport 1-2-3 for Ash Orchard's team. And uh, I have to say, all the major players in the paddock are looking strong after one round of heat races for the Rotax classes. There's Millwood, Cook, 
and Swire, Sebastian Beerman, Alfie Garrett, George Klimo and Joss Hushka are in the top seven with Alfie Mayer, eighth for Zip. James, the roots, the roots, the roots are on fire, is ninth, followed by Charlie Page, Lucian Smith, Max Jolly, Max Abrahart, and for the back of the field, Austin Oman climbs to 14th. Yeah, it was the biggest mover in that field. Harris Barber, P15, Benedictus Masiokas in 16th, uh, Bud, uh, Buddy Hugo in 17th, ahead of Albert, uh, sorry, Arthur Farrow in uh, 18th place. Uh, Maria Roberto and Harry Radcliffe compete the top 20. Soren Gallagher, 21st. Chloe McGill, home in P22, ahead of Ansel Murray. Uh, Albert Farrow in 24th. William Crombie, the last of the 25 finishers in that one. Two retirements, Dean Pahal and Logan Rolf. Well, good stuff there from, uh, from the Micromax UK drivers. And a good victory as well for Luke Millwood. Doesn't matter how much you win a race by, as long as you do. 0.03, uh, the closest finish that we've seen so far this weekend. I do feel that's been coming for uh, for Luke Millwood. Has uh, taken a real step up this weekend. And there's, uh, that's going to build the confidence, you'd feel, for the youngster there in the number 38. Driver from Nottingham got his first win on the board this season in the Rio Tools Motorsport UK British Karts Championships. There's George Climo, top rookie in that race. Mega drive up to sixth place from 14th on the grid. Very keen to see uh, how George gets on this season. Uh, got a good racer there in the uh, the Coles Racing Paddock. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, preferably keep them about... Uh, the casting and good football teams if we've got to mention any football teams right now in the uh, in the chats and uh, more racing to come we uh, had questions about when honda cadets are going to be out well they're going to be out next uh, they're single heats for today they've got one heat today one tomorrow same uh, as the micromax class that we've just witnessed uh, so they'll be up next more racing after that of course the second appearance of minimax 950 uh, then followed up by the second round of heats for seniors first, another two heats uh, across the field there, and then the juniors to take us through to the end of today. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, do give a press of the subscribe button to, uh, well, the platform of your choice. If you're watching on the Alpha Live channel, if you're watching on uh, Karting UK, do give that button a press if you haven't done so already. Uh, the like button as well, let's get the likes up as well. Thank you for your continued support. Uh, let's head down though to the paddock right now as uh, Nicole Sutherland has our race winner. We're here with race winner Luke. Luke, this is your second year in Micros. Really good start to your to your season so this year. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the race then? So as you can see, we, went, we tried to push away one, two, and three, but we had to defend going down into the first hairpin, and then there onwards it kind of got into a scrap with Beeman, but either way we came out on top. Great. And for the rest of the weekend, have you got any game plan? What are you planning to do? Just push away and then battle land the last lap on the final. So that's great. Best of luck to you, Luke. Good to speak to you. And we'll go back up to the box for the next race of, our, of the day. Thank you very much, Nicole. And indeed, that next race will be Honda Cadet GX200, the, uh, the first of their two heats this weekend. And uh, these heats will, of course, decide the grid for the pre-final and the final, which you can watch tomorrow. So let's get ready for it. Race seven, uh, Honda Cadet, after a few words from our sponsors. Thank you very much to uh, Vera Tools. Once again, title, a proud title sponsor for the 2024 uh, Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. Next race heading out on circuit now, though. It's race seven, Honda Cadet GX200 Heat 1. And uh, 
They're uh, just starting the engines, getting a bit of heat there uh, into the machinery. There we have a quick sight of Archie Loveridge. Very close this weekend so far between the, uh, the two zip carts, the, uh, the zip factory, uh, factory team runners. There on the far side, you see the number 50 of Kevin Ivanov. An example yesterday in free practice, 0.01 seconds between them. What is going to happen here? It's next. It's live. It's race seven for Honda Cadets GX200. All set to go then. First heat of the weekend for Honda Cadet GX200, our youngest drivers in the field. On pole position for heat one, virtue of time to qualifying early on, it's Kevin Ivanov. Archie Loveridge alongside on the front row, Margiris Kovekis and Ralphie Branscombe, the winner of the O-Plate, last time out on row two. Ryan White, last year's champion, starts on row three alongside Ed Spain. Keen Sullivan and Harry Grant will go from the fourth row of the grid. Riley Blakemore and Esme Rosie complete the top ten. Archie Cannon and Shay Hilton start on row 16. It's a 13 carts field with J.M. Prakash completing it there for Ambition Motorsport. Uh, it'll be a standing start, of course, for Honda Cadets GX200. Henry Baudet rejoins me in uh, the box. Hello. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to this one, uh, yes. Henry. Very, uh, another very exciting O-Plate final uh, that went the way of uh, Ralphie Branscombe with a great drive, great overtake on the road uh, yes. to take advantage of a penalty for Kevin Ivanov mid-race. Yes. Uh, well, uh, mid-race, it was uh, a <laughs> tail end of the well, race. It was, it yeah, very tail end of it, it wasn't was, it? Uh, but, um, uh, nonetheless, an excellent, uh, for the always well-supported, uh, Ralphie Branscombe, who already is getting a lot of support on the live chat feature. Um, oh my word! I know. I know. Sheffield United have scored a goal. More than can't have done. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, I'm glad that we've got the go karting to help lift our spirits, Andrew. Indeed. Oh, and, uh, if there's ever a class to do that, Honda Cadet is uh, is the one. Yes, could never have this sort of conversation with Anthony Jordan because he was clueless. I'm glad <laughs> I've got a, a fellow football buddy in the commentary box. Uh, now, there's Dan Ashton. Now, you see the big, big bits of clean air between the drivers there. There's more clean air between the drivers. The only other, bit, the only other thing that I know with more clean air uh, between it is the gap between Anthony Jordan's ears. A uh, bit of a problem there for uh, King oh. Sullivan. And I think that's number 26 out of the race. Dan Ashton pulls the cart off circuit. So uh, she 12 will take the start here. Uh, now, is there a oh. little bit of consternation further back? Because Kian Sullivan, yeah, privateer on the, br on the BRK, one of Chris Hawes' carts. So again, we've got Project Ones, we've got the BRK, we've got Zip Carts. But they're all sitting and waiting for the start to be given. Well, that's a fairly uh, definitive yes. point uh, from the officials there to say, sorry, Kian, that is going to be your place to watch this race from. A few of the other carts just being positioned correctly before we get this one underway. It'll be 10 minutes plus one lap, as with all of the heats here this weekend. On the left of your screen, the number 50 of Kevin Ivanov. The right-hand side of your screen, the number 73 of Archie Loveridge. We're about ready to go here. Just waiting for the green flag in the air from Dan Ashton at the back of the field. Eyes will turn to the lights for the first heat in Honda Cadet GX200 here at PF International. And away we go. Very even start for the Zip Factory drivers at the front of the field. But it's advantage Ivanov into turn one. Clean start through the course. Uh, and under the bridge they go. Good start for Ivanov. That's exactly what he would have uh, look to have done. Now, the question here, Henry, we saw him do it at Wilton Mill. Can he break away from the pack? Bit harder here with these long straights and that bigger slipstream. Extremely difficult to do in Honda. It's very difficult to do in any class here at PF International. Uh, the nature of the Honda engine, uh, you know, torque, but uh, not high end. Uh, you've got to be smooth minimize mistakes and of course it's just this circuit and this engine built for slip streaming uh there's a, a, a the, the pro kart enduro the uh, bpec the uh mm -hmm. the british endurance championship which used the twin engine pro karts i've seen a, a race with about 50 of them 
uh, in one big train uh, you know, around here. So it, this is not going to be, I mean, it's very unlikely. The only driver in Honda Cadet that I've ever seen able to pull away uh, from the field, uh, this was Theo Mikouris as a privateer driver at Kartmaster a fair few years ago. And Theo has gone on to car race now, but he's winning on his debut. I mean, fantastic, uh, you know, showing the independent drivers on a budget. You know, if you're good enough, you can move into cars. And again, still saving the pennies, but talent shining through. But as I say that, there is uh, Ivanov with that Red Bull uh, crash helmet uh, trying to pull away. There's Ryan White, the Project One uh, driver, entered as a privateer. Although the team, uh, now there's a story behind that. Mm -hmm. The team who run Ryan, whose name escaped me, we spoke to them in the paddock show at Wilton Mill. Somebody on the team sort of forgot to fill out the, uh, the entrance license uh, oh, part yeah. of the, yes, before the deadline. Ah. So uh, he's down as a privateer. Uh, but there we are. There we go. No. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, yes, Maz Kavekis uh, cheering on uh, Magiris. Uh, sadly, uh, Stephanie Jade, uh, she was cheering on her brother, Kian Sullivan. Well, Kian, um, he'll have fresher tyres for the next race, Stephanie. Let's just to try and find a silver lining to the cloud that uh, has befallen Kian at the start of this race. But the Hondas, uh, the, the 12 drivers that started this race, minus uh, Jayan Prakash from Ambition Motorsport, who sort of faded a little bit off the tail end of the field. Everybody else still uh, in pretty much one big clump. Indeed. Seven minutes uh, remaining on the clock. There's the O plate of Ralphie Branscombe with the uh, the bright pink helmet there running in Indeed. fourth place right now. Ed Spain just behind us uh, talking with uh, Ambition Motorsport before the weekend uh, really got going. And uh, a lot of hopes for Ed Spain in that awning for this year. And I've got, uh, got the attention of, uh, of the reigning champion there right yes. now. Ryan White's having a go through. Not that we don't see many uh, attempts for an overtake into the Mike Wilson complex. And uh, that was probably why it didn't quite work there for, uh, for White. Still there in six. But I could rest assured we will see a few more. <laughs> a, a few attempts uh, going as we get towards the business end of this weekend. As desperation uh, kicks in. Now... Um, Ralphie Branscombe, there he is, fourth place. I have to say, I mean, his dad has done a shocking job of cleaning up that car. You would have thought that uh, with an old plate that uh, Big J, Papa Branscombe, would have uh, invested in a sticker kit or invested in, uh, a, you know, a bit of elbow grease. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm only joking. The O is resplendently clear. That's all that matters uh, on the side of Ralphie Branscombe's car. He's got a fair few sponsors, has uh, Ralphie. Uh, but he's now going to try and put those sponsors back on the top step of the podium. I'm going to give a shout out, of course, to uh, to Harry Grant. Has had a, a good start. He's up to right. seventh place. Very talkative young man. Spoke to him in the oh. uh, in the paddock on Friday uh, with some uh, well again a normal lot of features uh, looking out for Carton UK. Very much in the mind of like we'll talk to a driver at the start of the season. We'll talk to him at the end of the season. Yes. See what they've learned. Yeah, 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 and, yes. Uh, so keep an eye out that for uh, for Harry Grant across the course of the season. Changes in the top five uh, as through there. That was uh, Ed Spain going for a move on Ralphie Branscombe. Yes, it was. So Branscombe down to sixth place, overtaken by both White and Spain. There is Harry Grant, another one of our privateers. Uh, was <laughs> one of the things he was saying to us in the in the. Uh, in the paddock on Friday, and I'm sure this is not the case. That according to Harry, that his dad, his yes. mechanic, is the worst is the worst mechanic in the paddock. Oh, so fantastic! He, uh, Nothing like a vote of confidence, is there? <laughs> oh, fantastic! Now uh, we were speaking about uh, sp uh, the, the plethora of features that uh, you and Nicole have been doing for uh, this championship. Um, I did notice that motorsport, well, well cut this championship is now on TikTok. It is. Uh, it is Karting UK on TikTok. And we want to ask you, the viewers, well, not you, Andrew, but you, the viewers, uh, what kind of dance do you want to see Andrew Mather doing for the TikTok oh, no. uh, that go, will go out uh, after the paddock show tonight? 
uh, Team Social, they're waiting. Um, but we, yeah, Nate suggested what kind of dance that Andrew Mather's uh, going to do for TikTok uh, uh, at, at the end of the day today. I'm going uh, to get the racing Derek commentator excuses in now. My sister, st my si younger sister, stole all the dancing talent out of the gene pool. Oh, even better. So, well, then it's going to yeah. be good for a laugh. <laughs> Nothing well, terrible, that's why. Uh, right. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go. There is Ryan White, who's uh, had a few difficulties at the start of this race, but has now, I feel, gone into his stride. He's up to third place now. Uh, Branscombe and Spain following through. through. Kovacis into sixth place. Uh, Margaris Kovacis in his first year in, uh, in owner racing, was yep. racing Arrive and Drive Club 100 uh, cadets last year, has stepped into Honda Cadet. And uh, yeah, so learning a lot quickly to go around a big circuit like this in, PF in Lincolnshire. Excellent point you make, the karting pathway. If you hear us talking about the karting pathway and you're watching this and you've got a, a you know, and you've got a son or a daughter who uh, might like to get into karting, but you're not sure how to. Uh, yeah, the Club 100, they do this, they do an ar arrive and drive sort of rental cart package and as a way of seeing whether they like you, you like karting or not and you can move from there into owner driver karting so the first step on the karting pathway the boat sport uk karting pathway is uh indoor karting arrive and drive karting and rental kart racing where you don't have to well you've got to buy a race suit sometimes you have to buy a race suit you can hire from the circuit do that, yeah. then you have to buy a crash helmet that's the easiest way to get in to uh, karting Hop along to your local indoor track, try it, and don't go out and buy equipment and spend pennies until, uh, you know, you have decided that karting is for you. And uh, if you're interested as well, coverage on Alpha Live this week, don't go and watch it now. This no, 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 no. This is one of the only now. times not I will now. say this, don't go and watch Club 100 right now. No, at, not right uh, now. Course. Later, after uh, the after, we, after we're done here, after, after the, the yeah, show. Yeah, after, after the show, yeah. Then, then you can watch it. In fact, you could probably, because uh, what's going on, is it 750 Motor Club as well, across? So you, if yep. you for those who wanted to, you could watch this. Then go back and watch the live broadcast from Glanagors at Club 100. That'll take you to about midnight. Yep. And then watch the 750 Motor Club uh, broadcast from Alpha Live and Croft. That'll take you till about the start of the Chinese Grand Prix. Yep. Then you can have a little nap uh, while the Grand Prix is on, because we're starting to probably win again. Uh, and then you can wake up again for tomorrow's uh, live broadcast of the, of the finals. Yeah, 10 a.m. Yeah. I saw it. Do you know what? Ah, yes. Uh, thank you, Cross-Eyed Lion. Uh, that's official. Uh, thriller choreography. So you're doing thriller for TikTok, Andrew Mather. Thank you very much. And, and, and I tell you what, if you don't see it on TikTok, then um, the punishment for Andrew, if, if it doesn't appear on TikTok this weekend, you can write into the comments uh, tomorrow morning. Back to the racing, less than a minute to go. Ryan White, you'll set the fast lap of the race. 50 seconds of it to go. Uh, but at the moment, Ryan White there in fourth place now so Ralphie Branscombe's come back into this really really well and uh, shown again you can play the long game in these 10 minute plus one lap heats but it's all about these two drivers here who, who have been a cut above the rest I feel so far this weekend Ivanov and Loveridge we saw this yesterday in free practice we saw it in time qualifying what's interesting for me right now though Henry is Kevin Ivanov had a, a, a bit of a gap in qualifying on the lap times mm -hmm. That's not converted right now into him disappearing off the front. Archie Loveridge is still there. Yep. Still got a very good chance in this race with one lap to go. Uh, sorry, there might be two laps to go here, depending on when uh, very, they cross the line. Close very close indeed. Three seconds to go. They might just sneak one more in. Oh, yes, they will. Yes, they will. So two more laps. That's not good news at all for Kevin Ivanov because he's now got to defend for twice as long as perhaps he would have thought and closing in behind a Branscombe White Spain all quicker than the top two on that last lap. Yes, indeed. So Ivanov, leverage out of turn four, down towards hairpin number one. Branscombe, White and Spain hot on their heels through hairpin number one. Now up towards hairpin number two. We haven't seen... Uh, now, leverage has taken the lead. It, no, is that... The, Ignore the uh, ticker. The, it is the number 50 card of Ivanov leading. Leverage second. They're closing in that second group. 
led by the pink crash helmet of the British Open champion, Ralphie Branscombe. They come out of the Mike Wilson complex through the final chicane and on to what will be the final lap. All the drivers pointing forward, that's because they know there's an opportunity here for all five of them potentially to take the first heat win of the weekend. There's uh, still work for them to do. Branscombe pulling to the inside, trying to get that tighter line, trying to shorten uh, the uh, the travel distance as much as possible. Ivanov has done a lot of good work so far in this race, but needs to hold on. I don't think there's going to be an attack here from Archie Loveridge into the hair, uh, first hairpin. Indeed, they hold position right now because Ralphie Branscombe is once again, like we saw at Wilton Mill in the final at the O-Plate, having a very strong finish to this race through the Fullerton S's for the final time in this first heat for Honda Cadet GX200. I think Archie Loveridge thinking long game here. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. Just pointing forward to Ivan. I'd say, no, let's just take the one-two and take it through to tomorrow with the points in hand. Through the final chicane they go. And a very wise-headed drive from both Kevin Ivanov and Archie Loveridge makes it a 1-2 for Zip Factory. Third for Ralphie Branscombe, ahead of last year's champion Ryan White. And Ed Spain brings it home in a top five covered by less than 0.9 of a second. Uh, Margaris Kavekis finishes sixth. And Harry Grant, despite having the worst mechanic in the world, <laughs> says he, not me, um, finishes seventh. Then Riley Blakemore in eighth. Followed by Archie Cannon, Esme Rosie, Shay Hilton, and Jayan Prakash rounding out the finishers. Sadly, Kean Sullivan failed to start the race. Ah, what's the official TikTok channel? Unfortunately, there's no link on the B uh, the BKC website. Well, uh, the official TikTok channel for those of you that do TikTok is Karting UK. Indeed. Karting UK, you will see the uh, well-known the Motorsport UK logo. That's our TikTok channel. Thank you, Henry Moore. And big hello to Henry Gre Gregory. Um, yeah, the Uncle Tyrone Banking. It's now just called the Banking. But uh, when it comes to Kartmasters, that becomes the Uncle Tyrone Banking because there's a banner and everything. There we go. Uh, oh, recovery. Cardiff Equalise as well. Thank you, Danny. Equalized. Happy oh, days. Oh, 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 happy days. Uh, oh. It's number 26 of Keen Sullivan and can just see being recovered as uh, the Honda Cadet drivers head into post-race scrutineering. Uh, that completes mm. rotation number one, but will it immediately does. go into, uh, rotation, into number rotation number two. Uh, still another five races to go today. Mini Max 950 coming up. Two uh, appearances for Senior Rotax and two for Junior Rotax will take us through to the end of the day so plenty of reason to uh stick with us here ah. at pf international yes and uh after this race and i know there's a few people roger young uh in, in chinese taipei in the island of taiwan waiting up it's 11 o'clock at night uh you've got this race and he said i'm only staying up uh to watch uh bishop versus bradshaw well that's in the next race after this so this is race eight about to go out uh, Bishop versus Bradshaw is race number nine, Rog. But I'm sure that you've got some liquid refreshments to keep you uh, somewhat uh, steady. Level-headed. Level-headed, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yes, do keep, uh, do keep your messages of support coming in uh, in for the drivers. And for, and and for uh, you, Andrew. And uh, for me, on, yeah. On there, yeah. So I, I've, I've been stitched up here. Absolutely. I'm now understanding how uh, Anthony Jordan once <laughs> ended up in a, in a, in a you, pepper costume. Now you understand why Anthony Jordan was so <laughs> run away to Europe. To <laughs> this is why he's moved to Spain. <laughs> this is why uh, he's moved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed. Um, just a recap of the results so far today. Uh, if you're just joining us, race one, Minimax 950 went to Luca Holmes Balak. Race two, the first heat for uh, Senior Rotax went the way of Ewan Charman. Race two, uh, sorry, race three, heat number two uh, went to Callum Bradshaw. So those are the race winners so far. Uh, in uh, in seniors, in juniors, two races so far. Uh, the first heat went to Harrison Whitcomb in a one-two-three finish for Argenti Motorsport. Uh, it was Harry Bartle taking the win in Strawberry Racing. Wins as well so far today uh, in Micromax for Luke Nord and which we've just seen there, Kevin Evenoff for Honda Cadet. Now, Andrew, if you were in need of any racing apparel mm -hmm. or safety equipment, where would you go to buy it? 
I think we're about to find out with a few words from our, from our sponsors. I think so too. Thank you very much to Demon Tweaks. Uh, great work as always. Henry. Yes, uh, Minimax 950 up next. This will be Group A and Group C. So for some of these drivers, this will be their second and final heat of the weekend. Uh, for one group, Group A, uh, the drivers starting on the inside row of the group, it's the first time that we will see them in action uh, this weekend. Their second and final heat race will be tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Now, this race is uh, where we see the uh, debut of the reigning Rotax International Trophy champion, Albert Friend. It's up next. Second heat for Minimax 950 then, and uh, let's take you through the grid for it. Groups A and C, Albie Friend starts on pole position, Joshua Griffin alongside on the front row, Blair Smith and Emerson McCandy Ewan on row two, Finley Lines and Jack Collinson on row three, Edward Haynes and Keen Bernard on row four. Row number five, Max Gilman and Josh Cormack, then Devin Taylor from South Africa and Benjamin Lorn. With row number seven being led by Theo Bradshaw, followed by Leo Livings and his dad, Jason's watching and saying, well, good luck. Fraser Anderson and Zach Starbuck are next. Riley Murrow and Ollie Thompson go on row nine. Alfie Warren and uh, JJ Ambrose go from row 10. Sebastian Clark and Louis Radcliffe on row 11. Archie Rogers, Tyler and Tom Reed on row 12. It's a 25 cart field completed by Alex Goodson for MLC. Uh, do you know what, Kim Harris? I would love to have a wallet big enough to buy Ralphie Branscom a new sticker kit. Unfortunately, uh, the 50p that Motorsport UK pay me every weekend is exclusively for Iron Brew. Do apologise. <laughs> and you're back in well supplied of it this weekend as well. Uh, I'm, there's, there's, a, there's a flag of it in the fridge, chilling nicely. Ready to go then. Race number eight, heat two for Minimax 950. We're away for 10 minutes plus one lap. Very good start for those on the pole side of the grid. Blair Smith shooting through into second place, but wasn't able to wrestle the lead away from Albie Friend. Round onto the bridge to go for the first time. Whoa, someone off very wide there. It's the 146 of Edward, Edward Haynes, Haynes. Oh. who, uh, well, had started well, was up from seventh place, but now all that hard work in the first few corners is uh well it's gone it's gone all the way down to the bottom of the order for edward haynes through the first uh, hairpin they've gone and on the attack already finley lines well it was a dominant performance from finley lines last time out at uh, wilton mill he's going for second place he's got second place but through into the lead it's blair smith it's another one of the synergies as back comes albie friend well immediately oh. this is this doesn't feel like a heat at all it feels like one of the races we'd have tomorrow henry what a start for Blair Smith. For Finley Lines, has just got to keep himself together. He was going for the lead. He now finds himself in fifth. And I've got to say, this is a this year's Minimax class is going to be a fantastic battle, not between the just the, just the drivers of the teams, but also between the chassis manufacturers. Yes. Because you've got the Birrell ART, which is a, the, the, the homologated name for the Synergy, uh, uh, which is now built by Ronnie uh, Saal and the team at Birrell. And then you've got the straw, the OTK products used by Dan Holland Racing and Strawberry Racing. And there is a problem. That is game over for the number eight of Blair Smith and the number 133 of Emerson McAndrew. Uren, sadly, you've got the two chassis manufacturers. They're trying to outdevelop one another. Uh, the pace of development and the work is going on behind the scenes is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Friend has the advantage at the moment uh, over lines. And uh, sadly, is it game? Is, are they, did they manage to get back in? Well, there's uh, Emerson McAndrew, Uren. They're back in the race. Whether they will continue at, after the end of this lap, we, we shall see. Yeah, we've got to remember that uh, they're trying to... Oh, very close there. Oh, through the first uh, first couple of corners. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, I think it was that Devin Taylor 
uh, taking to the grass. I think it was one of the synergies. Apologies if, uh, if we're mistaken on that one. Uh, but cutting across the grass, at least the space through that portion of the circuit means able to uh, rejoin down the inside. This is the 169 of Max Gilman, who's looked at another driver who's looked strong so far this weekend, had a good free practice, is needing to work up from fifth uh, on the fifth row of the grid. That was a move that takes Gilman up to fifth place. But here comes Riley Murrow in the 138. Has also had a very good start. Started 17th. Has gained 11 places now there in sixth spot. They've got to keep an eye out for Theo Bradshaw. Knows this circuit mm -hmm. well. Very quick round PFI is Theo Bradshaw. Right there in the 144 in seventh place. Uh, further down. So Blair Smith uh, is still racing his uh, Nassau panel is very much skewy uh, at Finley line sets the new fast lap of the race now we didn't see a huge amount of battling in this class at the Oprah because Finley line simply cleared off and well destroyed everyone uh, the Minimax class the, the final of the uh, Euro trophy again which, is, which featured an awful lot of British drivers that was um, uh, a little bit tetchy, shall we say. Now, slippery surface flag uh, at the first corner, just out, outside of our view, well, outside of the camera's viewpoint here, but uh, inside our viewpoint in the commentary box. Now, that's uh, going to be interesting because the drivers, I don't think it's for rain. I think it was for a piece of debris. I've just ah, seen all the, uh, the marshals and track, uh, track uh, workers just... Uh, throw something off the circuit and oh. beyond uh, beyond uh, the barrier there so uh, the oh, this flag, flag. slippery surface flag but it's also the flag for stuff on circuit that shouldn't be so I think that was the yes. uh, the last case there 5 uh, minutes and 40 to go, friends still leading great uh, shot there of uh, for, uh, for synchronised uh, signalling forma formation uh, hand gestures from the mechanics uh, <laughs> uh, at the exit of the final corner on the grandstand, here are your lead quartet Friend, Lines, Collinson and Kian Bernard, this year's CIK FIA Academy representative with the Fiber King uh, logo on his Iridium visor strip. And yeah, we'll be off to Val d'Argenton next weekend to represent oh, to the, the, his nation is down the inside there. Finley Lines went for one on Albi Friend, didn't work at all, but it did for Jack Collinson. So Jack Collinson takes the lead of the race with less than five minutes to go. That was a very close moment indeed between friends, uh, friend and lines. Under uh, the bridge they go once again. And down the inside, friend looking for the move. That's going to open up things for lines to step through. And uh, in fact, that's resulted with Albi Friend now being down to fourth place. So Kian Bernard up to third, now going on the attack is Kian Bernard for second place and he's done it beautiful stuff into the first hairpin Finley lines well is a, a bit of a change from what we saw a few weekends ago is not going to have everything it's his own way it would seem this weekend at PFI well I mean Jack Collinson a big thanks to Steve Collinson uh, to se uh, send it over this information uh, uh, well I, he's dual nationality. Dad's from Hartlepool mm -hmm. and uh, only place in the UK that once uh, elected a gorilla as their mayor. Uh, a, a true story. Um, and they currently live there. But uh, also, his mum is from Latvia, from a small city called Aizkarukla. Uh, and so there, he's, he started off with Karting Zero, electric carts, back in 2020. But suddenly, three years on, or three and a half years on, finds himself leading a round of the British Championship. So uh, I'll be seeing uh, Mr. Collinson in the Latvian Championship that I'll be doing a, a little bit later on this year, uh, along with uh, Alex Goldschmidt. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, as I said that, uh, Collinson's realising how tough this is. He's gone from first, well, he's gone from fourth to first to fourth in the space of just a couple of co corners. I tell you what, there's a good opportunity here for the likes of Gilman, Bradshaw, Cormac, and uh, maybe even Joshua Griffin, because it's closing up at the front here. This is, a, this is a repeat of what we saw a lot with a number of these drivers last year in uh, in Micromax, a number of them moving up for 2024. Lines went for a move again, didn't quite work, loses out to Bernard, is back down to third place, but it's Albi Friend leading with two 
minutes and 45 seconds of this second heat for Minimax 950 here at PFI. Who else is joining the fray? Well, well I'd say that all the way down to seventh place now, all of these drivers can reasonably expect themselves to be in the fight for the win come the final lap. Yes. Now, uh, very quickly, uh, we've got two minutes and 24 seconds. There's a, 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 we need to put up a quick poll on the live chat. Uh, should it be Thriller or Time Warp from the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Uh, suggested by Motorsport Madness, uh, Magpie. But I was going to say, you know, time is fleeting. Madness is about to take control. It's got to be an abuse Let's of, uh, of admin rights, surely, for uh, David Watts. <laughs> That's two minutes to go. Uh, Alvi Friend still at the front of the order. Kim Bernard, P2. Finley Lines, P3. And, uh, yeah, looking good at the moment for more points from them. Edward Haynes going along uh, well. We saw him have a bit of a difficult start, Edward Haynes. He's yeah. just set the fastest up of the race. Oh, now, plus five-second oh. penalty on our screens, Henry, for the O-plate of Finley Lines. That is going to change things. And that would be, I am more than certain, for the failed passing attempt uh, that Finley made on Albie Friend down at Bobby Game Corner. So... Uh, Finley lines now. You'll see that on the. Uh, you'll, you'll see that on the big uh, screen over the start finish line. That will. Ha you'll have to change his tactic slightly. There's no point defending. You've got to just try. Oh, as he goes side by side, he hasn't seen that yet. You'll see it next time around. But he'll need to just push, push, push away. Well, indeed, uh, good job. Uh, chance now for Albi Friend for the first time in quite a few laps. He's got. Uh, space between himself and the rest of the field. Oh, Out uh, or the one, round one. there is the one, two, Josh one. Cormac. Josh Cormack. Josh well, Cormack was up in the top seven, so that, well, I did think that uh, whilst we had that big group, that not all of them would make it through uh, to the final lap, and sure enough, that has been the case. Less than a minute to go now on the clock. Who's made the most progress in this race? Well, Tom Reed. Tom Reed up 17 places so far in this one for Strawberry Racing. Had a, to a torrid time in qualifying. Uh, but is uh, paying back the support from Strawberry Racing. He's up to seventh as here, down the inside. This time, it's the 119 coming into play of Jack Collinson. So he's fighting back, is Jack Collinson. Up now into third. Yeah, and he was bringing the number 144 with him. Uh, that would be uh, Theo Bradshaw running as a privateer, is Theo. There is uh, Tom Reed in the number 111 car. He's the nickname is The Farmer. Um, I imagine him because his family are farmers, I would just, just assume. Uh, but uh, he is now up in the center. Oh, there's the number 185 car. That is the Coles Racing entry of Benjamin Lorne, who has uh, uh, retired from this race. Uh, all 25 starters are still running, even though Blair Smith and Emerson McAndrew Uren are well behind the rest after their earlier collision. So. There is, uh, from Hartlepool via Riga uh, to PF International, Jack Collinson for Sam Pollock Racing P3, holding off leading privateer Theo Bradshaw. That's a plain white go-kart of Theo Bradshaw. Oh, wouldn't a couple of sponsor stickers look resplendent upon that wagon? He would indeed. Final lap board then. I'll be friends in control. Oh, you'd say is he now in full control because we know that there has been a, a mid-race penalty applied to Finley Lines. And round the final couple of corners then, Alby Friend is uh, going to take the win and he's going to take it on the road. Brilliant driving for the Strawberry Racing Pilot. Finley Lines, P2 on the road, but remember has a plus five second penalty. So anyone within that gap will jump him in the classification. Uh, Jack Collinson, great drive, top rookie in that race, P3 on the road. He'll be one of the beneficiaries of that plus five second penalty uh, for the Synergy driver. But it's Albie Friend taking it from Finney Lines. Collinson, Bradshaw, Bernard in the top five. Uh, Joshua Griffin, Zach Starbuck, Edward Haynes, Max Gilman and Tom Reed in the top ten. Riley Morrow, Alex Goodson, Louis Radcliffe and Leo Livings all in the top half. Uh, our unofficially Finley Lines will drop to 11th after his penalty has been applied. And uh, there's Taylor, Rogers, Tyler, Ambrose, Ward, Thompson, Clark, Anderson, Cormac, Smith, McAndrew, Uren, and Lorne. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you watching uh, back home as we watch uh, our befriend make his way onto the way scales, those of you watching and waiting and staying up late in the far-flung corners of the galaxy where this is being broadcast, it's uh, the next race will be McCauley Bishop versus Callum Bradshaw. Uh, I'm almost guessing I've got to commentate on this one. I'd rather get some popcorn, <laughs> uh, a cold beverage, sit down and watch and cheer. Uh, it's going to be one for the ages, and it's only a heat race. Yeah, that's uh, going to be a good one. You saw Benjamin Lawn walking back to Park Ferme there. And uh, well, I know it's only one position, but I think that kind of event, whilst unfortunate for Benjamin Lawn, you never know for Blair Smith and Emerson McAndrew year, and that that could be a point yeah. that they need yes. in terms of an intermediate classification. So, yes, yeah, I do understand why both Blair Smith and uh, why Blair and Emerson continued round there. Yes, maybe using the tyres a bit, but taking advantage of any yes. moments for anybody else. Wow, well, thirty-eight entries in yep. the Mini Max class, so there will be ten drivers in the repechage. You know, and even if McAndrew and and, uh, uh, and uh, Blair Smith were say first and second. They don't want to be using their tyres. No. But there is a tension and a little frisson of excitement in the cloudy air surrounding this patch of Lincolnshire because the man of the moment, McCauley Bishop, is about to go head to head for, I believe, the very first time with former world champion Callum Bradshaw. Oh. <laughs> this doesn't get your juices flowing, then I don't know what, what will. will. Uh, indeed, keep your comments uh, of support coming in. Uh, we're back tomorrow as well, remember, at 10, 10 o'clock. But right now we're going to head down once again to Park Ferme and over to Nicole Sutherland. Winner, Albert friend. Albie, how was that race for you? You started on pole, lost the lead and then got it back. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Uh, yeah, it was a good race. I mean, I didn't have the pace as some others, so I just had to think smart and always try to be in the lead. And um, I kept yeah, in the lead and getting into gaps, so then I just had enough space to win the race in the end. Yeah, and this is quite a long championship this year. There's six rounds. So do you treat the earlier rounds different to some of the later on ones? Um, not really. I just always want to win or do the best I can. That's great. Great to hear from you, Albion. Good luck for the rest of the weekend. We'll see you later. We'll just take a walk through Park Ferme, see who we can see. Um, looking to try and chat with Edward Haynes, if we can catch him. He's just wheeling his cart over. Edward, can we get a quick chat with you? Can you tell us? Yeah, of course. Don't want to interrupt driver too much. Cheers, mate. Can you tell us a little bit about your race so far? How's your weekend going? Um, uh, it's not off to the greatest starts. Um, I, I think I still think I can recover it, but. Just um, got smashed off on the first lap in that one and didn't have the best of qualities, but um, came up a couple of positions, cart felt quick, so, yeah, feeling good. Good to speak to you, and we hope you uh, get back up to the front later on in the weekend. Speak to you later. So before the next race of the day, we'll head up and hear a quick word from Vera Tools Championship Partner. Welcome back to PF International here in Lincolnshire and getting ready for, uh, and it really is, in eagerly 
uh, anticipated heat in senior Rotax. It'll be uh, heat number three. There ah, is uh, yes. a, a photo extraordinaire, Adam, who's been doing some cracking work. Well, well, he's part of Team Social. He now, is. Team Commentary, you, I, and Nicole, have been uh, out, outwitting Team Social, even though Lucy Derrick and the social team have been doing some good work. Mm -hmm. You know, as you can see, he's looking at his phone. We're hard at work. We are indeed. Yeah, so I think Team Commentary are already 1-0 up against Team Social for the race coverage. And uh, Team Production uh, won all for focusing on Team Social while Team Social was looking at his phone. So that's a uh, uh, good, good result so far. Good work. Uh, better result than, uh, than the Sheffield United result, sadly. Yes, um, But I kind of came back to draw one all. <laughs> okay. There's people drinking adult beverages in Germany, in Chinese Taipei and the island of Taiwan for this, this next race, the number 99 of Callum Bradshaw. Let's see where they line up for race nine, Senior Rotax, heat number three. Let's take you through the grid. This should be a good one. Macaulay Bishop on pole position. Callum Bradshaw alongside on the front row. Ewan Charman and Lewis Gilbert can't be ruled out there from row number two. Archie Walker and Gustav Uzakovs go from row three. Tristan Rennie and Jamie Perilli on row four. Row number five, Cade McQueen and George Donald, then Deacon Russell and Armand Hanelton, followed by Angus Scribner and Tyler Richard Harris, then William Pemble, hopefully he can get his cart going this time, and Alex Adams Acton. Louis Weaver and Luke Bate go from row number nine. Uh, Stephanie Hubika and Ethan Martin complete the top 20, and it's Ethan Bentley and Alex Duncan on row 11. Sam Longley and Joshua Rudd start on row 12. Alex McGee and Stefan Kazmarzik are on row number 13, followed by David Mitchell and Ben Cook. With the final row of the grid, Teresa Babitskova and Ethan Critchley. Now, I've noticed there, Ethan Bentley. Bentley's going to sort you out. Bentley with a mace. Bentley into his rhythm. There's no... There, okay, no. Oh, dear. Ten minutes then for... Uh, for these guys and I know we've been talking about Bishop and uh, Bradshaw a well, lot but we've got I know remember. there are other Char drivers Char in the race Charman with a win already so yes. far today Lewis Gilbert has been on great form so far this year Archie Walker will look to to strike back after a difficult heat one uh, Caden McQueen on the fifth row of the grid uh, Alice Powell welcome to the broadcast uh, enjoyed listening to your dulcet tones at the Goodwood members meeting mm. which is just cute for like you know that's for real anoraks and Oh, yes, there is a Rover 3500 Vitesse in Sanyo livery. Anyway, back to the karting. Ten minutes <laughs> plus one lap. Here we go. Heat three for Senior Rotax is green and go. Good start for Bishop. Good start for Charman as well. Through to second place immediately. Past Callum Bradshaw. Round onto the bridge for the first time. Is that you and Charman going for the lead? Going up onto the hill. It didn't quite uh, work, but uh, brave stuff from uh, the Birrell Art driver. Now he's going to have to defend from Bradshaw. Is there going to be a lane open for Bradshaw down the inside? No. So it's Bishop, Charman and Bradshaw. One, two, three is the head to hairpin two for the first time. I do believe everybody has got through. No, that is incorrect information because Joshua Rudd has had a problem. So the 82 has not gone through sector one here on lap one. Uh, notice there at the start, Bishop was, was, was not overly aggressive. But he made sure that he came across. He didn't allow Bradshaw the chance to come across the centre of the track to pinch Bishop going into the first corner. McCauley made sure that he had the optimum racing line and that sort of allowed Ewan Charman to take advantage. Bradshaw knows he has to make quick work of Charman, which he does, and now set off after Bishop. And again, this is two drivers who I am sure will come across one another, you know, plenty of times in the future, but it's the first time in a major race that they find themselves, so it's an outlier. They both, they, they both know it's only a heat race, but they don't want to play down the significance of this. This is, uh, you know, they'll know, you know, Bradshaw will know this is a, a bit of a psychological advantage, and this is Bishop replying, saying, look, you know, I'm the new kid of the block, you know, no fear, you know, I don't care about anyone's reputation, I'm here to win, and uh, also, then you have, yeah, 
uh, Bradshaw saying, well, you know, you might care about my reputation because I am one of the most successful to ever, ever do this. Yeah, and in terms of the intermediate classification, we shouldn't forget that also right now. They are live points, these. Pritchard Williams on two, Bradshaw two, Garrity on two. Uh, Charman would be on three, Bishop on four. I do wonder right now, do Bishop and Bradshaw, it's, it's you know, it's the common enemies kind of trace here of like... Do they want to work together right now to try and drop the rest? I think they are trying to, but it's not working. Ewan Charman's got good pace. Here comes Bradshaw down the inside of Bishop. Charman's going to follow through. Bishop, understandably, at this stage of the race, doesn't fight that too hard. But a statement in the mid-stage for Callum Bradshaw. He clearly, he was clearly aware, as a world champion, former world champion, would be. We're not breaking away here from the rest of the order. I want to take control of this race. That's why he's gone for the lead. Yeah, Caden McQueen in fourth position saying, well, you know, Henry, shut up. There's more than two drivers in this race. I'm going to show why I'm also one of the best in the business. Uh, McQueen there in fourth place, followed by uh, Archie Walker. Then it's Usakovs, Gilbert, Donald, Rennie and Perilli round out the top ten. Uh, all well apart from uh, down to 29th place david mitchell uh now they've shuffled charman to the back of this lead quartet so it again strawberry dhr kr sports you know the three traditional rotax powerhouses uh but there's obviously a lot more now a lot more a lot more teams in that mix but uh They've had to, uh, all three of them have had to up their game to keep themselves in a position to which they have grown accustomed to. Warning flag for the number 94. Uh, that's Luke Bates. He's having a difficult race. He's down in P24 right now. Six minutes and 20 seconds to go. Callum Bradshaw doing fantastically right now. Has got a gap. But again, how much of his tyres is he using? here oh. right now uh, that's some interesting thoughts from some of the drivers on the on the mojo tires and what they're learning from them this weekend do give uh, the uh, the friday paddock show a watch when it's okay. up on youtube to uh, find out more about that lewis gilbert is now your fastest driver out on circuit on the 56.62 oh is that the problem that is, is that the number four of lewis gilbert well he's not going to be going any quicker like that off the road and out of the race uh, and in a in a round oh. where there's 60 drivers in yep. senior road tax that is not what you want if you're looking to win one of these rounds that could be repper charge and, and for how, lewis gilbert how often do we see that happening with someone setting the fastest lap of the race and uh, they're setting the fast up because something is about to become uncoiled and uh, then it does become uncoiled now Bradshaw pulling away McQueen and Bishop giving chase. There is the Diamond of Dalry trudging back towards the paddock, watching his rivals. Archie Walker chasing Ewan Charman for fourth position. A quick look at the, the front runners. The, lead, the only non OTK product in the top 14 is Ewan Charman. On that uh, red and white barrel ART, the next non OTK product is the number 69 of Louis Weaver in 15th position. So, Charman there in the number 42 doing a good job. And if you have a little look now, I think McQueen and Bishop are reeling Bradshaw in. They are bit by bit a new personal best, a new best of anyone through sector number two that time around for Kane and McQueen took eight hundredths of a second out of Bradshaw's lead doesn't sound like a lot but when we're talking you know two or three tenths between them that is uh, that is quite the chunk a new fastest lap of the race has gone in from you and Charman it's a 56.51 a second covers the top five now four minutes remaining can Bradshaw hold on he'll he'll not be panicking right now he's been in this situation many times before Caden okay, McQueen that amazing performance last uh, time out in the O plate. Uh, that three wide round the outside overtake that he did on his way to a, to a top five. He'll be loving this right now. Moving from Croc Promotions last year into the KR Sport awning and showing that he's got the performance. He's continuing to close in here, Henry, as that oh. is the number 32. Is that uh, Alex ben, McGee? No, it wasn't ben Alex Cook. McGee. Ben Cook, the another uh, one of the GMS karting brigade looks to be out of this one 
But Caden McQueen, well, we've both watched him through oh, yes. what it being a, a cadet, Henry. He will be loving this right now, chasing the former world champion down. Well, yeah, I mean, I can, I, I, I'm so old. I can remember uh, Caden McQueen turning up at Silverstone as the last driver to be uh, officially signed by uh, Martin Hines before he passed uh, uh, the last uh, to be brought into the zip cart uh, uh, frame. And Caden McQueen has taken the lead. And uh, Bradshaw now second, Bishop in third. <laughs> oh, two minutes, 50 seconds to go. McQueen standing on the anchors. White line fever. There is uh, Ben Cook sadly retiring as we go double box uh, for the first time today. Another new feature brought to you this year by Alpha Live. So McQueen leads Bradshaw, Charman and Bishop with Usakovs and Walker, the top six separated by seven tenths of a second. This is one of those races where each of these drivers know now they could finish first in this race, they could finish outside of the top ten. It is so close out there with plenty of time remaining on the clock, two minutes and 15 seconds. Got to remember as well, for all of these drivers, this is their last heat. No more opportunities to qualify through to the pre-final tomorrow, and it's the top 28 from the 60 here this weekend to do. Two minutes to go. Move to the inside there. That's Archie Walker in the number seven, defending from Gustav Uzakovs. Meanwhile, back at the front of the order, McQueen defensive again into hairpin two. You and Charman's going to run a little bit wide. Is that an opportunity for Bishop to go through? Yes, it is. So Bishop back up to third place and still in there as well. Uzakovs, Rennie, Perilli, Donald, Hamilton's in there as well. The top 12 covered by less than two seconds right now and in a heat race of course they are of course they are uh cross the line we complete lap number nine and look at that in fact the top 16 less than three seconds separate them we're two and three wide on the banking bradshaw has found his way back to the top spot uh bishop up to second mcqueen down to third and charman and the rest now scratching their heads, thinking, how did he do that? Right, it's all started to break down now behind. I think Trist uh, Tristan Rennie's lost a number of positions in all that. Angus Scrivener's coming through as well. Another one of the Hunter Motorsport entries on the, uh, on the CS55 chassis. 45 seconds to go, so there's still going to be uh, at least two more laps in this one. And the remaining corners that we've got here on lap number 10. Callum Bradshaw wow. getting that gap again. We saw it earlier in the race. Has he timed this to perfection? You know, almost allowing the others to catch wow. him up, use their tyres, now yeah. hit the front, now hit the loud pedal and use a bit more of his conserved rubber. That is a good gap to have with two laps to go, 0.4 of a second. And uh, this, is where Bi this is where Bishop and, and uh, McQueen will be going flat chat to catch. Carl and Bradshaw, you could see Bishop. That's not going to help their cause. Battling side by side, Bishop doesn't defend. That's a smart move from Bishop. A good move from McQueen. It doesn't cost them too much ground. A Bishop doesn't. A McQueen doesn't defend. Bishop doesn't attack. They still have got eyes on that Tony Cart, the number 99 for Strawberry Racing. As Bradshaw leads them onto the back straight, Charman and Walker are next. Perilli in six. Hamilton, Rennie, Adams, Acton and Usakovs round out your top ten. They'll get the last lap board this time around. Can McQueen and Bishop beat Bradshaw or will the world, the former world champion say, OK, all the hype, I'm back. This is where the hype is. And if this result was to stand, this would be pole position for the pre-final. Bradshaw would be the only driver in the intermediate classification in senior road tax on zero points, still with one race to go. So uh, whilst Pritchard Williams could join him on the front row, he wouldn't be able to overhaul that, uh, that zero score at the moment. That's hairpin one done. Bradshaw still not being caught by McQueen and Bishop and the rest through the Fullerton S's. This is looking good for Callum Bradshaw and he knows it he's just got to get it through Bobby Game Corner through the Mike Wilson complex he's going to make it two wins from two and book himself the perfect place to start on Sunday in the pre-final Callum Bradshaw wins again at PF International heat three is his in senior Rotax what a job he fends off Caden McQueen Macaulay Bishop Ewan Charman 
and Archie Walker. That is your top five in a really, really fast race <laughs> for Senior Rotax, as we expected, Henry. That is job done for Bradshaw. Form is temporary, class is permanent. Bradshaw by half a second from McQueen, Bishop, Charman and Walker. Great result for Jamie Perilli, Tristan Rennie and Alex Adams-Acton. So two carts in the top ten for the Jacks Motorsport Project 1 racing group. Uh, Uskovs and Hamilton, the Latvian and the Hungarian drivers respectively riding out the top ten. Deacon Russell for MLC Motorsport. Instead of George Donald, William Pentville and Tyler Harris. Further down the order of the top ten, separated by 17 seconds. Uh, sorry, no, that was a lie. The top ten separated by five seconds. The uh, entire field, down to Teresa Babitskova in 27th place, separated by 13 seconds. Well, Senior Rotax living up to its billing here this weekend at PF International. And, uh, well, something even more remarkable has just happened, right. Henry. Yeah, there, there is, there is. Uh, can we? Henry Moore Racing has just potentially... Uh, sent uh, a message on the live, uh, the live broadcast chat that could uh, send shockwaves through the entire paddock. It is true. Cardiff City have scored a 96th minute winner at home. As we look at uh, Bishop and Bradshaw, sort of their first sort of like tertiary congratulations between themselves. I will go and have a lie down and uh, <laughs> scream to myself. Um, go on, the Bluebirds. Uh, sorry. Anyway, back to the go karting. <laughs> Thank you, Henry Moore. Uh, yes, well, there's uh, Macaulay Bishop. Oh, he looks, looks a bit tired there after after that one. I think that just shows how hard a race that was. There's Emily Cotty yes. uh, waiting for uh, her turn to uh, be out on circuit later on uh, in the juniors. Uh, three more races to go here today at PF. We've got uh, the next heats for Senior Rotax coming up. That'll be the second opportunities for Groups B and C uh, to race and book their spots through to the... Uh, yeah. pre-finals and spots on the grid for the repertoire tomorrow and don't forget we've got two more races for juniors as well uh, <laughs> junior road tax groups a and d will be out uh in race 11 and then the last race of the day groups b and c uh, race number 12. now next to emily cotty you can see lachlan johnson uh scottish driver and uh, uh lachlan's mummy of course she's an extremely funny lady uh, making bad life choices is Lachlan. Well, there's one already bad choice there with his haircut. Terrible. But meanwhile, uh, good choice. Macaulay Bishop down speaking to Nicole Sutherland. We're down in Park Ferme with Macaulay Bishop. Macaulay, the past few weeks uh, after the O-Play and a European round, you've had uh, a lot of praise for some special overtakes you've been making. One of them's had three million views over social media. Can you tell us a bit about how that makes you feel coming into a race like this? Obviously, it's good. Um, yeah, got a lot of coverage on social media. So, um, yeah, hopefully a few people saw it. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't really make me drive much, much better. It's, um, it's just a nice feeling that everyone's seen it, you know. And your mindset going into this weekend, what are you thinking? Obviously, I'm going to try and win. But, um, yeah, last week we struggled a little bit. Didn't have quite the, uh, a good amount of grip to win. But, um, yeah, just go home tonight and, um, yeah, rethink it, change the car a little bit and hopefully come back tomorrow stronger. That's great. Best of luck to you, Macaulay. Uh, we'll head up to the comms box for the next race of the day, but quickly we'll just hear from Vera Tools. Welcome back here to PF International, uh, getting ready for the next race here on Heat Day, Saturday, first event of the year for the 2024 Vera Tools Motorsport UK British Kart Championships. Andrew Mather and Henry Bodet on commentary duties for you this afternoon. And uh, the last heat of this phase of the round, Henry, for Senior Rotax uh, coming up. We've just seen a a great race from yes. uh, from the first half of the field in uh, in race nine. But good opportunities here for a number of drivers in race 10. 
uh, particularly Teddy Pritchard Williams starting from pole position. Uh, yeah, indeed. And, uh, you know, let's not forget a great drive for Ewan Charman in that last race as well. Uh, it's, the fight is on to who starts alongside Callum Bradshaw for the pre final uh, tomorrow. There's Kai Veach, uh, interested spectator, alongside Kai Clark. Uh, two Kais, you know. Uh, together, there's Veach, and there is Guy. So two, we've gone from two guys to one guy. That's Guy Cunnington in the number 52 cart. Looking back, the Argenti Motorsport uh, livery of James Lowther. James, proud, proud member of the People's Republic of Tyne and Weir. Mm -hmm. uh, also counting Kai Hunter amongst their number. Now, all the Hunter Motorsport drivers, they honorary citizens of the People's Republic? I'm not sure. Uh, Austin Lee focused, and again, that's visualization. You see, he's, he's got his eyes closed. Why has he got his eyes closed? He's visualizing the track. A lot of these drivers, they do have uh, uh, not just strength and conditioning coaches, but they do have mind coaches mm -hmm. and, you know, psychologists, and he was doing some visualization there. A bit like the Jamaica bobsled team in the bath in the bathtub at Cool Runnings. It's Run with the rhythm. One of my favorite Run ones. with the ride. It's bobsled time. It's not. It's Senior Rotax Heat 10 time. Here we go. Last heat of the day for Senior Rotax, their fourth out of four. Let's have a look through the grid. Teddy Pritchard-Williams on pole position alongside on the front row is reigning champion Kai Hunter. Ethan Jeff Hall and Neo Clark on row two. Jack Lilly and Kin Geraghty will go from row number three. Brandon klein Nagelvort and Morgan Porter on row four. Behind Porter, you've got Sam Baker and Austin Lee rounding out your top ten. David Oleshner and Guy Cunnington on row number six. Row Josh number seven, Josh Graham and James Lowther with Matthew Sayer and Archie Buttle on row eight. Uh, Dugas Pravlonis and Pearson Bullock Carter on row nine. Luca Osmond Price and, and Liam Thomas on row number 10. Alex Moody and Ralph Youngling on row 11. Ollie Goodyear and Jack Collins on row 12. The rest of the starting lineup Reg Hayward, Benjamin Southgate, Spencer Braum, and Isaac Lyons, the Northern Irishman, head of Rachel Robertson and Jack. Gillingham. Gillingham, Gillingham. Somebody. I go Gillingham. I go Gillingham. I go Gillingham. I go Gillingham. I, uh, Priestfield Stadium. Yeah, Priestfield. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Been there. Down been there. Park. Absolute pit. Uh, anyway. <laughs> stadium, not the place. Place uh, The two drivers on the front row of this grid. Uh, your top two from the road tax round here last year. Yes. Ty Hunter won it. Yes. Uh, but for, for Teddy Pritchard Williams, it was one of his highlights of the season, finishing uh, oh, P2 I wouldn't know back that. in I was sacked. I wasn't, yeah, no, uh, And uh, so looking to resume battle from the last time we had yes. a Rotax round here for the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. End of the season, starting the season this yep. year in 2024. Well, that's where Teddy Pritchard Williams got his first British Championship podium here. Last round, the last round of last year's championship lights are out we're off and racing oh and there's a problem that was a trickle effect and that is kai hunter up the escape road and potentially out of the race there he is he's emerged back oh he's missed part of the track how but then of course he can't go backwards oh that's good oh dear that's going to be uh, one that gets sorted out later kai hunter sort of dropping back into where he roughly was uh, in the number one plate car but i mean I'm not sure we'll be able to see a, a replay of that at some point but uh Everybody just suddenly shuffled over the racing line and Kai Hunter, with nowhere to go, was forced up the escape road. It was indeed. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll uh, keep on top of that situation and let you know any news as we find it. Let's actually have a look at a replay of this one. So, uh, good start for those Jump. on the pole side of the grid. And, uh, yeah, I think the 97 was involved there. Ethan Jeff Hall. Yeah, it was a case of Pritchard Williams came over, but Ethan Jeff Hall, with somebody tucked on his rear bumper, also came over. And I think the, uh, the, the trajectory of, of Ethan Jeff Hall being pushed by somebody else, you know, slipstream by somebody else, just, uh, yeah, uh, made, made a little bit of contact with uh, um, this C word again. But uh, it was yeah, a chain reaction, and poor Kai Hunter on the outside, nowhere to go. He has emerged back in eighth position sadly isaac lyons uh didn't take the start he didn't take the start of the first race now i saw isaac after qualifying sort of sitting in the dan holland awning i wonder if uh, 
he wants to go it he wants to race but his ribs are somewhat uh, less inclined possibly so i hope uh, isaac is okay coming round to complete lap number two then well teddy pritchard williams was uh, was up front earlier on in his previous race when he was uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Callum Bradshaw. No teammate help this time, though, because that's Jack Lilly down the inside, taking the lead of the race at the start of lap number three, and it's a swarm of senior Rotax drivers heading over the bridge now. There is the number 72 of Austin Lee coming through the order as well, but back comes Pritchard Williams immediately responding. As we say, Henry, the best yep. time to overtake is when you've just been overtaken. That was spot on from the Welshman back into the lead of the race. And Brandon Nag, Brandon Klein Nagelvoort, an excellent job up into P2 as well. Again, a drive with a lot of promise. Oh, and that's the number 31 of Sam Baker. So the Jack Dex racing team well represented up at the front. Baker now dropping back a couple of places. Getting Oh, he's getting swamped into... Uh, the Mike Wilson complex, but um, again, Baker, a good start, a, a, a gutsy move, and now he's got to sort of regird his loins, as it were, and sort of get back into a rhythm. Uh, the top two are breaking away. Fastest lap for Reg Haywood, who's running 19th at the moment. But uh, Pritchard Williams and Nagelvoort, uh, both drivers have promised a lot and uh, not necessarily always had the results at their pace has warranted this is an opportunity for them to at least get a good hat full of heat points uh, there is the alonso colored uh, livery cart that would be uh, an argenti motorsport cart of james lowther nice uh, old school a lot of fa uh, livery uh, on that cart indeed six minutes and 20 seconds to go well uh, it's not exactly the same situation for uh, for teddy pritchard williams but a familiar one broken off the front of the order with uh, another driver in a pair this time it's Brandon Klein Nagelvoort and surely these two will work together now through the next three, uh, few laps because Kai Hunter right there in third place uh, now no messages have come up on our timing screens in the box here Henry so uh, we'll state that as uh, as it is Reg Haywood new fastest lap of the race 57.16 was that even Jeff Hall having a go there at Keen Garrity's fourth place now I just say that Warning flag for the number one of Kai Hunter. Uh -huh. That may be related to the start. It may be related to something else. We'll just state it as the facts are that the number one has received a warning flag. There are your top two. Brandon Klein Nagelvoort at the front ahead of Teddy Pritchard Williams. The gap back to Hunter is 1.5 seconds. Yes, uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, obviously that, in that the incident at the start will be reviewed, um, you know, uh, but... We will call the race as we see it on screen. Uh, Garrity, Jeff Paul, Morgan Porter. Now, Morgan Porter, he needs a good race as a change for the lead. Pritchard Williams makes the move going into the Bruno Ferrari S's. Kai Hunter, 56.92. He is uh, charging back towards the front of the field. And uh, yes, it's under investigation. Uh, try to, well, briefly explain. Obviously, uh, when you go off the track, you're not allowed to cut part of the circuit. However, you're not allowed to turn the cart round and go back into oncoming traffic either, uh, because there's a safety thing. But there's a penalty if you miss part of the circuit. Kai Hunter's uh, uh, argument will be: Hang on, I could have gone across the grass and uh, into the barriers, or back across the grass and back on track in front of a whole field of carts going under the bridge, which would have been, in his opinion, or dangerous. He could have gone up the hill, then turned round and come back down the hill, but that's facing oncoming traffic. So he was stuck between a rock and a hard place. The, what the result will be, I don't know, but that's generally why he's under investigation. What we do know right now, the intermediate classification looks a little bit like this. Callum Bradshaw has, uh, has P1. We know that is, uh, is done... And signed, sealed and delivered. Zero points. Nobody can beat that. Teddy Pritchard-Williams currently holding P2. Wow, round the outside there. That was a good attempt. Oh, there's oh, it's a moment off the corner there. That's the number 60 of David Algetner having 
Uh, not such a good time of it. Was it the 72 of Austin Lee it appeared involved to be, yes. there? As, uh, well, and I think there's that damage to the front of the number 60 also. So uh, yep. what was a good race up to that point for uh, for Alzetna. Suddenly it's going to well, most likely be an early retirement. Yes. Uh, born in Poland, now based in Cumbran in South Wales. It's a Cumbran or Caffili, I keep, I keep forgetting. Uh, races DD2 out in, in Europe. And, and David Olejna, a former Rotax Grand Finals podium finisher for his native Poland in uh, Bahrain 2021. That was Poland's first ever Rotax Grand Finals uh, podium. Uh, yes, kill mode one <laughs> for Kai Hunter, says Roger Young. Uh, yes, uh, as a, you can imagine, Kai Hunter, his mood will not have been lightened by the uh, goings on into the first corner, uh, but uh, he's at least giving that uh, CS55 uh, Carlos Sainz branded chassis for the Hunter Motorsport team. Plenty of uh, coverage. Uh, where is Morgan Porter in eighth? Of course, Morgan retired from his first race. So Lewis Gilbert, Morgan Porter, two big names who have had a retirement so far. Will that scrape? Will the second re result for them scrape their way into the pre-final? Will they have to go to the repechage? I would think repechage yep. with the amount of drivers in the class, yeah, sixty I, of them. I tend to tend to agree with you there, Henry. It could be uh, it could be quite a spicy one in the uh, the repechage, which we'll be able to watch tomorrow Gee, morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, two minutes to go then. Uh, Guy Cunnington there, new fastest lap of the race, and now up to fifth place as well. Has got past Kean Geraghty for that spot. He's to find about 0.7 of a second up the road to catch up to Ethan Jeff Hall. There is Kai Hunter, second on the road. Has Teddy Pritchard Williams got enough to hold off the reigning champion? These two uh, met in close quarters action in that final. In fact, that final, that's what we're calling it now, the O plate, uh, <laughs> yes. back at Wilton Mill a few weeks ago. Both of them didn't see uh, the major placings at the end of it, of course. Oh, one minute yes. and 20 to go. The gap is 0.6 of a second, and right now Teddy Pritchard looking comfortable, but knowing that one mistake will put him back into the clutches of these three. Hunter, Klein Nagelvoort, Jeff Hall, and Guy Cunnington really pushing on now, has closed the gap to four tenths of a second down the inside. This is for third place, and through goes Ethan Jeff Hall, but he's going to have to work off and into hairpin two now, and there is the former senior Rotax champion, Guy Cunnington, is right on the scene there in fifth. Yes, and uh, chasing Nagelvoort, and Nagelvoort is sort of fading a little bit as this race progresses, but he's still on course for a good result. So, again, Brandon, he, he, you know, he's led this race, now he's fallen back, I know that that, that will be a, a something of a frustration for him. However, he's got to keep his head cool because he's still on course for a strong starting position in the pre-final. Uh, Ethan Jeff Hall, of course, last year's Rotax International Trophy Senior Max Champion. He is uh, so senior Rotax last year in Europe. There's David Olejna. Uh, Take, again, you can see the tyres have to come off the cart. There's, uh, so Aulejna out of the race. The clock has struck zero. And Pritchard Williams, he's not absolutely out of the woods yet. Hunter is not there, but if uh, one missed apex from Pritchard Williams and Hunter will at least have a little nibble, I'm sure. Problems out there, unfortunately, for uh, for Lowther. It's fallen down outside the top 25. I think there's also been problems for Ralph Youngling and uh, Liam Thomas. Just saw him out the commentary box window, slow off uh, off the bridge and towards hairpin one. So, final lap then. Teddy Pritchard Williams leads by 0.4 of a second at the same venue where he took his first podium in senior OTAX at this level. And he's looking good again here. Kai Hunter there, P2, Ethan Jeff Hall, racing for the first time in the Rear Tools British Kart Championships for Sam Pollitt Racing. That is your top three there. Oh. Out of the race is the number 27 of Liam Thomas for GMS. Not good news. And, uh, well, we're talking about rep drivers going into the repercharge. There's some of them. But, uh, we'll just be on the outside of even, uh, of even. Actually, no, no. All of them will make the repechage. Never mind. Uh, but Teddy Pritchard Williams is coming through. 
to take another victory is on strong form at the moment and it's going to be an all strawberry racing front row for the pre-final tomorrow Teddy Pritchard Williams will take second place on it and join Bradshaw on the front row with that victory a very good day for strawberry racing takes the win by 0.3 of a second ahead of Kai Hunter third for Ethan Jeff Hall Guy Cunnington fourth Brandon Klein Nagelvoort completes the top five Keen Geraghty sixth uh, there another strong result for Strawberry Jack Lilly seventh Matthew Sarin eighth Joshua Graham and Morgan Porter complete the top ten will that be enough for Morgan Porter to be in the top 28 of the IC Doubtful. I think that's questionable Doubtful. right now uh, I... Archie Buttle eleventh Alex Moody Austin Lee and James Lowther uh, complete top 14 so ah okay I think it was actually okay for James Lowther I think that was a transponder issue that moved him down to the order I've got to say, Alex Moody, excellent day for the Cato Motorsport driver. Um, a 10th and a 12th, and I hopefully he's remembered his new race suit this weekend as well. I spoke to him yesterday. He was having engine problems yesterday, so a real oh. comeback uh, after a difficult free practice uh, day indeed for Moody. Pearson Bullock Carter was 15th. Neo Clark, Reg Hayward, Jugas Pravlonis, Sam Baker, and Spencer Braun were all in that top 20. Uh, Ollie Goodyear. Uh, Luca Osmond Price, Jack Collins, Benjamin Southgate, and Jack Gillingham all in the top 25. Rachel Robertson and Ralph Youngling, the last of the finishers, 27 of them. Three retirements L uh, Liam Thomas, uh, David Alletner, and Isaac Lyons. Ah, hello on the live chat to uh, Alex Satelli. Hop, hop. hop, hop, indeed. Yes. Uh, there's Morgan Porter. Uh, knows that he will have a busy morning uh, tomorrow. Uh, Math Sayer, uh, there you flying the flag of Vietnam. Uh, uh, based out, uh, he does a lot of racing over here now and again, but uh, yeah, based out uh, in uh, the Southeast Asia, uh, uh, where he originates from. There is a look, and uh, ah, just coming on the screen there. That's one of the, one of the one of the members of Team TVKC, the marshalling team here at Trent Valley Car. There's a Boba still out there with, the, with his broom. Could well be a man of his caliber. There he goes. And uh, again, look at that. Just sweeping offline to make sure there's no marbles or anything like that. That's what makes this marshalling team here at PF International the best in the country. One of the best in the world. And that's why the World Championships are coming to this circuit. And a happy 30th birthday as well to uh, Team TV KC. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh right. Team TV KC. Okay. Uh, to me. To <laughs> No, you're 30. 21. Um, <laughs> Plus tax. Uh, yes, but uh, I would say we got here on Thursday for, for preparing for this weekend, and the you know the curbs being painted, the PFI logo on the on the main straight has been freshly painted for this weekend. Some uh, proper love and attention ah. given to uh, to the circuit. Uh, before now racing. it all becomes clear. The PFI logo on the start finish line has been freshly painted. Yes, That's why Dan Thursday. Ashton was in such a hurry to get Kean Sullivan, who broke down, off, off because it. he drove onto the yeah. new paint. If only Kean Sullivan had parked on the grass, he probably would have started the race. But uh, you go on, you you go on to the paint, and that's it. Now we're going to hear from Aston Villa's number one fan, Teddy Pritchard Williams, with the Cole Sutherland. We're the senior Rotax Heat Four winner, Teddy, Teddy Pritchard Williams. Teddy. Good start to your weekend so far, a win and a second. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, really good. Start went well. Um, got a little bit scrappy in the middle of the race, just kept trying to lead as much as we could. And then I got past, turned around, there was a massive gap behind. So when it was right, went in and then just led it to the end, really. So it's quite good. And from what we've seen from the senior grid so far, it's not been calm. It's been pretty aggressive. Can you tell us about how you handle that? I think you just got to think, if you put yourself in the right situation, maybe at the A-plate, learn a few lessons from that. Um, but yeah, it was good. It's scrappy, it always has been and it always will be, but it's fun. Great, great to hear from you, Teddy. We'll catch up with you a little later. Uh, we're also going to go and see who else we can find. Over here, uh, P3 in the race is Ethan Jeff Hall. Ethan, this year, alongside the British Kart Championship, will be racing in Junior Janetta, which he's been testing for. This year, he'll be with Sam Pollard, a change from last year, who, when he was with Strawberry, ran with Strawberry racing for quite a long time. 
Ethan, can we just quickly catch up with you? Uh, we're just telling the audience that you're doing a double double bubble this year, Janetta and karting. Can you tell us a little bit about how you manage that? Uh, yeah, it's quite tough, uh, obviously jumping between the two, but um, just doing the, obviously the Janetta and as much karting as we can. Um, so yeah. And you had a successful weekend last week uh, at, in Europe. We, I think. All of us watched the, the carnage that went on. Are you feeling confident after that? Yeah, I think pretty confident. Um, I struggled a little bit in the heats, just trying to get things sorted. Um, but we had a good comeback in the final. I think we dropped down to 17th at one point, but drove back up to sixth on track and third after penalty. So it was good. Thanks. Well, best of luck to you, Ethan. Thank you very Speak much. to you a little later. And we'll just throw up to a quick word from Vera Tools. Welcome back to uh, PF International, getting ready for uh, the next two races, both of them in Junior Rotax and uh, Groups A and D heading out on circuit soon, Henry. Yes, indeed, and uh, everybody watching is at least far more entertained than that driver. Who, no, he's, he is. He's entertained. He's waiting. He's waiting. And he's waiting for the starting lineup of Junior Rotax Heat Number 3, and that's coming up now. Let's take you through the penultimate grid of the day here at PF International. Thomas Ben Spearing starts at the front of it alongside Jacob Ashcroft. Lucas Blanford and Owen Neve on row two. Noah Barham and Ryan Gondor on row three. Joe Anderson and uh, Kai Veach on row four. Row number five, Kai Clark and Ayman Bansal. Then Joshua Turnbull and Adam Wooden. That's on row six. Row seven, Charlie Neve and Cameron Nelson. Hugh Bolton and Daniel Kilpatrick. Finley Buck and Albie Lapago from row nine. Shane Chandaria and Emily Cotty complete the, ray, the tenth row of the grid. Henry Cameron and Leon Hasty on row 11. And it's Eli Baden and Lachlan Johnston on row 12. Uh, Ryan Gill and Aidan Mitchell are on row 13, followed by Jensen Pritchard and Zach McDonald with Michael Dalton, Marcel Popacall and Sebastian Lush rounding out the field. I don't think we've got Aidan Mitchell out there. We saw him in a little bit of discomfort after the first race incident. And I think maybe he's thought, well, live the fight again another day. Uh, and in, uh, who's that? Uh, who's that? Uh, the, the Hugh Moulton was uh, getting a little bit agricultural on the rolling lap. Um, someone's mentioned, it. that's the first time I've seen Mary Poppins uh, uh, <laughs> mentioned in the live chat. Uh, chim chimini, chim chimini, chim chim chiri. Oh, I could not be a more happier bloke. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that on there. Well, I, I wasn't expecting Mo today. Motorsport Magpie to mention it. Uh, 10 minutes then uh, for this one, and uh, it's going to be the last race for all of these drivers in junior Rotax. Away we go then. Good start for Spearing on the uh, the front row. Immediately takes the lead. It's followed through by Lucas Blanford, who needs a good result in this one. Yes. Because uh, uh, he had a retirement in his first one. Round they go. Onto the bridge. Up the inside. Was that one of the DHLs? Was that Noah Barham uh, having a good start? Started fifth on the grid in the number up, 22. Up into P2, I think it was. Let's have a little look as we... Uh, yeah, Ashcroft is down in fourth. Now, of course, uh, Jacob Ashcroft is in need of a good result. It is Barham second, Ashcroft third. There's uh, some of the battling going on down uh, towards the, the middle of the top ten. The Owen Neve with the number 18 cart was in the midst of uh, that scrap as we head through the Mike Wilson complex. But uh, a remarkable uh, gap there. One, two, three, out at the front. Thomas Minspearing. 
uh, followed by Barham and Ashcroft. Well, we've seen the Argentis have some really good speed so far this weekend. End of lap one, it's spearing from Barham, Ashcroft, Neve, Blanford, Gandor, Veach, Wooden, Clark and Moulton. That is the uh, the top ten right now. Good start as well uh, for Eli Baden. Up six places on that first lap to 17th. Round and over the bridge here on lap number two. And uh, Thomas has been spearing, looking in a decent level of control right now. As all oh, down the inside, Jacob Ashcroft uh, going for second place there and making it work past his teammate Noah Barham. He's desperate to get that new pair of Alpine Stars race boots is Jacob Ashcroft, which is uh, what his dad Barry has promised him if he wins a heat race. He's closing in on the E-plate hold of the English champion, Thomas Min Spearing. Argenti Motorsport have already enjoyed a very good start to the weekend as they come out of the final corner across the start-finish line. There's the view from the start gantry under the bridge, which was put in at the start of 2011. And Ashcroft having a little look at the lead, and I was very fortunate enough to be invited up to commentate on the very first ever race of the, with the bridge here it was november 2011 for the british championship which was won by tom joiner uh that day <laughs> and uh, the racing has got better and better ever since as ashcroft takes the lead does indeed with a, a, a textbook move down the inside of spearing spearing didn't fight that one too hard lucas blantford continuing a good run here in the third heat for uh, for junior rotax there in fourth, a couple of changes further behind. Looks like uh, uh, Kyrich has got through into fifth place and following through as well, Ryan Gantour. So Owen, Owen Neve down to seventh place. Not such a, a pleasant sight for the number 26 of Michael Dalton. He's going to see the meatball. The mechanical flag oh, is out dear. for Michael Dalton. Had gained eight places up to that point, but we'll, uh, we'll go no further. So here's a challenge for our camera team here. Jacob Ashcroft's gloves. Let's see if we can... And there's a story behind Jacob Ashcroft's gloves. If you are a fan of motorsport, as you are, and the new Ayrton Senna special Ooh. edition gloves come out, and if you're Jacob's dad, Barry, and you think, oh, do you know what, legend Ayrton Senna with his yellow gloves there, he buys them, keeps them in the box. What does Jacob do? Use them. Takes them out of the box, chucks them on, and without Barry realising it, starts driving his go-kart with them. <laughs> so there they are. There's the special edition Ayrton Senna race gloves that Barry Ashcroft was hoping to keep in a box and uh, uh, sell on for many, many, many more pounds years in advance, years down the line. That was his retirement fund, which is now being used by his son, Jacob. To good effect, however, might I add. Well, you, never, well, you never know. If he keeps winning races in them, they may get even well, more I, 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 Ah, now there's the number 29. Oh, oh. Albi Lapper out of the race. So uh, Barbara is now, and all his fans from Bromley to Australia and the United States will be devastated to see that one strawberry racing cart out of the race. But, yeah, great camera work there. So I think ca Team Camera... Uh, uh, doing well here. They've all oh, to te team production, just lose a point there for showing that big green blob there on the screen. But uh, team commentary, uh, fair to middling so far. One's been good, I've been, uh, uh, but Ashcroft is leading. And he's leading with five minutes to go. Penultimate race of the day, last race for all of these particular drivers. Intermediate classification situation now. At the top at the moment, two drivers who are not in this race. So Whitcomb and Bartle will face off in the next one. Your highest ranked driver who is in this race is going to be Thomas Min Spearing, currently in sixth place on four points, virtue of two second places, which could improve right now because he's down the inside of Jacob Ashcroft and has taken the lead. Ashcroft's going to try and fight back surely into hairpin two. Spearing defends. Here comes Lucas Blanford onto the scene. He's going to muscle his way up to second place, you would think. But Ashcroft's trying to hold around the outside there through the Fullerton S's. Brave attempt from Ashcroft, but he's had to give that one up and goes down to fourth place now. No bar and through into third. Excellent move from the Sacred Skin Aesthetics uh, backed. Uh, driver Lucas Blanford for the Ultimate R team. 
Ultimate R, the team run by Ben and Matty Hingley, uh, proving that they are worthy of a seat at the top table of uh, Rotax Karting in the UK. And uh, here is the fifth place driver, Kai Beach. Cameron Nelson, a long way back from the lead group in sixth position, is the leading rookie at a Canada's Ryan Gandor as we've got another change. That is Lucas Blanford for the very first time in his career moving to the front of a race in the official uh, Motorsport UK British Kart Championship. And it was a sweet move indeed down the inside into hairpin one. The front end of that kart looking really good to me right now, Henry. He's got good control. Noah Barham right there on his tail in second place. And Kai Beach is coming into this. It's now a five-cart scrap at the front of the field with three minutes to go. There's a yellow flag, so you can just see in the background there. We'll catch up with uh, what was the cause of that in a moment. There has been a plus five-second penalty that we can report on for uh, Sebastian Lusch. So Sebastian Lusch having a tough day here in Lincolnshire. That'll, uh, that'll be a demotion of some sorts at the end of the race. Fastest lap of the race for Joshua Turnbull, 58.15. Uh, where is Turnbull at the moment? Not in the top ten so a little bit further down as here comes Ashcroft down the inside retakes the lead is followed through by his teammate Noah Barham back to a 1-2 for DHR then Wallace Blanford got in response that's what he's got in response yep. beautifully done down the inside retakes second place uh, we briefly saw Michael Dalton uh, walking away from his Cato Motorsport number 26 cart on the uh, uh, Double box coverage here on Alpha Live, but it is Ashcroft, uh, Blanford, then Min Spear, uh, sorry, Spearing, followed by uh, Veach and Barham back to fifth. Still these top five ahead of Wales is Cameron Nelson doing a fantastic job in P6. Hasty, Moulton, Neve, Wooden, the rest of the top ten. Eli Baden uh, crossed the line. He has dropped to the back of the pack uh, for the Cato Motorsport team. 90 seconds plus change to go. Leon Hasty getting some support online. What was the advert? Like, they're, they're, uh, something like all Brad, they're tasty, tasty, very, very tasty. It's Leon Hasty. I'm sure, I'm sure Grant Mitchell uh, from EastEnders, the actor Ross Kemp was in it. Mm -hmm. Look it up on YouTube. Ross Kemp advert, like 80s. I'm sure it was all brand, but it, uh, but it was uh, not, not now. After the broadcast, uh, do it later on. But it's uh, unhasty, hasty, very, very hasty. Uh, anyway, carry on. Carting. <laughs> uh, one minute and five to go. Ashcroft feeling the need to defend there into the first couple of corners. Lucas Blanford not able to find a way through there, but he is now oh, up wow. the inside as they wrap round onto the bridge. And he's got it up the inside, onto the bridge, retakes the lead. That promotes Spearing back up to second place. And in this tight scenario in Juni Rotax in the intermediate classification, how big a move is that going to be? Ashcroft still there, though, in third place. Noah Barham not too far behind. Ashcroft looking to the outside. That's not quite worked. Spearing's wise to that one. 30 seconds to go. Lucas Blanford back to the front of the order, but all of this fighting, all of this defensive driving is going to bring everybody else back into play now. <laughs> Veach is there. Cameron Nelson's back on the scene. Another great run from the rookie in the number 41. And there's going to be two more laps of this one. They're going to have about five seconds on the clock as they cross the line. Blanford looks over his shoulder. This is where he pulled the move on Ashcroft one lap ago. Defence to the inside. There's oh. more coming in. Hasty's into play. Moulton's into play. There goes Spearing down the inside. Retakes the lead for Argenti. Yeah, just got the inside line running through the banking. The clock has struck zero. Now Spearing has to defend. Blanford following him deep into hairpin number one. Ashcroft in third. Over the grass goes Cameron Nelson. Uh, he gets back on, but it's Min Spearing leading Blanford and Ashcroft. Down the short shoot into the Fullerton S's with Veach for KR Sport in fourth. Uh, warning flag goes to Kai Clark. There's Spearing. Blanford defending. Spearing doesn't defend. That gives Thomas Min Spearing a huge advantage. They'll see the last lap board this time around. Can they catch uh, Spearing after Blanford defends in the Bobby Game corner? Game on!
Game on indeed. Great chance this for Spearing. Sits sixth in the points. No, make that third now in the points. Could be moving even onto the front row, depending on how results go in the next race. Leon Hasty down the inside of Lucas Bladford. He wanted P2 and took it there onto the bridge. Down towards Hep in one then for the final time in this one. Down to, I think around sixth place now is, uh, is Noah Barham. In fact, eighth place, it's all gone wrong for Noah Barham in the number 22. Fighting through for third place now. That's Ashcroft retaking third place away from Blanford. Blanford's just got to hold on here in the latter stages. Leon Hasty, where has this come from? He's had a disaster of a weekend so far, but here in the second round of heat, I don't think it's going to be a win, but a mega result for Leon Hasty P2. But the win goes to Thomas Min Spearing. Another win for Argenti here this weekend. Two points for Thomas Min Spearing with one race yet to go, and it'll be at least the second row of the grid. Oh, oh. as is a spin over the line there. Uh, right on the checkered flag. Can't quite see from our vantage point because it's behind... Uh, behind the gantry and off the screen it uh, is the number 71 cart it's uh, ryan gandor then i thought it was a kr sports uh, that went off to driver's right i hope uh, ryan is okay there because that will have uh, been a very high speed moment yes. but thomas min spearing takes the win leon hasty p2 jacob ashcroft p3 uh, a top five completed by Lucas Blanford and Hugh Moulton. Cameron Nelson, top rookie, once again, P6. Kai Veach in seventh in the top ten completed by Noah Barham, Joshua Turnbull and Owen Neve. Adam Clark, 11th. Kai Clark, 12th. Charlie Neve and Zach McDonald. Good drive from Zach McDonald. Yes. Up 14 places to 14th. Uh, not the biggest move in that race. That goes virtually to, uh, to to Hasty with 20 positions. There he is, yeah. Uh, but yeah, some big moves in that one. That's uh, Hasty by name and Hasty by nature. Uh, that is excellent. Now there they go through. There is Ashcroft. Oh, he's going to have to wait another race again to get those half point star race boots. You know, as uh, there is Ryan Gandua, and you can see Dan Ashton, he's not waving to us, he's waving to the medic, uh, who is just based up, uh, going uh, halfway up the hill, uh, to come down and have a little look. I'd imagine, of course, the, the way the cart sort of went into barriers and jackknifes around, that's what uh, can, you know, injure hurt a driver's ribs or a wrist if they are not, if they're still holding on to the steering wheel. But the good news is, uh, for Canada's Ryan Gandua is that he's walking up to the mm. medic and the medic can uh, uh, can check him out. Now, of course, any driver that goes to see the medics must be cleared by said medics and then the race director before they can carry on racing. The good news for Ryan Gandua is that he is now finished for the day and he can, he's got all, all nights before the racing starts tomorrow. Has indeed, and uh, yeah, good oh, to no. see Ryan uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, walk away from that one. Yeah, just holding his ribs yes. on uh, on his right hand side. Oh. There, one more race to go here this oh. uh, this afternoon at PF International. It'll be race twelve for uh, Junior Rotax. Well, race twelve on our program, the fourth heat for Junior Rotax. Groups <laughs> B and C remaining uh, for their second run. Henry Lewis Lewis Goss mechanic just looking thrilled with life. Um, oh, what a what a wonderful, what an atmospheric shot! You know, just thinking, what's going on behind his eyes? So, oh, my gloves tight. So we, we, we had some are. fun yesterday. Oh, which did we? will see on uh, the Cars UK YouTube channel in due course Excellent. with uh, with Lewis Goff and Jack Collinson. Ah, and right. In a, okay. in a yes, yes. Teams challenge. Oh, okay. Um, I won't give oh, spoilers. No, no, please, no but, spoilers. But, no spoilers. Uh, that expression was quite similar to what uh, Jack Collinson had in terms of Lewis Goff's performance. I'll say no more. Oh, okay. It's in the edit suite, I'm now, sure. Ah, now uh, you can see. It's very entertaining. Ah, now if we, if uh, Leon Hasty uh, is going to be speaking to uh, Nicole Sutherland very shortly, but then we'll go back to the uh, paint gate on the start finish straight there. Dan Ashton showing that uh, Ryan Gandor decided to scuff the paintwork on the grid. Terrible. Uh, let's head down to uh, to Park Ferme. Nicole Sutherland is with Leon Hastley. Over in Park Ferme with Junior Rotax second place finisher Leon. Leon, 22nd to second, a uh, bit of a drive. Can you tell us about 
What happened on earlier today to motivate you for that? Uh, well, going into the first seat, had a really bad qualifying and uh, I got collected in a collision on the first corner and I wasn't able to uh, continue the race. So going off 22nd again, just kept my head, drove as hard as I could and made up to second. Yeah, no, pretty impressive drive there from you, Leon. Best of luck for the race, the rest of the race weekend. We'll head back up to the comms box for our next Junior Rotax heat, but first we'll just have a quick word from Kartsim. Thank you very much uh, for those messages from Cart Sim. Uh, one more race to go here this afternoon. Uh, well, actually, early evening now at PF International. Do hope uh, that you've enjoyed uh, following the coverage here today. If you have missed any of it, don't worry. You will be able to watch it back uh, here on the broadcast platform of yes. your choice. And if you've not done so already, do make sure that you've clicked that subscribe button uh, for Alpha Live. Uh, for Our Karting UK as well, at Our Karting UK, the, uh, the home of uh, content for the British Kart Championships uh, here on YouTube and, uh, and for Motorsport UK. Of yes, course, you've got well. the, the, the uh, network of broadcast channels, the Alpha Live YouTube channel, the Motorsport UK uh, YouTube channel and, and the home of British Karting on YouTube, Karting UK. Indeed. Lots of places. Like, subscribe, click the bell, apparently, that they send you notifications for every time there is an upload. And, and the thing is, that people are well, why do I need to subscribe to all of them? It's because, like, you because, because you do. Because you do. Don't, 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 Andrew, don't explain, to, don't explain to the people. Don't explain to the people. Just tell them. You know, ch championship commentator of the British Championship. Yes. Just tell them. Tell the people. Because you, you do. That's it. But there's express special content on all different three. Oh. Let's go to a grid. It's Junior Rotax. Last grid of the day, Junior Rotax, heat number four, has Matteo Palazzo on pole position alongside on the front row, Harrison Crowther, William Antrobus and Harrison Whitcomb on row two, Brandon Truman and Jack West on row three, Thomas Behrman and Kenta Craigie on row four. Row number five, Ben Horner and Joshua Smith, Lewis Goff and James Anagniastis on row six with row Harry Bartle and Jacob Woods, row seven, Luca Mangi and John Richardson on row eight. Saying uh, Quaker and Lizzie Menti go from row nine, William Archer and Victor Hansen on row 10. Charlie Cox and Jack Baker start on row 11. Aris Miauskas needs a good result on row 12. Uh, alongside Fredley, uh, Freddie Housley. Isaac Barker and Cole Denham on row 13. Scott Marsh and Mikey Walker on row 14. The field rounded up by Matas Miazanskis and Vlad Tomenchuk. Uh, Uncle Tyrone obviously wishing uh, uh, Brandon Truman good luck. Uh, but <laughs> Roger Young is trying to blame me. Roger Young has gone and purchased a pair of Jacob Ashcroft edition Special eight and center specials in race nice. clubs. He's blaming me for the plug. I'm going to blame the cold beverages that Roger has been drinking and staying up late to watch the car team because uh, uh, in Chinese Taipei, the island of Taiwan, it's now well gone midnight. And um, never ever click, you know, eBay or shopping sites online after a beverage or seven oh. in Roger's case. Never a happy marriage. All, all I'll say is maybe buy that's what he's gear responsibly, ladies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one more race to go here today, then 10 minutes plus one lap. This will decide the grid for Junior Rotax <laughs> pre grids tomorrow. We are green, we're racing. Bit scrappy at the back, but it's good for Palazzo, not good for others. Cutting across the grass there was Harrison Whitcomb and more towards the back as well. That was a, a bit of a harem scarum start to that race, but it's a good one for Matteo Palazzo. This is his second chance from pole position, and he's got a bit of a lead heading down towards uh, the first hairpin. There are a lot of drivers in this race, Henry, who need a good result straight away. This has very much got the feeling of last chance saloon out there. Yeah, indeed, and Cole Denham, the closer, Cole Denham was the driver that ran very wide coming out the final corner. It's been a horrible day for the Scotsman. And I was 
just looking up at going oh there is the number 37 factory zip entry of freddie housley out of the race i was looking up scott marsh went around the outside of about five drivers at the first hairpin as they all sort of packed themselves up the inside to defend marsh went oh anything mccauley bishop can do i can do better and gained a whole heap of places he's gained eight places on the first lap there, up to 19th for Scott Marsh. And that's why he's a works driver in Europe for, uh, for Tony Karts, of course, back here in Britain, racing for Strawberry Racing and uh, needs to make those moves if he wants to get in the top 28 in that 28 cutoff for the pre-finals and not need a repercharge to race through to the latter stages of this first round for Junior Rotax. Eight minutes and 20 to go change at the front of the order it's William Antrobus who's come through as the front of that no another change because that's Harrison Crowther right at the front isn't yep. it for Coles Racing so Harrison Crowther takes the lead of the race away from Antrobus and after that uh, that scary moment for Whitcomb uh, all over the uh, the green grass creek curb through turn one Whitcomb is still there in third place did briefly hold the fastest lap of the race, which did then go to his teammate, Kenzo Craigie, and has now gone further down the order to Harry Barkley in P11. Well, uh, you mentioned the green grass. Of course, Harrison Whitaker being Welsh, the green, green grass of home. He was very uh, used to being on the grass. To, yeah. That's a bit of Tom Jones for you. There we go. But uh, Whitaker back up into P2, and there is a look at that. Well, no, just behind this group, that's the Alchemy Car Care-sponsored number 50, uh, 74 of Lewis Goff. He was a uh, so he was 52 last year, 74 this year. Uh, he's running just, just inside the top 10, but it's uh, Crowther, Whittacombe, and then Antrobus, followed by this driver on your screen now, the number 90, no, that's uh, Jane Anagnostiatis, uh, in eighth position, chasing Matteo Palazzo. Indeed, it's been a good start, this, for Anagnostiatis. The uh, second of the drivers out there, the detail... The Argenti drivers with the black suits, Kenzo Craigie being the other ones, those are the ones who are, of course, the, uh, the Mercedes-AMG uh, development yes. drivers who race in Europe as yes. well. Great to have James here this weekend, uh, the Australian. And uh, Bill, of course, it's a bit of a learning curve for him, him <laughs> being here at PF International for the first time, and he's definitely building into it. Meanwhile, further up the order, the best positioned Argenti Motorsport driver in this race is there in second place. Now going for the lead, Harrison Whittacombe to the front once again, but for how long? Because here comes William Antrobus. Beautiful driving from Antrobus there. Nips through, but immediately striking back there. Oh, that's a little bit Kenzo further back. Kenzo No, it is. Ken how did Kenzo Craigie do that? Through into the lead. Kenzo Craigie had a rough start today Will in, uh, <laughs> in the practice <laughs> sessions. Has stormed through to the front of the order here. This is what we've been talking about with Kenzo Craigie. Last year, speed was there. Consistency was not. It's, he's been getting better and better yep. all the while through the course of 2024, wherever, whatever he's been racing. And he's showing now he's got that reading of the races that I don't think he had last year. It's paying off now. Leads this race by two tenths of a second. Uh, I, and also, I think spatial awareness uh, as well as has improved for Craigie uh, this year. So we'll have to go back and uh, sort of maybe look back at the, the this race uh, this evening to sort of unpick how Kenzo managed to make it from I believe it was fourth or fifth to the race lead in one go. But he now leads Harrison Crowther, the revitalised, rejuvenated Harrison Crowther. Uncle Tyrone's favourite, Brian and Truman, is up into P3 in the number 87 cart for our Je uh, for, K uh, for Thule Motorsport, rather. And it's great to see uh, Mummy Thule, Iona Thule, here in the paddock, uh, back uh, supporting uh, her son, uh, Drew, and his team. Uh, really good to see Iona back in the paddock. Lewis Goff is up into fifth position. Harry Bartle is up into P6. Antrobus, who led briefly about two laps ago, down to seventh. Then it's Anasiatis, uh, West Palazzo, Behrman, Smith, Hansen, Quecker, and Scott Marsh up 12th place to 15th. Cole Denham still mired back in 22nd. What has gone wrong or what is amiss? with Cole Denham because this is not uh, a reflection of how quick the young Scotsman 
known as the closer, is. No, not at all. Minimax 950 champion last year, of course. A tough time so far this uh, weekend. There was a change there for third place. Harrison Whitcomb through past Brandon Truman. Also, uh, not good news again for uh, the number 68 of uh, John Richardson. Technical flag. That is going to be a hard day tomorrow oh, yeah. towards the back of the repercharge, having retired from the first race. More changes going on. Harry Bartle on the move. There is James Anagnostiadis up to sixth place now. Uh, intermediate classification we should talk about for a brief moment. This result, as things stand, would put Spearing on pole for the pre-final tomorrow. Whitcomb alongside on the front row and Craigie P3. It would be an Argenti 1-2-3 uh, for the first major race of the weekend. Meanwhile, there's all sorts going on uh, yes. in the midfield, as we expect in the juniors. That was the number 87, I think, coming uh, through the order. The, uh, Brandon Truman, yeah. Uh, now, Thomas Beerman, the six-plate cart, there he is on your screens. He is entrenched in about ninth or tenth places. Now, with three minutes to go, Crowther pushing Kenzo Craigie away uh, from the chasing pack as we go out onto the banking. We're to come in third, Harry Bartle. Well, from 13th to 1st, and we've been talking about the very, you know, we've been waxing lyrical about so many drivers. Well, Harry Bartle perhaps deserves praise more than anybody. He's just picked them off one by one and he won the first race at an absolute canter. He did indeed. Oh, there is John, there's Richardson John Richardson on the inset. Yeah. Out of the race. Really tough day for, uh, for the driver representing Azerbaijan. Through there, number six, Thomas Behrman, younger brother of uh, Oli Behrman, of course. Making a move up yep. to, uh, well, gaining positions inside that top 10. And at the moment looking comfortable to uh, to be qualifying through to remember the top 28. Never mind that right now because yep. here comes Crowther for the lead of the race. And he's done it, taking it with good speed over the pit straight there. Ooh. Harrison Whittingham having a little go there at his teammates. Kenzo Craigie makes it work. Bartle down the inside and all of a sudden Kenzo Craig, who was looking comfortable, has gone from first to fourth in the matter of four corners. Yeah, so you, of course you've got the, uh, the, the Kart Republic chassis used by uh, the Argenti Motorsport team. Uh, the Red Speed OTK kart for Coles Racing and of course the Tony kart uh, for Harry Bartle. Uh, the top four through the Fullerton S's. I've got to say that... Uh, you know, this is really good for Harrison Crowther and Harrison Whittacombe. Uh, the two Harrisons, you know, you've got, yeah, Harry Bartle, you know, last year's CIK Academy uh, representative. He's won, what, he's, he's won lots and lots of, uh, you know, international events as Harry Bartle. And then you've got Kenzo Craigie, you've mentioned him many times, part of the Young Driver Programme. So Harrison Crowther and Harrison Whittacombe showing, well, you know, there's, there, you could... Every Formula One team could fill their young academies with British talent if they had the way, if they had the money and the wherewithal. We could indeed. 45 seconds to go. Crowther defends to the inside there. Whitcomb follows down that inside line. It's no change in that top four. We've got to keep an eye out though for Lewis Goff, James Anagnostiadis, Jack West, William Antrobus. That's the second yeah. group that's and not too far behind. In. Down the inside. Oh, Whitcomb through the Fullerton Essers. How about that one? Crowther fought it hard, but had to relinquish that one as there's a problem out of our commentary box window. The number 86 oh, is... Oh, Matteo uh, Palazzo. Matteo Palazzo is off there. Is that... Uh, the number 52 is that Jack has Baker? Gone yes, it yes. was. So Jack Baker and Matteo Palazzo both in trouble on uh, the run from Herpin 2 to the Fullerton Essers. They're out of this one. Time is up, but it's on lap number 11, so it's going to run to 12 laps once again. Defending now, Whittingham ahead of Bartle, and it uh, looks like Crowther's got back through into third, but here comes everybody else. Here comes Goff, Anagnostiadis, Antrobus out of the race there. That's the number 25 of Luca Magni. Uh, and yellow, still yellow flags at the second hairpin. The leaders go round there now, single file. That's going to help Harris and Whittingham a little bit. But now, of course, the marshalling team here have moved that Evolution Racing uh, cart of Jack Baker out into a safe place. And it's game on. There's Craigie at the inside of Crowther for third. But it's going to be a head-to-head -head fight as they start the final lap. 
between West Wales is Harrison Whittacombe and Harry Bartle. Here we go. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. This has got a contender for race of the day, potentially race of the weekend. Can Harry Bartle, who won the O-plate a few weeks ago, Wilton Mill find his way through? He can. He can find his way through. Harrison Whittacombe down to second place, fought it hard. But Harry Bartle was not to be stopped there. Defensive down the inside into hairpin one goes Bartle. Down the inside goes Alec Nostiaidis for third place. Bartle's got a white line it now all the way to the end if he can. But this is the crucial switchback. Does he get it right? Yes, he does get it right. Whitaker still can't find a way through. Alec Nostiaidis holding on for third place ahead of Crowther, Craigie and the others. Still Harry Bartle holds on into the Mike Wilson complex for the last time. Is Harry Bartle going to book himself a spot on the front row for the pre-final tomorrow? Out of the final corner, yes he is. Harry Bartle wins again in junior Rotax. He takes it and he takes pole position in the pre-final tomorrow. He takes it by 0.21 seconds ahead of Harrison Whittacombe. It was a bold move. It was a big move, Henry, but it's given Bartle the win. And while Barton, Bartle and Whittacombe were battling over the lead, Alchemy Car Cares, Lewis Goff for Sam Pollock Racing outbattled not one, but two, two members of the Mercedes Young Driver Programme, James Anagnostiatis and Kenzo Craig, to finish third with Jack West in sixth, William Antrim in seventh, Thomas Behrman, Joshua Smith, and Harrison Crowther at uh, the leading. He finishes 10th. Scott Marsh from the back of the grid up to 11th. Brandon Truman, Zane Quecker, and Victor Hansen is next. Uh, further down the order. Wow. I mean, that that is just outrageous from Harry Bartle. On to the last lap. Harrison Whittacombe, he, he tried to defend going on the banking, but Bartle was able to change the direction of that car so quickly and get to the inside uh, on an absolute mission is Harry Bartle. And it was big because it changed the order in the intermediate classifications. Yes. Should stress, this is provisional, of but course. this is how things would look at the front Pending of Paul the Pending Paul Classen. Pending Paul Classen yes. and, uh, and the team down there. Harry Bartle will be on pole position for the pre-final tomorrow. He takes, of course, the, big fir the first big haul of points for the championship as well. Yes. For the best performance through the heats. Uh, Thomas Minspearing will be alongside on the front row. Then another two of the Argentis. It'll be Whittacombe third, Craigie fourth, uh, William Antrobus fifth, Thomas Behrman sixth, Nelson and Moulton uh, seventh and eighth. All of the results, of course, across on, uh, on the website. Do go check uh, them out. I am just also going to note here, you can see most of the carts and the drivers in Park Ferme, one of them hasn't made it to the end, which I think is James Anagnostiaidis, is it oh, not? Right, there's an So hard... something's happened to James Anagnostiaidis' number 52 Argenti Motorsport cart well, on, the, on the cool down lap. I can tell you what has happened to it. It's broken down, yep. is what it's done. It's broken down, and uh, there is uh, the number 52 uh, being brought back, sadly. That is Jack Baker. So, uh, well, I mean, one of our Australian uh, drivers uh, had, had the temerity to break down during the race, and our other uh, Australian driver, at least he had the decency to break down after the jacket flag. Yes, there we go. There we go. Uh, all oh. the results to say, uh, head across to the, uh, the British Kart Championships website and uh, peruse and analyse them Ooh. at your leisure. But remember, it's the top 28 in each class. Love a good it's perusal. More than, uh, than uh, uh, 28 that go automatically through to... Uh, the pre-final. We will have rep charges tomorrow as well uh, to decide the last six spots on the grid uh, for those pre-finals. Uh, but even before then, we've got some more heat racing to go as well. Uh, we'll start off with the three heats. Uh, Minimax 950, uh, Micromax and Honda Cadet all have heats to go. Uh, get your times in your clocks. This is UK times. Yes. I'm conscious we're still at that time of year where some people have got daylight saving times and some people in other areas of the world do not. I'm but just going to say UK what time. Everything 10 we do 15, is yokel time. 10 yokel 15, time, 10.15 10 uh, for the first one. We'll be live uh, from, uh, from just after 10 o'clock here at PFI. Uh, we're going to head down, Henry, I to uh, Nicole Sutherland because Nicole, I believe, has got Lewis Goff. Excellent. 
We're back in Park Ferme post race. We're here with Lewis Goff, third to, fr sorry, 11th to third in that race. Lewis, can you talk us through it, please? Uh, well, uh, me and Harry battle at the start. We said, uh, let's just push together instead of making it into a massive battle together and falling back positions. So we like, I went for a move, he followed me through. Then when he overtook me, uh, as soon as he went for a move, I followed him through. So it was basically uh, good teamwork from us um, to make us up through. And uh, I lost a bit of positions. I was battling, battling with um, someone. Then uh, I struggled midway through the race, but I gained it back. Then on the last lap, I made a a switch back to make it P3. And this year as well, Lewis, you've been doing a little bit out in Europe. How have you found adjusting from European racing back to British? Uh, for the first few sessions in Europe, I uh, struggled a bit since uh, in the UK it's quite cold and you have to be really aggressive and since I'm a quite a tall person, uh, it struggled to be as smooth as possible, possible but I think it's been quite good over there. It's great, great to hear from you, Lewis, and best of luck for the rest of the weekend. So that rounds up the racing for today. Lots of action, very exciting and a great way to kick off the year. We'll head back to Henry and Andrew to round off today's stream, but make sure that you tune in tomorrow so you don't miss a single minute of the action. Thank you, Nicole. And I'm very, very conscious that it's been a long day in the commentary box and I know that producer James needs to go somewhere very, very quickly. So. We will take our sweet time closing out the <laughs> I'm only joking. Day. I'm only joking. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a fantastic day of racing, Andrew Mather. Send us home. We will indeed. We're back again tomorrow for the rest of the heats, the repercharges, charges, the pre-finals and the finals. It all kicks off from just after 10 o'clock here in the UK. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Make sure you've subscribed. We'll see you again tomorrow for the culmination of event one for this year's Viratools British Kart Championships live here from PF International. See you tomorrow.